Hi everyone. Welcome to amazing channel of Brilliant Katha. When you are rubbing one body with another body, electrons are transferred from two, from one object to what? Another object. Okay, this process, this type of electricity is been given a name. Halogen connected carbon sp3, then it's connected to benzene. See all of you, halogen connected. What is this carbon hybridization? Full single bond sp3, see then a benzene ring. Denominator poles shouldn't be included in the, the denominator poles. That means the denominator, these minus 1 and minus 5 should never be included, should never be included in the solution. Homo circle caudal fin. It's giving two equal lobes. But in case of cartilage, we just look at here, one big lobe is there, one small lobe is there. You cannot cut into two equal half this fin. Hello my dear students, good afternoon you all. We are at the last moment of our final exam preparation. After two days, 19th March is our final battle, right? I hope you all are properly practicing at home, but this session, especially this session, going to 100% get you get mark, full marks in final examination. This session, in this session, we are here with different, different type of important question from all chapters. So 13 chapters from biology 12th grade. Today we are going to discuss in one shot. So chapter wise questions and also diagram based questions and also also uh, statement based questions today we are going to discuss different different type of questions so this session 100% help you to, to get good marks I hope you all are ready are you ready students please comment so we'll be going with all the chapters yes now we are going to have a good question discussion and the expected area and we'll try to cover up almost all the topics also in between so you have to focus nicely try to recollect the content what you have revised so we will be starting with the session let's everyone join and please keep commenting so we can see how you are getting it and students one more one more one more thing there is a small break during that prayer time also no need to worry the first this for three o'clock will start exactly before prayer time we will give a short break also and after that you can join and one more important thing this session 100 percent helpful for your student because last year also we conducted same brilliant conducted same live session before examination many students got very good marks top marks 95 plus they scored in the last examination this examination also this 19th examination also i am expecting 99 100 out of 100 from you all so this session 100 percent helpful for you people so everyone keep one ncrt textbook and one rough notes and your class notes and try to write down this all points and especially those who are at final revision those who are in the middle of the chapters that this chapter is difficult sir that particular students are going to first attend this session and revise your entire content shall we start the first chapter students now i am giving to krishna sir she will, he will start the first chapter sexual reproduction flowering plant come on sir okay sir now all of you please keep commenting so let's start with the first topic the sexual reproduction flowering plants revision plus important topics important area that all we will be going through okay now let's start with the questions Arrange the following terms in the correct developmental sequence. So, first question is from the microsporogenesis topic and all. So, in that, the correct developmental sequence you have to select. So, first if you are taking, you know that inside the anther, inner to the tapetum, there is sporogenous tissue. 
that sporogenous tissue only so first one i can select here is sporogenous tissue that will undergo meiosis sorry it will change into the pollen mother cell so it will be changing into the pollen mother cell or the microspore mother cell which will undergo meiosis and this meiosis will result in the formation of microspore tetrad it will result in the formation of microspore tetrad and you can see this microspore tetrads all the cells are unicellular they will dissociate because of an enzyme released by tapetum and they start undergoing mitosis first round of mitosis is unequal division which will form a large cell vegetative cell and a small cell generative cell so that is the pollen grain so pollen grain that represent the fourth one in the development and in the pollen grain the generative cell will undergo again a mitosis in order to form the male gametes so hope you got the sequence yes sanjay has commented very good so first one to be formed is sporogenous tissue so remember the sporogenous tissue will be turning into sporogenous tissue will be turning into the microspore mother cell or pollen mother cell which undergoes meiosis in order to form the microspore tetrad four cell so this represent microspore tetrad then you can see they will be dissociating to form like this four pollens all are unicellular now each one you can see they will divide and form a big cell and a small cell floating in so that big cell is vegetative cell and the small cell is the generative cell then in the final stage you should know the generative cell form two male gametes also got it and also try to recollect that point 60% angiosperm the pollens are released in biceled stage and remaining 40% the pollens are released in three celled stage hope you got this much now coming to next question with a neat diagram and explain seven celled eight nucleated nature of female gametophyte so hope you know about the megasporogenesis so in megasporogenesis they will be finally forming an embryo sac so let's discuss and go the megasporogenesis so in that you should understand a megaspore mother cell a megaspore mother cell they will be undergoing meiosis they will be forming four megaspore so it will result in the formation of four megaspore in that four megaspore three will be degenerating three will undergo what degeneration and remaining one will become the functional megaspore remaining one is becoming functional megaspore and that functional megaspore will actually enlarge then nuclear division will take place first round of nuclear division it will be forming two nucleus one move to chalaza one move to micropyle then you can see there is second round of nuclear division after that so second round of nuclear division it will be giving rise to two nucleus at chalaza two nucleus at micropyle then there is third round of nuclear division finally they will be forming eight nucleus like this after that one from each pole migrate towards the center so like this there will be three nucleus at chalaza three nucleus at micropyle two nucleus at the center so after three sequential round of division only they will be undergoing what they will undergo cytokinesis that is the cytoplasmic division so in that three at this point will become antipodal and this big cell is the central cell and they will be having two nucleus this two nucleus is called polar nucleus then here you can see there is synergid and a large egg so remember synergid will be having filiform apparatus and the egg together is called as egg apparatus so you have to learn only this one or you have to write or you have to draw this one only if this seven cell eight nucleated embryo sac is asked i just explained it so you can understand what is monosporic development so here 
from one functional megaspore this female gametophyte is produced this is actually called as monosporic development that is also an expected area hope you understood what is monosporic development next question so that embryo sac diagram if asked for the exam you should be able to draw it nicely you should draw the functional embryo sac with three antipodal two polar nucleus central cell synergid egg and in the synergid please draw the filiform apparatus also so this is the egg and this is the synergid and inside the synergid there will be filiform apparatus so in that you should remember filiform apparatus also will be coming and this will be forming the egg apparatus this together only we call it as egg apparatus then remember there is no cell wall formation around the central cell so central cell is here and it's having two polar nucleus and here there is also antipodal so here there is antipodals so this is the structure of a female gametophyte and also remember ovule represent the megasporangia and this structure embryo sac represent female gametophyte and coming to the pollen grain the pollen grain is the male gametophyte now next question what are chasmogamous flowers can cross pollination occur in cleistogamous flowers give reason for your answer Chasmogamous flowers means they are closed flower. They are invariably autogamous. They cannot undergo cross pollination. They are always close. They, know, they don't need the support of a pollinating agent also. They are well, done, well ready for the seed set and all. They don't need any pollinating agent. Since it is a closed flower, they can undergo only self pollination or autogamy. So the NCRT line itself you should write. Chas, uh, cleistogamous flowers are closed flower. They are invariably autogamous. They cannot undergo gaitinogamy or xenogamy. Whereas, cross pollinating flowers, cleistogamous flower, can cross pollination occur in cleistogamous flower? Cleistogamous flowers cannot undergo cross pollination. Then, chasmogamous flowers, if you are taking, they are open flowers. Chasmogamous means open flower. I can tell it's an out, uh, adaptation of cross pollinating plant. If it is open only, they can undergo cross pollination. So, chasmogamous means open flower. Cleistogamous means closed flower. And cleistogamous flowers are invariably autogamous. Then, hope you got the answer. Shall I move to the next one? Yes. So, cleistogamous is actually the Closed flower, chasmogamous is open flower. Hope you got it. And cleistogamous flowers are invariably autogamous. They can undergo only self pollination. Chasmogamous is open. They can undergo cross pollination. Cleistogamous, I said actually. Cleistogamous flowers, closed flower. They are invariably autogamous. They can undergo only self-pollination. They cannot undergo cross-pollination. That is the point which, which, uh, what I said. Then chasmogamous means open flower. In open flowers, they can undergo cross-pollination also. Shall I proceed? Now next question. Differentiate between coleoptile and coleorissa. Now if you are taking the and uh, the seed of the monocot you can see the plumule will be getting covered by a sheath that is called coleoptile a holofolia or leaf like structure will be coming that is the coleoptile in grasses and all then the sheath like structure that is covering the radical portion that is actually called as coleorissa then integuments and testa in ovule if you are taking so ovule diagram you should be knowing so if you take the diagram of ovule you can see inside the ovary the ovule will be having a stalk like portion that stalk like portion of the ovule is called as funicle then there is a point of attachment in the funicle that point of attachment is called as hilum 
then there is basal part of the ovule that basal part of the ovule is called as chalasa then you can see from there will be arising covering so that covering of the ovule is actually called as integument in that two integuments are there outer integument is there as well as you can see they will be having a inner integument so in that the inner integument in future inner integument in future it will be turning into the seed coat tegment whereas the outer integument in future when ovule become the seed outer integument is actually becoming the testa so testa is formed by the outer integument tegment is formed by the inner integument inner to that only you can see they will be having the nucellus the nutritive tissue that will be coming here is nucellus and inner to the nucellus only they will be having the female gametophyte embryo sac with the antipodal polar nucleus as well as the central cell and the egg apparatus with egg and synergate so this ovule that is 180 degree inverted downward remember this is called found in majority of angiosperm anatropous ovule remember this is the anatropous ovule so hope you understood the difference between integument and testa integuments are covering of the ovule when ovule turn into the seed uh, seed integuments become seed coat in that outer integument become testa that is the point then perisperm and pericarp wall of the ovary only is called pericarp that will become well differentiated into epicarp mesocarp endocarp in fleshy fruits i think you learned in last year about mango coconut etc droop so it's the wall of the ovary which will become well differentiated in fleshy fruit whereas perisperm in certain plants like sugar and black pepper sugar beet and black pepper there is a persistent nucellus persistent nucellus you should write persistent nucellus means understand even after the formation of the seed the nucellus will be there it's not completely consumed by the embryo sac so like that if the seed is having nucellus inside that is actually called as perisperm example please note it in the side and learn so in that uh, example you write and learn that is sugar beet and black pepper that is the example of perisperm next one give an example of plant which came into india as a contaminant and is a cause of pollen allergy can you please come and you will be knowing about that that is let me check how many of you are going to yes first comment by sanjay parthenium one more comment i need it came as a contaminant into india along with which plant parthenium or carrot grass it actually came as a contaminant along with which one yes hisham commented first okay very good so all are listening so along with the wheat only they were coming to india as a contaminant so if this pollens are inhaled it can cause allergic issue you know what is allergy and all exaggerated response by your immune system so that part and all sandeep sir will discuss in human health now next one state the function of filiform apparatus found in matured embryo sac of an angiosperm so you should understand after <coughs> the pollen grains are falling on here there is a pollen tube that is going to come and enter into ver into the embryo sac so starting from the pollen falling on the stigma and forming the pollen tube and its entry into the embryo sac is actually called pollen pistil interaction the stigma only accept the right type of pollen grains it won't be accepting the wrong type only right type they will accept that is also of the same species once it is accepted they produce sugar and moisture vegetative cell will start growing through the germ pore forming the pollen tube and in that the vegetative nucleus will be exiting and they will control the growth of pollen tube it will be followed by two male gametes so here when they are entering into the embryo sac when they are entering into the embryo sac 
This pollen tube's entry into the embryo sac is guided by filiform apparatus. So filiform apparatus will be guiding the entry of pollen tube. So here you should understand like this the pollen tube will be entering and one of the synergid will degenerate also and after that only they release the two male gametes one male gamete fuses with the ectoform zygote that is syngamy other male gamete fuses with the polar nucleus to form the triploid primary endosperm nucleus that is triple fusion both together is called double fertilization so that part also hope you understood now let me complete the question state the function of filiform apparatus guiding the entry of pollen tube into the embryo sac that is the main function of the filiform apparatus now coming to the next question microscopic pollen grains of past are obtained as fossil mention the characteristic of pollen grains that make it happen so for a long time that pollens are actually there in the fossils and all so in fossil forecast these pollens are getting uh, preserved like that for a long time not the entire pollen only the outer shell so it is because of already so many commented that is the answer so first comment was from Hridya Hridya it is correct only sporopollenin Sporopollenin is the toughest organic material resistant to enzymes, temperature, acid, alkali, all that you should write in this question. So that makes the pollens so very tough in the outer covering that is exine. My one more question is that exine continuous? Is the sporopollenin in the outer layer is it continuous or is it absent in some area? If it is absent what is it called? If you know that keep commenting. Yes, Hisham said no, Yasira also said yes, telling it's no. So what is the reason? Yes, it's absent in which area? Hisham commented first, the answer is germ pore. In germ pore, the sporopollenin is absent. So pollen grain structure, if asked, you should be able to write outermost layer is actually called as exine. And that is actually helping in fossil forecast and all. So learn the structure. Inner to that you can see they will be having the inner layer. What is it called? Intine. And also remember intine is made up of cellulose and pectin. And exine is made up of what? Exine is made up of the toughest material sporopollenin. Which will help in fossil forecast. And inside that only they will be having the vegetative cell with irregular nucleus which will supply nutrients to the generative cell that is floating inside and this spindle shaped generative cell only later become two male gametes hope this much points are covered now let's move to next question so this question you have to write only about exine and the sporopollenin and write about that it is the toughest organic material resistant to enzyme action high temperature acid and alkali <coughs> now next one Papaver and Michelia both have multi-carpillary ovary. How do they differ from each other? So you know that there are two types of carpels. The female reproductive part of a flower is gynoecium. Single units are called pistil or carpel. Pistil or carpel if you are taking there is a swollen bottom that is ovary. Elongated portion is called style. At the tip there is stigma. Inside the ovary only ovule is present. If a single carpel is coming it is called monocarpillary. Many carpels are coming it is called multicarpillary. And if all the carpels are fusing together that is actually called syncarpus. Example of syncarpus is papaver. So papaver remember they are multicarpillary and syncarpus. Here the diagram is there NCRT diagram. So in the NCRT diagram you have seen many carpels are fusing together in papaver. Sometimes the diagram will be given and you have to identify. So remember this diagram also. Many carpels fusing together. In appearance you may feel it is a single. Actually it's not. It's many carpels fusion. That is syncarpus. Example in NCRT is papaver. Even some families you learned last year also. Now lotus rose michelia all these you can see the carpels will be looking like this many carpels are there but each carpel you can see that is free from each other that condition is called apocarpus so michelia you should remember it is apocarpus apocarpus means understand the carpels are free from each other next one a bilobed dithecus anther has 100 microspore mother cell per microsporangium so one microsporangium will be having 100 
microspore mother cell now how many male gametophyte male gametophyte means pollens are actually produced in this anther so you should understand there are four microsporangia each microsporangia will be having 100 microspore mother cell so when they undergo meiosis each will be producing how many so you know one microspore mother cell can give rise to four microspore forming later four pollens so 100 will produce how much 100 will be producing 400 pollens now we have how many microsporangia how many microsporangia is present yes already the answer came i don't have to tell much hridya commented first 1600 4 microsporangia is there in every microsporangia there is 400 so 4 will be having 400 into 4 total 1600 pollen grains are actually produced hope you got it shall i move to the next question so if you are getting please comment in a flowering plant microspore mother cell produce four male gametophyte while megaspore mother cell form only one female gametophyte explain just now in the beginning we explained this concept this is called monosporic development so what is monosporic development so here you have to write mainly this what we have discussed in the beginning a megaspore mother cell located towards the micropylar end they will undergo meiosis which will result in the formation of four megaspore in that three will degenerate and one will become functional and that one will undergo three round of nuclear division followed by cytoplasmic division in order to form a single functional megaspore sorry functional female gametophyte so the female gametophyte is not formed from four it is formed from only one functional megaspore this is called as monosporic development hope you got the monosporic development that you should explain also in such type of question depending on the marks hope you got it now next one explain any two devices by which autogamy is prevented in flowering plants the question is regarding outbreeding devices actually outbreeding devices are adaptations of cross-pollinating plants in order to prevent self-pollination so this can undergo the inbreeding depression if a naturally cross-pollinating plant if they are undergoing self-pollination for so many generations, they can actually lose the vigor or can become sterile <coughs> that only <coughs> we call it as inbreeding depression so to overcome that they have mechanism to avoid the self-pollination or inbreeding so some of them so many are commenting outbreeding devices don't tell about bagging rebagging and all it's actually sanjay has commented hisham commented it's regarding the uh, this one self incompatibility etc so a few of them let me tell first one they can have diclinic or dioecious condition dioecious condition promote what xenogamy xenogamy will become compulsory dioecious means sexes are separate if you take papaya that is an example of dioecious plant where one plant will be having only male flower another plant will be having only female flower so here xenogamy become compulsory so that is also a adaptation of the cross pollinating plant in order to prevent self pollination second one we can tell they can have the stamen as well as the pistil maturing at different time pollen release as well as the stigma receptivity it is not synchronized that means the pollen grain formation and release and the pistil maturation this won't take place at same time so self-pollination is prevented that is the second thing you can write third thing you can write is self incompatibility or self sterility self incompatibility or self sterility means if all pollens are falling on the stigma they won't accept it it is a genetic mechanism this is also an outbreeding device fourth one you can write heterostyly 
different length of filament in the stamen and different length of style in the pistil. If they have different length, chances of self-pollination is decreased. So these are the adaptations of naturally cross-pollinating plants in order to prevent self-pollination. So you can write about the dioecious condition and if they are bisexual they will go for which condition? The pollen release and stigma receptivity will not be synchronized. They won't occur at the same time. The maturation of stamen and maturation of pistil will take place at different time. And third, you can write self-incompatibility or self-sterility. Fourth, you can write heterostyly, differential length of the style of the pistil and the filament of the anther so that self-pollination is prevented. And in some plants, you can see morphological barriers are also coming that will prevent on pollens falling on the stigma like calotropis. So, hope you got it. Okay, dichogamy, hercogamy, heterostyly. So that explanation should come, don't actually write only the terms and stop it. In board exam, you have to explain it in detail because some terms are missing in NCRT. Dichogamy is not given in NCRT, only explanation is given. Hercogamy is not given, but that diacy, diaceous, instead of diaceous, diacy is only given. So like that, you have to focus on NCRT term when you are uh, preparing for board point of view. So please follow that pattern and write the explanation. Don't write one one sentence, one one word and finish it. You should explain it correctly. Hope you got it. Now let's move to the next one. List any two characteristic feature of wheat flowers that make it a good example of wind pollination. So wind pollinated plants when a question is coming, you have to write about the characters the adaptation when you are uh, having wind pollination anemophily first of all they will be having pollens that are non-sticky lightweight and even you can see the pollens are produced in enormous amount the pollens are produced in enormous amount then flower if you are taking you can see it forms an inflorescence they are clustering together and in each carpel only one ovule is coming that also you should write each carpel with one ovule then the main point you should write is the feathery stigma feathery stigma is also a character the main function is to trap this pollen grains when the, all the pollens are flowing in the wind this feathery stigma will be fluttering in the wind that will be trapping the pollen grains so one example of that feathery stigma that is concope tassel where you can see that feathery stigma that is coming in the carpel like this they will be able to trap the pollen grains then example grasses wheat all these you can see they will be having the wind pollination so hope you got the adaptation yeah it is colorless no nectar but here we are going to write about the characters the main character they don't have color they don't have nectar but that is not the exact point you should write you should write the point which will favor wind pollination so that will be having more clarity and value coming to an examiner's point of view. Hope you got it. Magasri, Hridya. So pollens will be lightweight, non-sticky. So it can be carried away by the wind. Then second you can see it to trap the pollen grain there is a feathery stigma. And last you can write these characters if you want. So major characters of wind pollination this one you should write first. Then next one, it is observed that plant breeders carrying out wheat hybridization often take pollen grains from pollen banks. Do you agree? Give one reason in support of your answer. Yes. So here in pollen, uh, you know that rice, wheat, etc. The viability of pollen is only 30 minutes. So for plant breeding program, if they want to keep some good variety plants, pollen grains and all, they cannot actually put it outside because after 30 minutes it won't be able to germinate. So we can actually keep it in pollen banks. Cryopreservation can be done at minus 196 degree Celsius. Yeah, already answered by Hridya. The viability is only 30 minutes. So after 30 minutes it will lose the capacity of germination. That is the reason we are going to 
preserve it at liquid nitrogen at minus 196 degrees celsius that is the main two points you should write first you should write about viability second at which temperature it is cryo preserved now next one list the two steps that are essential for carrying out artificial hybridization in crop plants essential for carrying out artificial hybridization in crop plants and why so artificial hybridization when you are thinking think from the Mendel's experiment what he was doing so hope you remember he was taking a tall plant he was taking a dwarf plant and if he is considering tall as male and dwarf as female don't write this one first you understand only so in the dwarf plants flower if he is going to consider this as a female flower what is done that only you try to recollect they will be removing the stamen in bud stage so removal of this stamen in the bud stage the process is called what the process is actually called as emasculation so what is the purpose of emasculation so in the bud stage removing the pollen from the plant's flower which is going to be considered as female so emasculation is done there is no chance of self-pollination that is the first thing so artificial hybridization you have to write first about emasculation second thing a cloth bag is actually put around it that will prevent contamination by some other pollens unwanted pollens won't be falling on the stigma then when this flower is maturing you can collect the pollens from this plant remove the bag then put it on the stigma of this one and immediately put the bag again so this four steps you should remember emasculation bagging dusting rebagging so emasculation can prevent self pollination bagging can prevent unwanted cross pollination then dusting will actually bring the wanted pollen grains only so these are the steps you should remember now i can tell perfectly the seeds produced by this flower after fertilization will be the cross of this two parent itself it won't be having any contaminants or it won't be having a product of self-pollination so these are the points you should remember that is emasculation bagging then dusting and rebagging so two main point is emasculation and bagging now next one so list two steps that are essential for carrying out artificial hybridization in crop plants and why the first point you should write emasculation removal of stamen from the flower in bud stage and those flower which is going to be considered as the female parent it is performed in a bisexual flower not in unisexual second is bagging bagging is to prevent unwanted pollens from falling on the stigma now next one differentiate between albuminous albuminous means which one endospermous and non albuminous or ex albuminous that is ex uh, non endospermous seed give him one example of each so endospermous seeds you should understand during embryo formation inside the seed endosperm is not completely consumed especially the monocot seed exceptions are there so you have to write about rice wheat etc now coming to non endospermous or ex albuminous dicot seeds if you are taking when that embryo is developing inside the seed endosperm is completely consumed and later they will be getting nutrition from the cotyledons so that only we call it as non endospermous or ex albuminous example dicot seed so you can write p gram etc that is non albuminous or ex endospermous p gram and all then here you can write about rice wheat maize all these now what is pericarp mention its function that is the wall of the ovary that will become the fruit after fertilization it will be well developed in fleshy fruit it will turn into epicarp mesocarp and endocarp so that is the function of pericarp next one draw a sectional view of apple and label the different parts of the ovary in it fruit developed from an ovary then what is why is apple referred to as a false fruit so this diagram is important you have to learn it 
those plants in which if the fruits are developed from parts other than ovary that is called as false fruit those which is formed from ovary is actually true fruit if it is from other parts of the plant that is called as false fruit okay thalamus contributes to the fruit formation in apple so this diagram also you should be able to draw so here when the fruit you are drawing write it as thalamus and the seed also that is coming inside is it clear shall we move yes apple is formed from thalamus all are commenting good one now let's see the next question explain any two ways by which apomitic seeds get developed so what is apomixis apomixis you should understand it is the formation of seed without fertilization so in some plants from the cell of nucellus you can see a diploid egg is formed that will turn into zygote and embryo directly and it is without fertilization so apomixis is formation of seed without fertilization so in apomixis you can see the seeds are formed without fertilization there is no gametes involved so that is the reason we have to tell it's a asexual reproduction but it imitates or it mimics sexual reproduction because seed is generally a product of sexual reproduction but here you can see it is formed without the involvement of gametes and all so example of that is grass and asteraceae next one what is subgamospermy that is the plants the hybrids that are actually produced from apomitic seed that is agamospermy so here also you have to explain about apomixis only there you can see the plants are actually produced from apomitic seeds <coughs> and it will be uh, same as that of the parents then how is subgamospermy different from parthenogenesis and parthenocarpy Parthenocarpy, you already know, it is the formation of fruit without fertilization. So, ovary directly can become the fruit without fertilization, especially mango, seedless grapes, etc. Some hormones like auxin and gibberlin, they can make the ovary of a flower to turn into the fruit without fertilization. So, ovule does not become seed, they will be seedless. So, apomixis understand it is the formation of seed without fertilization and second you should understand is parthenocarpy formation of fruit without fertilization and parthenogenesis that is coming to the genetics chapter. You know about the haplodiploid sex determination in honeybee and all. So, in some organism, a males will be produced from egg without fertilization that is actually called as parthenogenesis. So that also let me write and show. Have you got this much? Developed from egg without meiosis. Uh, okay, apomixis there is no meiosis. You can see the nucellus one cell is turning into the diploid egg and that will turn into the zygote and embryo. There is no fertilization, there is no meiosis. Yes, Hisham already commented for man, uh, formation of organism without fertilization. Okay, there is formation of organism without fertilization. So, in honeybee, you should understand females are diploid. They have 32 chromosomes. That is the queen honeybee. And males, you can see they are haploid. That is drawn honeybee. That is with 16 chromosome. So, this queen honeybee, their germ cells can undergo meiosis in order to form haploid egg. Whereas, the drones will undergo, the germ cells undergo only mitosis to form the haploid sperm. So, what happens in this organism is, this egg, this egg directly will be turning into the males without fertilization so drones are formed directly without fertilization the process is actually called parthenogenesis but if there is fertilization it will result in a diploid condition that will be a female it can be a queen honeybee or it can be a worker bee so here you have to write only parthenogenesis you have to write only this part the formation of an organism from a haploid egg without fertilization. That only you have to write in this question. The question is not regarding haplodiploid and all. For your understanding, I just have drawn it. 
parthenogenesis formation of male gamete without meiosis and all you should not write you should write this one only a haploid egg without fertilization develop into the new organism or the males example honey bee the condition is called parthenogenesis parthenocarpy you should write the formation of fruit from the wall of ovary without fertilization so their ovule does not change into the seed so this much you should write regarding parthenogenesis and parthenocarpy shall i proceed so this area only you have to write regarding parthenogenesis hope you are getting it yes sisham now moving to the next question name the organic material x sign of pollen grain is made up of how is this material advantageous to pollen grain already we discussed the question it is made up of sporopollenin and the main advantage they are resistant to enzymes temperature acids and alkali and they help in fossil forecast this much you can write about the sporopollenin still it is observed that it does not form a continuous layer around the pollen grain that also we have uh, discussed at a particular point they will be having gaps that form the germ pore through that only the pollen tube will be arising at the time of germination of pollens then how are pollen banks useful we can preserve the pollen for any number of days in the liquid nitrogen at minus 196 degrees celsius because different pollens have different viability time that also you can write like rice and wheat have only 30 minutes leguminosae rosaceae solanaceae they have a viability of few months so all these pollens can be stored for any number of days in the liquid nitrogen at minus 196 degrees celsius that can be useful for crop breeding that can be useful for crop breeding that's much you should be able to write write the functions of the following you know about the function tapetum the innermost layer of the anther main function is nourishment so hope you remember the four layers of anther epidermis single layer protection endothelium single layer protection inner to that middle layer uh, one to three layer protection so the outer three layers are associated with protection and dehiscence innermost layer of the microsporangia is tapetum multinucleated single layer main function provide nutrition enzymes hormones all these are the function into the pollen sac Scutellum, monocots only in grasses, provides nutrition. Already come and came from Magasri. That is the answer. So, tapetum, nourishment of the uh, pollen and all or the development of pollens in the microsporangia. It is multinucleated, single layer, innermost layer of the microsporangia. Then coming to scutellum, they provide nutrition to the developing embryo. It is a single cotyledon that is found in monocot now let's move to the next question what will be the ploidy of cells of mucellus microspore mother cell and the functional megaspore and female gametophyte can you please comment what is the ploidy of mucellus microspore mother cell ploidy means you should write whether it is haploid or whether it is diploid so you may be knowing about these structures and all so please keep commenting let's see who is going to get it first so first one mucellus what is the ploidy mucellus what is the ploidy okay hridya commented first itself very good mucellus diploid microspore mother cell diploid functional megaspore it's formed after meiosis whatever is coming it is haploid so female gametophyte embryo sac haploid scutellum provides nourishment to embryo now only answer is coming kavya it's correct only Okay, Magasri, Hridya, Sanjay, Hisham. Okay, Hisham also. All of them have commented correctly. The answers are correct. Now, let's move to the next question. Differentiate between Gaitinogamy and Xenogamy in plants. Which one between the two will lead to inbreeding depression? So, here, Gaitinogamy is the transfer of pollen grains from anther to stigma of different flowers of the same plant. So here is one flower, another flower. So from the anther to stigma of same plant, if it is transferred, that is called as gaitinogamy. Genetically, it is self-pollination. Then, xenogamy. Xenogamy, you can see, it is the transfer of pollen grains from anther to stigma of different flowers of different plants. So what is it? 
that is actually xenogamy genetically as well as psychologically that is cross pollination so my question which one can lead to inbreeding depression naturally cross pollinating plant when it undergo self pollination either genetically or ecologically self pollinations are taking place there is chances of what inbreeding depression they can lose the vigor or quality that only we call it as inbreeding depression first answer from kavya let's see how many of you are going to comment it's gytinogamy in that case you can see it's self pollination naturally cross pollinating plants if they undergo the inbreeding or self pollination there is chance that they may lose the vigor or quality so xenogamy is okay so that is the answer next one write the characteristic feature of anther pollen and stigma of wind pollinated flower already we discussed it so they will be having an exposed anther which will be bursting and releasing enormous amount of pollen grains so same question is repeated in the cbsc so you should be aware of this question when you are writing please write this mentioned things like they have exposed anther and they will be liberating a lot of pollens that will be flying in the wind enormous amount non sticky and the stigma is feathery one example concorp tassel that is to trap the pollen grain all these points you should mention nectar and pollen the question is regarding wind pollination so don't write about nectar etc you have to write about this what is asked the features itself they are asking in wind pollination is especially this area so when you are writing please focus on this three first then you can write the remaining what you want yes feathery stigma lightweight pollen grains produced in enormous amount exposed anther flower become inflorescence with each carpel having a single ovule all these are the points you should mention and in that remember the example like grasses and one more thing water hyacinth water lily the flowers are above the surface of water it is also pollinated by wind or insect that much you should remember okay now next one how do flowers reward their insect pollinators okay next question's answer was coming now only i understood so insect pollinated plants they will be providing nectar pollens group fragrance as well as they will be having brightly colored petal all these are the things to actually attract the insect pollinators but don't think all flowers have a good aroma or fragrance some flowers which are pollinated by the beetles or flies you can see they have a foul smell also so these are the characters you should write now next one a flower of tomato plant following the process of sexual reproduction produce 240 viable seeds answer the following questions given so the number of seed is 240 what is the minimum number of pollen grain that must have been involved in the pollination of its pistil so i am expecting answers from your side first question answer came so it is 240 pollens should be there one more question let me add how many meiosis will be required here for forming 240 pollens there will be 60 meiosis yes or no okay let it be now what would be the minimum number of ovules present in the ovary what would be the minimum number of ovules present so 240 seeds means it should be having how many ovules 240 ovules and 240 pollen grains sorry 240 240 viable seeds okay now how many megaspore mother cells were involved actually here for forming 240 seed we need 240 pollens and we need 240 embryo sac so how many megaspore mother cells are involved the answer is again 240 because it is which development monosporic yes or no one meiosis of megaspore mother cell produce 
4 megaspore in that 3 degenerate one only become embryo sac so 240 megaspore mother cells are involved in this process what is the minimum number of microspore mother cells involved in the above case so 240 pollens formation will be from how many 60 microspore mother cell hope you got it each microspore mother cell on meiosis will form 4 so 60 will form 240 that is the answer so what is the minimum number of microspore mother cell required in the above case is 60 how many male gametes were involved in this case how many male gametes were involved this answer i want who oh, first of all commented hisham very good you know each pollen grain will be having two male gametes so 240 pollen grains will be having 480 male gametes very good first comment from hisham second from kavya magasri so all are attending it nicely hope you are getting the application questions also so some case study questions etc can come like this so be aware of all the application part now one more question how many meiosis were involved how many meiosis were involved in formation of 240 seeds with that we will complete this question how many meiosis are involved in the formation of this 240 seeds who will come in first let me check already all the answers are on board so you just have to calculate and tell total number of meiosis required to form the 240 seed first answer from Hisham second from Dia very good 60 meiosis for 240 pollens but since it is monosporic development understand 240 megaspore mother cell undergo meiosis to form 240 embryo sac one only will become that so total 240 plus 60 you will be having total how many 240 meiosis here and 60 meiosis there 300 meiosis is required this is the application question hope you got it now moving to the next one diagram based question name the structure which the part a and b in the diagram below respectively develop into so can you tell what is a what is b so after double fertilization a develops into what b develops into what that is a question so let's see who is going to comment first fast 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 easy question diagram based question ncrt diagram itself zygote and the pec zygote develop into what embryo so a is zygote that will develop into embryo then b is primary endosperm nucleus that will develop into the endosperm that is what you should write very good keep commenting so a is zygote so the question is name the structures which the parts a and b shown in the diagram below respectively develop into so they are not asking what is a and b they are asking it develops into what so zygote is a and primary endosperm nucleus is b you can mention it and they develop into what also you should write a develop into the embryo b develop into the endosperm very good now next one given alongside is the enlarged view of one of the microsporangia of a matured anther name a b c d so please come in fast outermost is epidermis inner to that mark is a inner to that b then inner to that c then innermost is microspore mother cell so what is a b c d a represent what so inner to the epidermis is a so what is a a is endothesium very good first comment from hisham then b is inner to the endothesium what is that layer b is marked inner to the endothesium middle layer inner to that what is coming c at that is actually multinucleated surrounding the microsporangia providing nutrition enzyme and hormone so what is it that is actually the tapetum hope you got the four layer and outer three layers are involved in protection and dehiscence innermost layer is associated with nourishment this much you should remember then mention the characteristic and function of the cells forming the wall layer c so c is tapetum that you should write it is a single layer 
and it is multinucleated provide nutrition enzymes and hormones into the sac and it helps in microsporogenesis and pollen grain formation it secrete all the essential things not only nutrition and at the end they will degenerate also so this much things you should write regarding tapetum enzymes hormone nutrition main thing is nourishment and at the end before before dehiscence they will degenerate also so in crt diagram also observe carefully you, have, you can see middle layer and tapetum degenerated when that anther is breaking next one fill in the following labels with the type of cells function so uh, what is X, A, B, C, D? That is actually given. So here, X can be what? That can be megasporogenesis. In that you can see megasporogenesis. It will be undergoing which division? Meiosis. And after meiosis, it will be forming four megaspore. One will become functional. Then this functional megaspore is undergoing which division? It's undergoing mitosis only. This is mitotic nuclear division. This is mitotic nuclear division. So this megaspore, so this is functional megaspore. It's undergoing mitotic nuclear division, first round of division. Then it undergoes second round of division. Then it undergoes third round of division and it will finally result in the formation of the seven celled eight. So here you should write about cytokinesis. So A, B and C is mitotic free nuclear division that you should write. And D is the cell wall formation and cytokinesis. When you are writing, please mention it clearly. The cell walls are formed only around antipodals as well as it is formed around the cells of egg apparatus. And the large cell at the center will be forming the central cell. This much you should write. It's mitotic nuclear division. It's not cell wall formation occurring. That you should make sure. Then second one, study the diagram given below and answer the questions that follow. So what is this? What is this given? Oh, already come and came. Very good. The, uh, that is the globular stage of the embryo. So during embryo formation, zygote will be developing into different stages. In that one of the stage is the globular stage. So first it will become pro-embryo, then the globular stage, heart-shaped stage. Then finally it will mature and form the final stage. Then name the initial cell from which this structure has been developed. Can you tell what is the first cell from which this entire structure is actually developing? The first cell from which the entire structure is developing is zygote. Zygote will only turn into the suspensor cell, embryo cells, etc. The embryo will become 2 cell, 4 cell, 8 cell, globular cell and the heart shaped stage finally forming the main structure, the torpedo stage and all. Then draw the next mature stage of the labeled parts. So that you should draw this one, this structure that is given in NCRT regarding the two cotyledons and all as well as the hypocotyl radical. So this structure you should be able to draw the radical hypocotyl. <coughs> then you can see there is two cotyledons. This structure you should be able to draw it. Hope you got it. Yeah, heart shaped stage only. So after globular stage, heart shaped stage and you can see the next mature stage will be coming like this. So heart shaped stage if you are drawing you should be able to draw this one, uh, this one like you should be able to draw from the first suspensor cell like this it should be coming <coughs> and this one. In that the two cotyledons will be coming so here will be the radical. Then this will be the plumule, then this two cotyledon shoot apical meristem. This only grows downward. So you can draw this also. 
that will be the matured stage after the heart shaped stage so that's all about okay coming to next question study the diagram carefully and mark the following parts correctly against the following sentence along with the alphabets given what is the name of single cotyledon of the maize seed what is the single cotyledon that is called as single cotyledon is actually called as cutellum then second one which protective layer covers the embryonal axis part of plumule plumule is actually getting covered by coleoptile so you know here the plumule is getting covered by coleoptile then what is the protein covering of the seed and mention its ploidy protein covering of the seed is actually called aliuron layer aliuron that is actually the protein covering of the endosperm that is coming and its ploidy is triploid it's triploid then what is the name given to the outermost wall layer of the seed testa is the outermost wall layer then tegmen is inner to that then where is the reserve food largely present in the seed the reserve food is largely present in the endosperm in monocots so these are the points you should write now next one so that's all about the questions from sexual reproduction in flowering plants hope i have touched almost all the topics in that area now and the important areas and all and now we will start with the next chapter so try to recollect the things and don't get confused so many answers that came in between was wrong like pericarp and all that is Uh, where is the reserve food largely present in the seed is the question it's not in the other case so in the seed you should not comment pericarp then what is the name given to the outermost wall layer of the seed so seed wall layer if it is asked don't write about the fruit some said about pericarp and all you should write about the seed coat you should write testa and tegmen hope you got it yes or no kavya Okay now let's start with the next chapter and Sandeep sir will be handling the next chapter human reproduction hope you got everything sir hello 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 students sexual reproduction flowering plant chapter we have done with all important important concepts and important topics in this session now we are going to start human reproduction questions from this human reproduction one mcq and uh, two more question one two more question and there is a chance of five mark question also there is a possible from this chapter what human reproduction chapter are you ready shall we start first question from human reproduction system look at here and these are important important diagrams i given here one is a female reproductive system one is a male reproductive system diagram i given here and also fertilization process i given in a fallopian tube so before i start this one look at here male reproductive system questions my dear kids this this academic year this uh, uh, final examination high chances are there. bulbo urethral functions prostaglandin functions and also what tell me uh, seminal vesicle functions you got my point and spermatogenesis spermiogenesis lot of important questions now we are going to discuss everyone open your ncert look at the first question first question is seminiferous tubule this academic year seminiferous tubule high chance is there because from past two years ovary ovary structure they are asking so this academic year my dear kids i am repeating one more time in live class seminiferous tube will thoroughly prepare and go let me take first this question after that we come to the next one look at the first question the question tell us pick out the name of the cells that undergo spermiogenesis process is given spermiogenesis process not spermatogenesis process is given spermiogenesis process any one of you tell me spermiogenesis process is done by done by spermiogenesis is that process ah tell me spermatids are undergo the process to form spermatozoa is yes or no so the right answer of this one tell me is spermat it's absolutely correct spermat it so look at the first question beta pick out the name of the cells that undergo spermiation remember we have already understand in the last class spermatids right spermatids are undergo these are immature cells spermatids are undergo a process maturation process to form spermatozoa spermatozoa this process is called tell me spermiation process remember all of you my dear kids in this spermiation process 
one pituitary hormone is essential any one of you any one of you tell me which pituitary har hormone is that arpana sanjay isham diya come on come on wake up all of you answer me this process is controlled by ah fsh hormone fsh hormone acts on the cells called what sertoli not lh who is this yasira fsh hormone not lh lh hormone act on leading cells beta but spermiogenesis process is done by the fsh hormone fsh hormone act on sertoli cells and sertoli cells secret some factors which essential for the spermiogenesis process so first question answer i am writing here it is spermatids haploid or diploid spermatids are haploid or diploid fast 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 any answers where sanjay isham come on mahak spermatids are haploid or diploid sir haploid spermatids are haploid 23 Number of chromosomes are there. Yes. Next question. What is given? Differentiate between the spermiogenesis and spermiation. Spermiogenesis is that process. Spermatids are converted into spermatozoa. The what is spermiation? Spermiation is that process. The releasing of matured spermatozoa from seminiferous tubule. Mark my word, student. This question, this one, spermiation is that process in which spermat spermatozoa fully matured spermatozoa release from where seminiferous tubule. Remember all of you. Can any one of you tell me from seminiferous tubule they entered into which which accessory duct? Seminiferous tubule to which accessory duct they entered? Fast, 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 fast. Come on, come on. Seminiferous tubules are joined to form rete testis. Am I correct? Am I correct? So spermatids, uh, sir, so spermatozoa, spermatozoa release from sperm uh, seminiferous tubules and they entered into rete testis. Rete testis to where? Epididyme, vasa efferentia, vasa efferentia. Seven up, remember. What is it? Seven up. S E V E N U P up seven up seminiferous tubule next E vasa efferentia V vas deferens E ejaculatory tract N common leaflet U urethra P penis to outside seven seven up you remember the all stages all the movement of sperm pathway remember next question how many sperms will be produced from fifty sper primary spermatocyte fifty primary spermatocyte can any one of you tell me once primary one primary spermatocyte give one primary spermatocyte give absolutely sham very good better like you my dear correct one primary spermatocyte give four spermatozoa four spermatozoa into two so into four you got my point so answer is what my da what what my dear come on come on answer what is the correct answer of this question then ah right 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 so the right answer is 50 primary spermatocytes are there in 24 54 200 sperms will form 200 sperm yes 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 so answer is what tell me 200 if a question come any one of you answer me one primary spermatocyte give how many second spermatocyte one primary spermatocyte give one primary spermatocyte give fast fast two second spermatocytes right am i clear two second spermatocyte am i correct ah good very good very good so this is the one question next whenever this question come this one seminiferous tubule and they ask a question hold a minute hold a minute the first the big one this one which this one beta this one this bigger cells are called spermatogonia stem cells spermatogonia also called sperm mother cells or ncrit mention male germ cells you know if you go line by line in cert clearly mention in seminiferous tubule two type of cells are there one is called male germ cell second one sertoli cell this elongated cells are called sertoli cell beta these are sertoli cell again diploid now sometime they give this diagram they ask here it is a here it is b here it is c they will ask so my dear keep in mind especially you will get uh, a confusion between the spermatids to spermatozoa spermatids are touching to sertoli cell my dear look at your sertoli cell the one which is free look at your this one is free this one also free this one also free the one which did not touch to any one ready to go ready to release that called spermatozoa remember all of you one more important thing spermatozoa haploid spermatid haploid second spermatocyte also haploid primary spermatocyte is diploid sertoli cell diploid spermatogonia also diploid mark my words come to the second type of question look at here based on the same seminiferous tubule are you with me ridya diya ayan uh, mahak sanjay kavya are you there yatri look at the first question second second type of question beta draw the sectional view of seminiferous tubule of human 
question label the following cells and seminiferous tubule if this question come peacefully this is a five mark question no hurry hurry no what they call uh, uh, very fast no that uh, 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 arrange better uh, uh, very fast is there peacefully take a pen and pencil take a white paper thoroughly draw started draw, start diagram drawing diagram at a seminiferous tubule so first one is called uh, spermatogonia next one primary spermatocyte next the second is spermatocyte next spermatid next spermatozoa now look at here what type of question they are asking cells that divide by mitotic and increase in number when mitotic in increase in number question come spermatogenesis process in three steps are there can you first one is called multiplication phase in which mitotic division takes place second phase is called growth phase they grow in size third phase is called maturation phase meiosis division phase so beta remember all of you cells that divide by mitotic division is called spermatogonia spermatogonia mark my words remember don't get confused yes 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 spermatogonia look at the second one cells that undergo meiosis one my dear meiosis one comes mean meiosis one is primary spermatocyte am i clear am i clear primary spermatocyte you got my point mahak diya ridya ayan meiosis one mean primary ah spermatocyte spermatocyte now primary spermatocyte give what secondary spermatocyte secondary spermatocyte complete meiosis 2 meiosis 2 so meiosis 2 is what secondary spermatocyte cells that helps in the process of spermiogenesis process just now we discussed that is called what will be spermatids the last one is called what mention the role of leading cells what is the function of this leading cells come on come on come on what is the function of this leading cell ayan carefully read the question beta leading cells produce come on come on leading cells produce a ah, male sex hormone called androgen or testosterone any one of you tell me the other name of this leading cells leading cell other name i don't know i forgot any one of you help me out leading cell other name is called a ah, hmm hmm come on come on come on fast fast magasri come on beta answer me what is the other name of leading cells ah very good interstitial cells can any one of you tell me the location where is this leading cell present inside the seminiferous tubule or outside the seminiferous tubule where they present mahek everyone whoever attending online beta don't sit simply just give me answer comment comment your answer that will be brush up the concept beta don't sit simply in front of laptop or in front of system just simply watch no try to answer try to answer yes interstitial space not in the seminiferous tubule so look at the next question next question most important question this is the ovary question they are asking most important sample paper question beta <laughs> the question tell us what is the question the figure below shows the sequence of changes within the ovary that occur during menstrual cycle changes given look at the first one what is a where is a this one this is a, a something is given b and also here it is c is given first question name the process a name the process a what this process a look at that graphian follicle mature and release secondary oocyte this secondary oocyte i can also call ovum so i can write what beta ovulation shall i call ovulation yes absolutely ovulation process very good now uh, next word name the hormone that play an important role in this event you can write lh hormone sorry next uh, estrogen hormone one is a pituitary one is the ovarian hormone lh hormone is a pituitary estrogen is the ovarian hormone identify b name the hormone regulate the menstrual sorry maturation of b b is the graphian follicle estrogen hormone fsh hormone regulate the size of what tell me graphian follicle very simple if you able to recall what we discussed tell me 
in menstrual cycle ah first one is called menstruation after that call follicular phase after that call ovulation after that call secondary or luteal phase am i clear 1 to 5 days menstrual cycle where progesterone hormone what tell me low low progesterone can break the endometrium and cause menstrual flow remember all of you number 2 follicular phase fsh lh hormone high in this one follicle started to grow from primary to secondary secondary to tertiary tertiary to graphian remember my dear kids growing follicles release growing follicles release which hormone one important hormone growing follicles release tell me what is that estrogen hormone absolutely correct now look at the last one what is the last one tell me identify and write the function c where is here Where is C? This one. Look at here. First one. This one is called what? Tell me. Corpus luteum. This corpus luteum secretes some 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 hormone. What is that? Progesterone hormone. That's why corpus luteum is known as what? Temporary endocrine gland in where ovary. I have one question. I have one question. Now tell me, for example, for example, fourteenth day egg release, ovulation done. Fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one. This many days corpus luteum is there. Can any one of you tell me who will maintain the corpus luteum in ovary? Particular hormone is maintain the corpus luteum in ovary. Any one of of you tell me any one of you tell me which which one which hormone maintain the corpus luteum in ovary very good who is this isham sabbas beta anyone anyone come on come on no problem beta if it is wrong also i am here to correct you no problem if it is wrong no problem i'll correct you beta one more hormone also Pro, uh, what they call one more hormone also regulate one more hormone prolactin also regulate remember ah prolactin also regulate look at the next one what is given write the specific location the following functions of the following cells one is called what tell me leading cell interstitial space sertoli cells seminiferous tubule on the sertoli cell fsh hormone act on the leading cells lh hormone act that's why lh hormone is also known as what interstitial cell stimulating hormone because it's acting on interstitial cells or leading cells leading cells but hold a minute all of you look at here stop all of you look at stop chatting look at here all of you in the exam in the exam if question come from sertoli cell which hormone release which hormone release from sertoli cell if question come my dear kids here this is seminiferous tubule male germ cells are there and in between there is a sertoli cells are there like this my dear kids all of you look at here this is little higher order question in the exam this is sertoli cell right sertoli cell okay now on the sertoli cells on this seminiferous tubule androgen androgen is the testosterone hormone this testosterone hormone wanted to act wanted to act now the sertoli cells release one binding protein call androgen binding protein this androgen binding protein function you know what beta this protein i am the protein look at your protein whenever androgen come it will bind it will hold in the seminiferous tubule for the spermia spermatogenesis process and sertoli cells also produce the hormone called what in he bin ha hormone in he bin hormone in he bit what fsh uh, secretion good fsh secretion remember all of you this is little hot question if question come only right otherwise leave it look at the next question most 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 important last year one of set this paper this question was there beta i i still remember last year there was a 16th march our final exam was there i clearly remember same question was there in the last year also one of set what this uh, what the question is telling us the question telling us study the figure given below and answer the questions right answer the question what is the stage of this one blastocyst is given what is the stage blastocyst stage right 
right good very good blastocyst stage now you did not notice something surround around this blastocyst stage zona pellucida zona pellucida is not there beta zona pellucida is not there actually zona pellucida not there zona pellucida is will be dissolved zona pellucida at the time of implantation it will be dissolved but hold a minute hold a minute now i'm removing this one zona pellucida is not there what is this cells call what is this cells call tell me trophy ectodermal cells or trophoblast cells inner cell mass icm this is called icm inner cell mass name the stage of human embryo figure given blastocyst stage blastocyst stage place can any one of you tell me mention the fate of the inner cell i will i will will i'll discuss little later beta where are the stem cells okay that i will explain can any one of you tell me where is the location of this blastocyst in the female reproductive part any one of you come on any one of you where is the location of this one location any one of you tell me where is the location of this one ah uh, ah uh, very good not in fallopian tube beta in the uterus remember all of you morula stage up to late morula stage up to in the fallopian tube this is advanced zygote early morula late morula blastocyst gastrulation ga blastulation gastrulation fetus formation yes or no so here this blastocyst is slowly come down from fallopian tube and attached to endometrium when when seventh day after after what tell me fertilization this is actually uh, attached to what endometrium this process is called what implantation any one of you help me which hormone is essential for the implantation of fetus or implantation of embryo which hormone is essential for this one come on come on come on speak out ayan come on answer me isham flip flop come on beta answer me which hormone is essential for the attachment or implantation of zygote or oh, sorry uh, your yeah, blastocyst come on come on come on come on which which one ah progesterone that's why it's called what implantational hormone progesterone hormone next mention the fate of icm icm cells are going to form a embryo embryo trophy ectodermal cells are going to form what tell me placenta i also what they secrete some type of what tell me enzyme keep in mind trophy ectodermal cells but there was a question my dear kids there are two things are there one is called trophoblast and icm out of these two one is a pluripotentic cell can any one of you tell which of this one is a pluripotentic cell pluripotentic one means what pluripotentic cell come on all of you out of this two one thing is pluripotent my dear kids all of you look at here zygote this is zygote zygote remember all of you the sing the single cell which have ability to give entire embryo and extra embryonal layer what did i say single cell which able to give a ah, entire embryo formation plus embryonal embryonal membranes extra embryonal membranes such as placenta yolk sac amnion chorion if this all also going to form from that single cell we call totipotentic cell toti total remember like the total body can come total organism can come zygote is a totipotentic one beta totipotentic not only zygote two cell cells two cell stage of zygote four cell stage eight cell stage up to eight cell stage we call totipotentic capacity but what about this pluripotentic this inner cell mass have ability to give embryo but inner cell mass does not have ability to give extra embryo on a layer so remember icm is considered as what tell me pluripotentic cell ah remember icm is what pluripotentic cell what, uh, so what uh, where are the stem cells located icm what kind of stem cell pluripotentic stem cell mah kavya isham diya all of you try to re recall this one revise this one e pluripotentic me they have ability to give embryo but not 
uh, extra embryonal layer so the answer is what this is blastocyst stage place in the uterus implantation and uh, what they call stem cells are icm next question look at the next question very very simple question beta four five simple questions are there write the location of the set only cells so simple answer tell me seminiferous tubule right seminiferous tubule N mention the functions of mitochondria in sperm ah listen 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 all of you sperm consists of four parts one is called head part neck part middle piece tail part where is this mitochondria located answer me where is this mitochondria fast 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 in the middle piece right nebenken we call lot of group of mitochondrions we call what nebenken what is the function wait 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 i have a question my dear this is one sperm this is one sperm can you tell me what is the major energy source for this energy source for this sperm beta i don't know can any one of you help me out major energy source for sperm fast fast major energy source for sperm major energy very good very good very good ridya fructose major energy source for sperm is fructose any one of you tell me which gland secrete this fructose which male associatory glands secrete which male secondary sexual organ secrete this fructose anyone ah they are good seminal vesicle 60 percentage they contribute seminal plasma 60 percentage so answer is what mitochondria provide energy to ncrt mention to tail mention to tail tail is getting energy from mitochondria for movement what kind of movement flagellatory movement flagellated movement so who is actually going to give energy to the sperm mitochondria by the breakdown of fructose remember my ah remember remember all of you next male in whom testis fail to descend to the scrotum scrotum testis are if male baby in the uterus 7 to 8 months of period of gestation testis are descend into the pouch like structure called as scrotum scrotum have a specific uh, smooth muscle to maintain the temperature we discuss right what happen if a person testis did not descend into the pouch like scrotum the testis are fail to form sperms no spermatogenesis because spermatogenesis process require low temperature now 2 to 2.5 degree celsius of lower temperature maintain in scrotum so So if it is not descend, surgical process takes place. The testes are not going to functionally active. Yes, yes, yes. Remember all of you. Name the hormones produced only during emergency of female. Sir, over there. During pregnancy in the female, mention their sources. They are asking. During pregnancy, I will, I, I'll, I'll wait for your answer. During pregnancy, two essential hormones come, my dear students. In female, any one of you? Come on, any one of you? answer kavya aisha mac uh, sadat yatri astral usta dia come on come on answer we uh, tell me two major hormone very good very good absolutely tell me in emergency ha uh, hcg okay is yes, in pregnancy i'm sorry in pregnancy hcg h pl hormone human placental lactogenic hormone human chorionic gonadotropin hormone release from the release from the something aparna can you answer where is this two hormone comes this two hormones are come from placenta placenta hpl function is to increase the glucose level in the mother blood that's why during pregnancy females will have a sugar that this is the process called a gestational diabetes so sugar content increase so answer is hpl and hcg hcg is called pregnancy hormone next list the changes that primary oocyte undergo in the tertiary follicular stage in the human ovary hold a minute this is the most important my dear kids i wanted to explain this one look at here all of you what is this primary oocyte undergo a tertiary follicle given wait wait all of you look at here 
This is primary oocyte. Primary oocyte. Develop from where? Ugonia. This is Ugonia. Right? Ah, look at after many time mitotic division. After mitotic division, primary oocyte form. Primary oocyte. Right? In the ovary of fetus. Hold a minute. All of you carefully listen. You might forgot this. Surround around this primary oocyte. Surround around this primary oocyte. Many granulosa cells are come and attach. Granulosa cells are present in where? Ovary. So this one is called what? Granulosa cells. Okay. This one is called what? Primary oocyte. Primary oocyte plus granulosa cells all together called primary follicle. Primary follicle. This primary oocyte entered into meiosis 1, prophase 1, prophase 1 and they arrested. Because baby did not come, if you are able to recall, oogenesis process began in the embryonal stage only. How many of you remember this? Do you remember this one, beta? Embryonal stage only the process started. Baby inside the mother womb only oogenesis started. But they arrested. Tell me at which stage they arrested. Tell me. Meiosis 1. Prophase 1. It arrested. Now inside this one what? Primary oocyte. This all granular cells. Total called what? Tell me. Primary follicle. So primary follicle is slowly increased to secondary tertiary. Wait, wait, wait. Primary follicle increased to secondary. Secondary to tertiary. When will it take place? You know. When that girl come to maturity. When that girl come to puberty. This girl, when this when this girl born, that time two millions of follicles are there. They undergo atresia. If you if you read NCRT carefully, it, it's clearly given. After birth, no new follicle form. No new follicle form. Ah, remember this follicle is primary follicle to secondary, secondary to tertiary will take place. During puberty, not in the before puberty, no, it's not takes place in pre reproductive age. Remember, better that's why they are asking what least the changes that takes place in the primary oocyte. Primary oocyte undergo meiosis one to form unequal two cells one bigger cell called secondary oocyte, smaller cell called polar body. Which polar body? First polar body, that time graphene follicle rupture, secondary oocyte release. Wait, 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 better. How many? of you attending yes okay good very good number attending i have one question any one of you help me out secondary oocyte when will it complete meiosis 2 when will it complete meiosis 2 secondary oocyte complete flip flop aparna answer me ash come on good good profess one correct beta now tell me when will secondary oocyte complete meiosis 2 fast 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 no, 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 Sal Salma, not after fertilization, beta. When sperm come and trigger only. When sperm come and trigger only, it started to. Ah, good, 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 good. Very good. Remember, when sperm come and contact. Ash, that's very good, beta. Mahak, right. Fertilization. No, 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 no. You should not write fertilization, Mahak. When sperm come and contact the secondary oocyte, that time it finished that secondary meiosis, meiosis 2 to form ooted. With that ooted sperm nucleus fuse to form a zygote. Remember, remember all of you. Ah, very good, beta. Remember, yes. Next question. Look at the next question. Next question tell us. What name is given to the cells that inner cell mass that have the potential to give rise to a tissue or organ or human body? Any one of you tell me. Come on, come on, come on. Fast, fast, fast. Amphiox is very good, very good. That's a fertilization process name. Very good flip flop. What is this? What the name given to the cells of inner cell mass? So tell me, pluripotentic or stem cell. Who is this? Very good. Who is this? Uh, Asham. Uh, good, good beta. It is called pluripotentic or stem cells, which is going to give an embryo. Very good. Very good. Given below are stages in human reproduction. Okay. Write them in a correct sequential order. Insemination, gametogenesis, fertilization, parturition, gestation, implantation is given. I would go with the first uh, gametogenesis. After gametogenesis, 
insemination after insemination fertilization after fertilization implantation after that gestation after that parturition i am i correct i am i correct this process is correct or not first first gametogenesis leads to insemination fertilization implantation gestation and parturition what is corona radiata look at it all of you look at your my dear kids this is second this is ovary like look at here all of you this is ovary now inside the ovary let's take like this this is ovary this is graphian follicle inside the graphian follicle what is there secondary oocyte is there this is a secondary oocyte if you take secondary oocyte tell me this is called a secondary oocyte haploid nucleus is there surround around this one what is there zona pellus perivetaline space surround around this one what also they tell me non cellular layer is called what zona pellucida this is a zona pellucida layer fine beta next surround around this one what is there there is a radially arranged ah cells are there what this cells called tell me this cells are called granulosa cells this granulosa cells nothing but what beta corona radiata remember this is called corona radiata cells corona radiata cells nothing but granulosa cells only granulosa cells only now this is secondary oocyte haploid or diploid haploid now what is coming this this area when sperm come and trigger it break this wall zona pellucida wall and enter in this one to form fertilization in ampulla isthmus junction sabas very good very good very good next question ah this is this time there is a chance is there beta 3 mark or 5 mark chance is there look at here can any one of you tell me human sperm human sperm have how many parts four parts look at the first question identify the parts given below given sperm diagram and answer the following question a acrosome shall i call a is acrosome acrosome fine next b mitochondrions and also the other middle piece yes middle piece c is called tail we already identified we already identified acrosome next which part of sperm produce a hydrolytic listen 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 if you read ncrit it's clearly given anterior part of sperm has cap shape of structure called acrosome this cap shape of structure is called what beta which structure is that cap shape of structure known as anterior part of this one beta known as acrosome acrosome is acrosome consists many hydrolytic enzyme this hydrolytic enzymes are essential to dissolve corona radiata zona pellucida plasma membrane of ovum for fertilization sometimes you will get question what happen if abnormal sperm acrosome did not properly form such type of sperms are not going to make a fat zygote remember zygote one question one question riya ridya this acrosome is modified what what modified to form acrosome yes 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 for motility correct beta tail is for motility done acrosome is a modified what modified no my dear kavya ah who is this who is, ah good very good ridya golgi golgi body modified to form acrosome remember what is the function of c c function to get energy from uh, mitochondria and motility c function is for what movement very good c function is what movement what percentage of sperm should be normal shape and normal size in the pregnancy no for the pregnancy open in charity at the end of the same topic it's clearly mentioned according to who 40 percentage of sperm should be normal motility 60 percentage of sperm should be normal shape and size 60 percentage of <coughs> 
स्पम्स आर शुड बी इन नॉर्मल शेप आई नॉर्मल साइज 40 परसेंटेज ऑफ स्पम्स शुड बी इन नॉर्मल मोटिलिटी बेटा रिमेंबर लास्ट क्वेश्चन डिफरेंशिएट बिटवीन मेजर स्ट्रक्चरल चेंजेस इन द ह्यूमन ओवरी ड्यूरिंग फॉलिकुलर एंड ल्यूटल फेज ऑफ द मेंस्ट्रुअल साइकिल दिस टाइप ऑफ क्वेश्चन चांस इज देयर फॉर टू मार दिस दिस वन during follicular and luteal phase tell me any one of you follicular phase three hormones are rise up two pituitary one ovary hormone rise up any one of you help me out which two pituitary hormones are higher concentration which two what happened in the follicular phase changes takes place human ovary takes place in the human ovary sir follicular phase ha ah, any one of you tell me follicle growth takes place follicular study follicle growth takes place and exactly this time ha ah, luteinizing time what happened tell me corpus luteum formation corpus luteum secret progesterone hormone ah, absolutely beta this time i am telling you from menstruation menstrual cycle chance high chances there question will come beta right so in luteal phase progesterone hormone corpus luteum form and progesterone hormone increase in follicle phase follicle growth takes place and that growing developing follicle secret estrogen hormone good next question next question explain the pituitary hormone influence in the activity of leading cells and sertoli cell easy easy i already told you beta i'm not going to explain now the spermatogonia has 46 chromosome in human male number of chromosome in primary spermatozoa and spermatid i don't know this any one of you help me out aparna ash can any one of you come on beta isham primary spermatocytes are ah uh, primary spermatocytes are 23 i am i correct i am i correct 23 i am i correct nayan no sir it is 46 good very good it is what tell me primary primary spermatocyte is 46 what about spermatid beta 46 i am i correct i am i correct spermatid is 46 beta no sir it's 23 very good very good so tell me spermatid is 23 sabas Draw the diagram of structure of human ovum surrounded by corona radiata. Label the following parts: ovum, plasma membrane, zona pellucida. State the function of zona pellucida. This question, beta, I already explained you here, so I am not explaining. Okay, I already explained the structure here. I am not explaining. That's why I am telling you. But there is a chance of one question. Online students, careful look at Ray. There is a chance of a question. write the differences or identify which is secondary oocyte and which is graafian follicle for example i am giving you something beta here one is the graafian follicle graafian follicle one is ovum ovum or secondary oocyte secondary oocyte so which one is which we, how can you identify how can you identify sir this is a primary uh, this is a secondary oocyte sir and this is a graafian follicle can any one of you tell me how can you identify one small one small hint beta how can you identify come on answer me come on kavya try 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 who is this flip flop absolutely my dear antrum is there in case of graafian follicle the fluid cavity called antrum when antrum is there we call what graafian follicle and graafian follicle also surrounded by theca externe theca externe granulosa cells are there beta i am i correct or not yes 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 ah granulosa cells are there good 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 now state the function of zona pellucida what is the function of zona pellucida who is the one going to prevent the polysperm entry i don't know any one of you tell me come on come on come on kavya zona pellucida is called zp layer zp zp layer is uh, on this zp layer there is a zp3 receptors are present to this receptor only who will come and attach sperm come and attach this zona pellucida ensure that the entry of single sperm with egg beta very good very good absolutely correct so our answer is zona pellucida non 
cellular layer surround around the secondary oocyte which is glycoproteinaceous membrane undergo uh, uh, the reason responsible for or ensure the entry of a single sperm mate with the egg got my point understand ah prevent polysperm is anja absolutely correct beta come and contact with the sperm ah absolutely absolutely correct my true next question look at the next question very very important question this time i am expecting from the fertilization topic also beta draw the following diagrams related to human reproduction and label them the given so you have to draw this diagram okay and you have to label this one the zygote after first cleavage division this is fertilization b fertilization a secondary oocyte this is called ampulla isthmus junction when sperm come in contact that this pump is entered to form a zygote this is two cell stage of zygote that mean division start this is called what meiosis uh, sir mitotic division cleavage holoblastic cleavage indeterminate cleavage d 1 2 3 4 cell stage and here it is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 8 cell stage 8 cell stage is here beta look at here all of you this one after that look at the late morula at the tip of the fallopian tube after that blastocyst form if you properly notice this diagrammatic changes kids look at here all of you this is eight cell stage this is 16 cell stage 16 cell stage remember 16 cell stage also zona pellucida is there this is called late morula after it convert into this stage called blastocyst beta no zona pellucida look at the diagrams blastocyst is in the cavity uterine cavity look at look at here look at here blastocyst is here look at here. this one and come and attach look at here attaching so blastocyst implantation to the endometrium my dear kids <coughs> this diagram properly prepare and go properly prepare and go they can give this diagram and abcd they ask they get they can give to draw this diagram also are you with me you got my point so zygote after first cleavage is this one morula stage is this one blasto stage is here we can write blast lost i am clear till here everything done very good very good. that's why in the et embryo transfer do you remember beta more than eight blastomers this actually this all are blastomers this all are what tell me blastomers embryonal cells more than eight cell stage of blastomer is introduced into dash introduce into dash more than eight blastomer stage of embryo introduce into dash fallopian tube or ovary or uterus or cervix or what ah uterus that's why et embryo transfer et what embryo transfer look at the next question next question study the graph given below and answer the following questions Study the graph. Chalo, answer me. What is X hormone? What is Y hormone? Can any one of you help me out? What is X? What is Y? What is X? What is Y? Fast, 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 fast. What is X? Listen, listen, listen. Look at here. Look at here. The one which is the one. Let me use the red color. Okay. The one which is fourteenth day is maximum LH. This one, this blue color one, I am calling. What tell me? This blue color one is called FSH. So Y is FSH, X is LH. I am I clear till here? I am I clear? Yes. Oh, very good. Kavya, Ash, very good. Mahak, Ridya, flip flop, done, done, good, good, beta. Y is FSH. Ah, Y is FSH, X is S L L H. Two are pituitary, beta. Two are pituitary hormone. So both are pituitary hormone, right? Pituitary hormone. Now exactly this one is fourteenth one. I am writing here. It is a ovulation. It is ovulation. I am I correct? Ovulation. Now after this one is called what? Tell me this entire this entire phase is called what? This entire phase I am writing secretory phase or luteal phase. Yes or no? Luteal phase. Now find out the correct answer. Name the hormone X and Y. Very good. We have already done. We are very sharp. Are we? Are we? Yes, yes. Very good. Sharp. Very good. Better done. 
एक्सप्लेन द ओवेरियन इवेंट्स वन टू एंड थ्री अंडर द एक्स एंड वाई बेटा रिमेंबर इट डज इट डज मैटर हाउ मच ऑफ यू प्रॉपरली रीड द मैटर इज हाउ मच यू क्लियरली अंडरस्टैंड द क्वेश्चन you understand my point you will you know the concept but if you are not understanding the question in the examination hall you cannot get good marks so my dear kids what they given x y x y uh, hormone function they are asking look at the, what happened what is explain the ovarian events x 1 uh, and 2 3 under the influence under this influence of this one what happened in the ovary under the influence of fsh and lh what happen in the ovary i can write like this x hormone is x hormone is lh fs uh, y hormone is fsh fsh hormone increase the size of follicle that's why the name tell us follicle stimulating hormone fsh hormone because of fsh hormone size of follicle grow follicular phase lh hormone on the graafian follicle act and rupture to release the secondary oocyte called ovulation after ovulation corpus luteum produce a progesterone hormone and the growing follicle Follicles release the estrogen hormone. These all are the events that takes place in the ovary influenced by these two hormones. Are you with me? You got my point. Till here everything clear. I am I clear? Clear, beta. Till here everything clear. Shall I move to the next question? Any doubt so far? Come on, ask me. Mahak, Nayan. Till here everything clear. Isham. Sanjay, are you there? Ridya, Dia, Yatri, Pinjal, Pooja. Till here, everything clear, right? No doubt. Yes, yes. Sir. Now I'm going to the next question. Look at the next question. Ah, this question, five mark question, five mark question. Come on, Ridya, answer this question. What is given here? Question number one. Given, uh, given uh, alongside of the diagram of human ovum, oh, human ovum surrounded by few sperms. Surrounded by few sperms. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Ah, get fertilized. Okay, fine. What is given, beta? Compare the fate of sperms. Sperm number A, sperm number B, sperm number C. A, B come and contact the zona uh, coronary artery egg, but A is very, very, very close. So the fate of A is what? Nayan, fate of A is what? A is going to fertilize. A is going to fertilize. This is perivertebral line space. This is ovum. This is corona radiata. This is zona pellucida. Is it not? This corona radiata already given D. Now compare the fate of sperm shown in the diagram. The A sperm go and contact with the egg fertilizer. fertilization takes place participate in the fertilization what is the role of zona pellucida zona pellucida ensure the entry of single sperm and prevent polysperm polysperm polyembryony we discuss in the sexual reproduction flowering plan we don't have that capacity beta we don't have that capacity we don't have new cell we don't have no polyembryony here also polysperm will be prevent i forgot to mention you in 1 ml of semen 1 ml of semen ncert mention 100 million of sperms are there million sperms are there in one single ejaculation male partner Will deposit in the female. Uh, what they call it? Male partner deposits sperm in the female partner. Two hundred to three hundred million sperm is given in CRT. This many million sperms out of one sperm only undergo fertilization. That means something is guarding, something is preventing polyembryony. Zona as a polyspermy. Zona pellucida. Zona pellucida. Tell ah uh, tell to the sperm. No, 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 no. Already one sperm entered. Rest of all are bhar me ja. Chalo, all of you, katham. Your lifetime over. You got my point. Are you with me? Yes, yes, yes. Zona pellucida. Analyze is the changes occurs in the ovum. Tell me now. When sperm come and attach, come on, tell me, tell me. What are the changes takes place? What are the changes? How can you answer this question? Tell me. See. How can you answer the C? Any one of you try, my dear. Aparna, Ash, try, beta. 
flip flop sanjay try isham ah tell me tell me tell me it is isham is giving something second me ah absolutely very good beta once sperm come and attach that's why that's why my dear students keep in mind this is a ovum right every time if you if you see this if this if you see this diagram in actually a microscope you would also see small dot here you would also see small small structure here what is this small structure you know secondary oocyte this small structure is what beta this one is called secondary oos uh, sorry sorry secondary polar body second polar body polar body what is this big structure secondary uh, uh, sorry this one is called what tell me the big structure is called ooted ooted remember that means sir what happened now wait 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 meiosis one takes place in ovaries meiosis one takes place in ovary secondary oocyte form meiosis two takes place in fallopian tube when sperm and come sperm come and trigger meiosis two takes place in where Sp fallopian tube the secondary oocyte when sperm come and trigger that place ampulla isthmus junction meiosis two takes place so what is the what is the result second polar body which is going to degenerate this ooted with sperm nucleus is started to fuse to form a zygote mark my word mark my word beta ah very good next question mention the help of entry of sperm mention what help i'm sorry what help right mention what helps in the entry of sperm into the ovum acrosome acrosome i am i correct acrosome helps in the entry of ovum by the releasing of acrosome is releasing what lot of enzymes hydrolytic enzyme yes or no yes or no yes 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 and an v correct beta this this acrosome release hydrolytic enzymes to break the wall of the egg and penetrate into the egg fertilization mark my words Sp uh, specify the region of female reproductive system where the event representation in the diagram takes place last question you have to answer the one e1 i don't don't know but really i don't know any one of you any one of you ash ah uh, there is a specific region is given the wider portion of fallopian tube is ampulla narrow portion of fallopian tube is uh, isthmus the the first part of fallopian tube is infundibulum anterior part of infundibulum finger like projections are there so tell me now ampulla isthmus junction this process takes place i am i correct done done yes boss very good very good very good very good so i hope you are perfect in this question next question oh my god this question my dear last two years section view of what over given describe the stages of oogenesis in human female one by one will start oogenesis process oogenesis process start with what tell me oogonia or oogonium undergo many times mitotic division to form primary oocyte primary oocyte primary oocyte meiosis 1 it arrested but i'm talking about directly puberty after puberty okay oogonia primary oocyte primary oocyte undergo meiosis to form one smaller cell one bigger cell this is called first polar body polar body and the second one is called what tell me secondary oocyte i am i correct the secondary oocyte when sperm come and trigger this complete meiosis 2 it complete meiosis 2 to form second polar body and the big structure called what tell me ooted with this ooted only sperm haploid nucleus fuse to form zygote this is called the complete oogenesis process simple beta simple spermatogenesis oogenesis if you closely identify spermatogenesis is begin at puberty oogenesis begin at embryonic stage spermatogenesis is a continuous process oogenesis discontinuous process spermatogenesis formation of sperms oogenesis formation of functional matured female gamete ovum 
Are you with me? Are you with me? You got my point till everything clear? Yes, good, good. Draw a sectional view of human ovary and label the different follicles. Mark my words, students, students, this diagram beta before 19th March, before you enter, step into the examination hall in your mind, uh, ovary structure, uh, seminiferous tubule structure, uh, fallopian tube structure. Everything should run. Keep in mind. As soon as you take the answer question, paper should feel, ah, I know this one. Take pen and pencil and draw the diagram like that. Invisible, the whoever going to correct the paper should shock. You got my point? You understand my point? So look at better. In this diagram, first, this part is given primary follicle. Did not properly matured. Primary follicle. Primary follicle slowly undergo changes to form a tertiary. Secondary to tertiary. Tertiary to this big wall is what beta? Graph. You look at the big antrum is there. Size also bigger. Some, if I ask you a question my dear. Gra graphian follicle to secondary or primary follicle what is the difference i have seen yesterday when i was selecting these papers questions there was one question in kendra vidya like paper there was a question for two more write the difference between the secondary follicle to graphian follicle difference they are asked come on any one of you help me out how can you write if the question come if this type of question come sir don't we need to say when this happening in and don't we need to say about granulosa layers of oogenesis no need my dear granulosa cells are if it is surrounded that time you should call follicle you should call what tell me follicle actually this all are this all are it is what tell me this is primary oocyte right let me take primary oocyte this is primary oocyte surround around this one what is there follicle uh, granulosa cells are there granulosa this all are granulosa cells so whole structure is what beta this whole structure is called primary follicle now i'm talking about this one inside this one primary oocyte is the primary oocyte only undergoing this all changes so don't get confused you know what is follicle my dear primary oocyte surround around the graphene follicle present the whole structure is called follicle beta you would see follicles inside the follicle what is there my dear oocyte primary oocyte remember don't get confused majority of students are getting confused when we are reading the ncrt beta but no we should be very careful what is follicle primary follicle or follicle primary oocyte plus surrounding granulosa cells together called follicle but actually what is undergoing oogenesis process primary oocyte only inside that one got my point now graphene follicle to secondary or primary the difference is in graphene follicle antrum is there in secondary follicle no antrum got my point graphene follicle size are bigger matured secondary follicle immatured Graphian follicle inside whatever the secondary oocyte is there, a primary oocyte is there that undergo meiosis one complete, but secondary follicle no meiosis inside the secondary follicle because secondary follicle did not mature. Secondary follicle did not mature. You got my point. You got my point. Understand my point? Yes, yes, yes. How long will take that? Uh, uh, it will be take, my dear. It will take till we finish what all the chapters. Now we will give break for the uh, what they call uh, the uh, prayer time. Five thirty. I'll give break. Okay. Look at the next question. Next question, especially principal molecular biotech. Very interesting, important question we selected, my dear. Hold, go, go to the prayer, and after that come back again. Now, can any one of you answer this question? But how can we answer this? Study the following chart. Name the hormones involved. Ovulation to pregnancy. Ovulation. Ovulation to. Shall I call LH and estrogen? LH and estrogen shall I call? Is it correct or not? Come on, come on, come on. Ovulation is LH and estrogen is yes or no? Answer me fast. Yes or no? Yes or no? Come on, come on, come on. Don't take this better. Come on. Open NCRT and revise all of you. Talk to me. Send your answers. Pregnancy to lactation. So here I am writing prolactin hormone. Prolactin hormone from anterior pituitary. 
नेक्स्ट प्रेग्नेंसी टू प्लसेंटा आई एम राइटिंग सो प्रेग्नेंसी टू प्लसेंटा आई एम राइटिंग एच सी जी एच पी एल एंड ईस्ट्रोजन एंड प्रोलैक्टिन हार्मोन सर बोलते हैं ईस्ट्रोजन एंड प्रोजेस्ट्रोन हार्मोन राइट प्लसेंटा टू फीटल ग्रोथ एनी वन ऑफ यू आंसर बेटा फीटल ग्रोथ हार्मोन सर व्हाट एनी वन ऑफ यू हेल्प मी आउट विच हार्मोन इज एसेंशियल फॉर द ग्रोथ ऑफ फीटस इफ यू रीड इन सीआरटी क्लियरली इट मेंशन फाइव हार्मोन्स मेंशन वन इज कॉल्ड थायरोक्सिन हार्मोन सेकंड वन इज कॉल्ड ईस्ट्रोजन हार्मोन थर्ड वन कॉल्ड प्रोजेस्ट्रोन हार्मोन फोर्थ वन कॉल्ड कार्टिसोल हार्मोन फिफ्थ वन कॉल्ड प्रो Actin hormone. This all hormone two mark question. Which of the following or how many different type of or which essential hormones grow for the fetus? Which essential hormones are important? Which hormones are essential for the growth of fetus? Hormones are five. What are they, my dear? Thyroxine, estrogen, progesterone, cortisol, prolactin. Open NCERT. All five hormones clearly mentioned in the NCERT. After this one, after fetal growth, parturition is one hormone. But I will be silent for a minute. Can anyone of you help me out? Which hormone is for the parturition? Ah. Uh, Ridya, think, 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 think. One important hormone, important hormone. Yes, who is this? Anvi, absolutely. Anvi, CBSC, oxytocin. Oxytocin come from ah, a pituitary and posterior pituitary and acts on myometrium. Myometrium is what? Tell me. Myometrium is smooth muscle. The smooth muscles are contract by the oxytocin. That's why in a parturition process, what is given? Beta neuroendocrine process. It is a nervous system. Brain also involved by the secretion of this type of contractions and also hormone system also involved. Parturition process also thoroughly prepare. Who will induce the uh, labor pain? Who will induce the fetal ejection reflex? Remember, fetal ejection reflex from fetus to the mother, and mother started mild contraction, oxytocin release, positive effect, positive feedback. Oxytocin telling to the pituitary give more ox ox oxytocin. We will contract the uterus muscle to expel a fully fully developed baby. So oxytocin here. So answer is. H estrogen, HCG, HPL, placenta to fetal growth is this all hormone, and for parturition is what tell me oxytocin hormone for lactation process prolactin hormone prolactin plus tell me anyone of you which hormone ejaculate the milk out which hormone milk out anyone of you tell me milk producing is what tell me sir so relaxin will come the yeah. relaxing later phase of pregnancy to relax the muscles of vagina ovary produce okay but the ovary produce so that relax the vaginal muscles but for parturition purpose if question come ridya you should write oxytocin beta because oxytocin hormone acts on the myometrium myometrium vigorous contraction can expel the baby out okay don't get confused done done next question Ah, important question. So we almost cover all diagrams of human reproduction system. Arrange the following hormone sequence in the secretion. What they call pregnant woman. In a pregnant woman, they are asking you to to arrange the secretion of hormones. Mention their source and function of performs. HCG, LH, FSH reaction. Can anyone of you arrange in a proper uh, sequence, beta? Come on, Anvi, where are you? Aparna, can you can you try to arrange this all in a proper sequence manner? Which one will come first, sir? If if I am writing, follicular phase phase will come first. So FSH follicle size will grow. After that, ovulation. That means LH. After that, pregnant. What they call HCG from placenta. HCG from placenta. After that, later phase of pregnancy, relaxing hormone. I am I correct this the um, uh, 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 sequence? Ah, good, 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 very good. Come on, all of you, wake up and. 
finally answer me ah good good one is called what fsh leads to lh leads to hcg leads to relaxing hormone so this question is fine the following figure shows a fetus within the uterus okay on the basis of the given figure answer the questions they given it is the fetus it is given can you please mark better before we go to the answers fetus amnion umbilical cord placenta i am i correct i am i correct my dear kids i am i correct are you with me kavya cross check cross check beta cross check yes flip flop what is b beta what is b umbilical cord is yes no it's umbilical cord yes good good beta good now now look at this look at this one is called placenta this one is placenta this one this one beta i am marking here look at here i am marking this one this small one is called yolk sac this one is called yolk sac is mentioned in crt if you have in crt if you are open in crt come on cross check this one come on cross check this one come on beta look at the first question in the above figure choose i name the correct part a b c d we already named we are very fast we already named yes or no my dear next and act as a temporary endocrine what is this temporary endocrine gland and uh, substantiated by your answer what exactly they are asking what is this temporary gland my dear kids out of this a b c d which one is going to produce the hormones ah very good dia ash absolutely correct ridya good very good very good mahak where are you answer me and uh, who is that yatri all of you pinjal yatri all of you sadat come on answer me tell me here a is called placenta placenta tell me da placenta produce different type of hormones hormones that's what placenta call what tell me temporary endocrine gland temporary endocrine gland in ovary corpus luteum corpus luteum but here it's temporary endocrine gland is what placenta absolutely correct next mention the role of b b role it is going to be transfer the food material to placenta and also what tell me fetus it's going is a connection between what placenta to fetus and development of embryo mention the role of b and development process this umbilical cord is going to be developed from the trophy ectodermal cells trophy ectodermal cells are grow like a villa like structure and deeply penetrate to the mother blood to form placenta and the connection called what umbilical cord name the fluid surrounding the developing embryo how it is misused in sex determination can you tell me the name of this fluid beta some fluid is this one this one this one see some fluid is here i don't know what is that fluid in reproductive health chapter also we have discuss this one absolutely very good superb amniotic fluid amniotic fluid inside fetal cells are there so 10 8 to 10 ml of amniotic fluid will collect from the pregnant woman and they will cross check different type of a ah, chromosomal abnormality such as such as kleine filter turner down syndrome this type of one but amino synthesis are badly misusing how how beta how they are badly misusing can any one of you tell me this badly misusing they are clearly identifying the sex tell me if i write the karyotype of one person beta all chromosomes like this if i write all the chromosomes of a person how can i tell it is a male fetus and female fetus any one of you tell me beta if i draw this type of chromosome like this all karyotype how can i tell this is a male fetus and female fetus ash come on tell me yes female fetus is increasing that's okay beta fine but when a karyotype of any male or female how can uh, any baby how can i tell this is a male baby and female baby come on come on sir ah good 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 who is this ash no 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 ash this is not uh, it's not written beta in the karyotype i am x chromosome and y chromosome how how can you identify this is x and this is y tell me how can you identify flip flop how can ah absolutely beta y chromosome is what chota wala y chromosome is a smaller one x chromosome is a bigger one x chromosome is a bigger y chromosome is a smaller if these two unequal chromosomes are there at the 23rd pair we can tell male baby if two same chromosomes are there homologous at 23 
female baby you understand my point you got my point so the right answer of this question is this one reproductive health chapter but 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 before we go to reproductive health chapter all of you look at here try to understand try to understand one more important thing my dear kid trimester first trimester second trimester third trimester tell me i want something before i go to this question before i go to the next one at the end of first month at the end of first month something form end of first month something form any one of you tell me heart yes or no end of first month what beta heart formation heart formation tell me at the end of second month at the end of second month something is there tell me end of second month ah any one of you first 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 end of second month is what limbs and also digits formation moment it takes place moment of embryo fifth month hair appearance also fifth month can any one of you tell me at the end of 12th week first trimester what form at the end of 12th week what form any one of you tell me at the end of 12th week something has form that's called what tell me external genitalia tell me tell me tell me external genitalia you got my point end of 12th week end of 24th week almost all organs are form as an almost ah remember remember all of you external genitalia end of 12th week remember all of you especially my dear students this academic year i am telling you from human reproduction seminiferous tubules male reproductive system menstrual chart i also embryo development development developmental stages thoroughly prepare and go 19th march you will be come to know what questions are going to come it's very 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 important beta look at the next reproductive health chapter very small very easy questions beta simple questions only i selected because this chapter is not that much of uh, difficult you can also easily understand look at the first question very small very little question few questions only i selected look at here explain how do the following act as a contraceptive copper t saheli copper t leave it tell me a saheli tell me a saheli what is saheli how saheli work how saheli work come on how saheli work like how does it work like a contraceptive beta all of you look at here all of you look at here saheli is work like a anti estrogen hormone all of you look at here it is a non steroidal hormone right it is a non steroid steroid beta listen majority of student don't know this one this is uterus uterus inside there is endometrium this is endometrium right this is endometrium and this is cervix and vagina fine this one is endometrium endometrium should be thicker and thicker thicker and thicker to take what tell me embryo for this process we need estrogen hormone this estrogen hormone is essential to thickness of endometrium and pregnancy for progesterone hormone also what happens saheli block this one anti estrogen when this estrogen hormone who will secrete this estrogen hormone to do this here ovaries are there right the growing follicles this follicle secret estrogen hormone so when a woman is take this pill beta oral pill if she take okay this oral pill will tell the graph follicles to not to give estrogen anti estrogen so it will block the estrogen one so when estrogen did not come endometrium thickness will not increase so implantation that's why ncrt what mention oral pills will be inhibit the pregnancy at two places one is called ovulation it will stop one is called implantation implantation mark my words this question ah implantation and also what ovulation both will be going to stop copper t is what tell me cut is the uh, uh, copper releasing iud which suppress the motility of sperm which suppress the motility of sperm and also increase the phagocytic capacity in the uterus right and cut i am we can also write multi load what beta 375 also i can write why is medical termination of pregnancy carried out ymtp ymtp 
एम टी पी कैरी डॉट वेन अमेन गो टू अ डॉक्टर एंड द डॉक्टर आफ्टर एग्जामिनेशन टेल अस मैम दिस फीटस इज नॉट गुड यू जस्ट गो फॉर एम टी पी अंडर सर्टन सिचुएशन इफ दैट फीटस इज अब नॉर्मल इन क्रोमोजोम इफ दैट फीटस इज अब नॉर्मल इन द डेवलपमेंट ओके इफ दैट दैट दट प्रेग्नेंसी इन द फेलोपियन टू इफ इट इज एक्टोपिक प्रेग्नेंसी इफ इट इज अब नॉर्मलिटी विच इज गोइंग टू कॉज ह्यूज डैमेज टू अ मदर दैट कंडीशन दे विल टर्मिन need legal method to terminate the pregnancy called mtp can any one of you tell me mtp safe up to which trimester which week mtp safe sir when developing fetus has chromosomal or other abnormal ah good very good but absolutely correct can you please tell me this mtp safe up to ha ah, good 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 that me which week which week up to what tell me exa ah, tell me tell me ha ah. that me 12 weeks up to after that it is little danger to the mother so mtps are going to done when the abnormal peter fetus form a couple where both husband and wife are producing functional gametes wife and husband both are producing functional gametes but wife is still unable to conceive in seeking medical aid describe any one method that you can suggest to this couple to become happy parents what is your answer what is your answer if this woman is not going to okay okay directly rudya ivf directly ivf the many methods are there right so we can tell many arts are there assisted reproductive techniques technologies so the doctor can advise based on the problem of this two but they are both are functional better functional producing that time she can do et or icsi or i can write what beta um, z Ah, uh, Z Z I F T Z I F. This all are the methods of what I V F I V F assisted reproductive techniques. Yeah, yes, assisted reproductive techniques. Remember, in human health and sorry, in reproductive health chapter, different type of contraceptive pills, contraceptive methods plus STDs plus ART. Only this three topic, beta. Only this three topic. I am telling you. Question: There is a high chance you can come from this three, three topic. Different type of IUDs, different type of contraceptive method, especially focus on lactational amenorrhea. Ah, uh, natural method, lactational amenorrhea, pediatric abstinence. You got my point. Next, uh, physical barriers, physical method, uh, physical what they call beta uh, uh, contraceptive pills. After that, IUDs. After that, remember oral pills, a healthy life. After that, come to the reproductive health chapter. Different type of ERDs. ZIFT, GIFT, IVF treatment, ET, ZIFT. This, this all are. After that, simple topic STD also properly prepare. STD is like a HIV, syphilis, gonorrhea. Like, look at the next question. Look at the next question. How can handle? Sorry, how can uh, children as couple can help by the following assisted reproductive technologies like GIFT, gift, intracytoplasmic injection, gift. This gift. i told you beta how to remember how to remember this gift is going to come uh, what they call gift is going to happen you do you remember when a problem in the female that this problem problem this 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 woman is crying this woman is uterus is good uterus is perfect she can bear she can develop she can she can give a proper environment for the development of baby but her ovaries her ovaries cannot produce functional egg so other women which we call donor giving gift that means she is giving egg she is giving one gamete gift g i f t gamete so what doctor is doing taking her gamete and introducing in the fallopian tube now beta this is not a ivf my dear keep in mind look at here after introducing the functional gamete here this woman will be naturally conceived natural intercourse there is no chance of gamete taking out and putting what they call sperm no in vitro it is in vivo in vivo mean inside the body in vitro outside the body i am clear i am clear ah giving beta yes i am absolutely correct so one is called gift problem in where female partner intra cytoplasmic sperm injection if sperm count is too less sperm count is too less what they will do the doctor will catch with catheter the secondary oocyte 
you got my point the secondary oocyte with the help of a needle with the help of a small needle the highly active sperm that they, they directly introduce in the cytoplasm of egg intra that mean inside cytoplasmic sperm injection directly they introduce sperm in the egg to make embryo after that they will be slowly slowly started develop beta after that they slowly introduce in the fallopian tube or based on the activity they will introduce in the uterus or fallopian tube a woman has a certain queries as listed below before starting with contraceptive pills answer them what do contraceptive pills uh, 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 at uh, contain and how do they act as contraceptive pills contain estrogen combination they will prevent ovulation and uh, for implantation keep in mind that said and that's a contraceptive what schedule that should follow beta 21 days what they call one pill strip is there immediate after menstruation 1 2 3 4 Five five days after menstruation, sixth day onwards, the woman has to take one one pill every day up to twenty one days, which stop ah uh, ovulation, which stop ovulation, and also what my dear implantation, even lactational immunity also beta hormonal changes takes place in the lactating women's, the women's who are giving ah uh, what they call who are lactating actually in that women FSH hormone abnormal that means. Uh, imbalance no follicle growth takes place up to 3 to 6 months that's why it is called a lactational immunity called a natural contraceptive method few people can use look at better last question this is a only small question i selected from where uh, reproductive health chapters after that we will give a break go for your what they call Uh, 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 prayer beta. In case of fertile couple, a male partner can inseminate normally, but the motor mobility of sperm below forty percent. Below forty percent, sperm count is low. Any one of you help me out? Which method they will use? Which method? Ah, very good, Nayan. Very good, beta. Forty percent is which kind of ERT suitable for this one? I. C S I. How simple. When sperm count is too low, they will take that small level level uh, amount of sperm. They directly inject into egg to make zygote. I C S I. I C S I is a part of what actually? I V F only. So in reproductive health chapter, sir. A I. Ah, no, 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 but Sanjay. If it is. Artificial insemination is also called intrauterine insemination. This intrauterine insemination require at least fifteen twenty million sperms per ml. But here it is two sperm count low is only ICSA. They will go better. Remember, you got my point. Now all of you take a break. Oh, this is a, a prayer break, my dear. So six fifteen we will come back and most important chapters after break principal molecular biotechnology. So all of you go for break and come fast. Uh, come fast, all of you. Thank you. Thank you so much.
Hi all, welcome back to the classes. Now we are going to start with the next chapter which is having a good weightage for the board exam and all. So let me start with the questions from principles of inheritance. So these all topics are very important from principles of inheritance, the laws of Mendel. You may be knowing about the three laws of inheritance, law of dominance, law of segregation, law of independent assortment that all you have to go through. Then second the monohybrid dihybrid. <coughs> the ratios and all you have to check so in the monohybrid phenotypic ratio genotypic ratio dihybrid also phenotype and genotype <coughs> then the test cross also uh, one is to one that is the ratio of monohybrid and the one is to one is to one is to one that is the dihybrid test cross ratio so this much things from the chapter we will go through the important questions and all so let me start with the questions First question, Vishnu, <coughs> hi, can you hear me please make a comment, is it audible, okay, now let me start with the first question, in a dihybrid cross, when would be when would the proportion of parental gene combinations be much higher than non-parental? So, you might have gone through the page number 84, the cross that has been conducted by Thomas Hunt Morgan in Drosophila melanogaster. So, in that experiment, he was actually trying to learn about the transmission of characters in Drosophila. He thought that he will get the same ratio as that of Gregor Mendel. So what happened here is, in the first cross he was actually looking for the body color and eye color. You may be knowing about it. So he was taking a female with yellow body and white eye and crossed it with a male which is having the brown body with red eye. That is the wild type, brown body with red eye color. So, in the cross, in F2 generation, hope you have seen what is the result. In that, the 98.3%, sorry, 98.7% was parental combination. Only 1.3% was the recombination. So, what we can conclude from that is, in a chromosome, if two genes are showing very less number of recombination, that two genes are located very close to each other. So, this type of genes are actually called tightly linked genes. So, when tightly linked genes are present, the percentage of recombination will be very very less. So, percentage of recombination is directly proportional to, remember that line, percentage of recombination is actually directly proportional to distance between the two genes that you should remember so if they are showing so here body color and eye color if you are taking 1.3 percent only recombination is coming that means the distance between them is only 1.3 map units or we can call it as centimorgans. So that is the unit of measuring the distance between the genes, which was later used by Alfred Stewart event. So answer to that question, in a dihybrid cross, when would the proportion of parental gene combinations be much higher than non-parental? So parental combinations are more and recombinations are less means understand the genes are located close to each other. So there is less number of recombination whenever crossing over is taking place very rarely they are segregating. So in this question you have to write about tightly linked genes. So tightly linked genes show very less recombination and very high number of parental combination. Okay, many has already commented. So, we are starting with the next one. Then, you also learn about loosely linked genes. So, here the percentage of recombination between body color and eye color is only 1.3%. That means the genes are located close. Now, in the second experiment by Thomas Hunt Morgan, you might have seen 
it's coming around the recombination between so here they were learning about the eye color eye color as well as the wing shape that was the test second the cross b that was conducted in that you might have seen when the cross is conducted it was having around the 37.2 percent recombination so white eye colored female with miniature wing was actually cross with the red eye with normal wings which is dominant and in that they were getting new combination that was having white eye with normal wings and red eye with the uh, miniature wing like that new combination was coming it was 37.2 percent so when the recombination rate is very high understand these genes are located very far from each other so if you are taking the this one if you are taking the uh, eye color and the wing shape they are located 37.2 centimorgans or map units apart so this type of genes only we call it as loosely linked genes so remember about tightly linked and loosely linked sometimes the question can come opposite also so if parental combinations are more recombinations are less that means understand they are tightly linked if the recombinations are very high in number, understand they are loosely linked gene. Then also remember, percentage of recombination is directly proportional to distance and it is inversely proportional to the strength of linkage. And this ideology was used for this percentage of recombination is directly proportional to distance between the gene the ideology was used by alfred stewart even for gene mapping that means locating the position of genes inside the chromosome that much concept you have to learn now next one if two genes are located far apart from each other on a chromosome how the frequency of recombination will get affected so that also we discuss now if they are located very far apart from each other there is more chance of them segregating during crossing over and they can form more number of recombination so more the number of recombination understand they are located very far apart from each other that is called loosely linked genes so that is the answer to the second question now next one what are true breeding lines that are used to study inheritance pattern of traits in the plant pure breeding plants or true breeding plants means understand they are homozygous for that particular quality they have been made homozygous by selfing them for a lot of generation so if i want to get a true breeding tall plant i have to self the plant for many generation until i make sure it is homozygous for that particular quality and it is taken for plant breeding program that is what we call it as true breeding or pure breeding they should be made homozygous by continuous self pollination that is the first step in the dihybrid hybrid and mono hybrid experiment by mendel he was taking pure breeding or true breeding pea plants as the parents then only he conducted artificial growth between them which included the emasculation bagging dusting rebagging then selfing f1 generation then selfing f2 generation and keeping a data up to f3 generation plants that are self cross for many generation you should not write like that hisham you should write they are self for many generation and made homozygous up to that point you should write hope you got it so true breeding ones are okay homozygous that should be there and how it is made homozygous also it should be added in your answer sheets now coming to the next question a relevant portion of beta chain of hemoglobin of a normal human is given below so you may have learned about sickle cell anemia in sickle cell anemia you know that the genes of sickle cell anemia are located on chromosome number 11 in that if they are having so paternal and maternal chromosome if they are having hba gene so if hba is coming that is a normal dna you already know about it and the sixth codon the sixth codon will be having ctc so what will be coming here 
the in the mrna so in the mrna that is formed from here you can see it will be having the sixth code as what g a g so if g a g is coming as the sixth codon so when they are coding for amino acids so this is transcription during translation first amino acid second third fourth fifth and sixth one when it is coming you can see the sixth one will be which one the normal case it is glutamic acid that is coming at the sixth position so this is the gene 4 you know that rbc is made up of so if you are taking the rbc this rbc will be having a lot of hemoglobin so in that so many hemoglobins are coming you already learned in the biomolecules chapter and all structure of hemoglobin so if you are taking one hemoglobin it will be having two alpha chains and two beta chains so beta genes uh, chains the genes are actually located in the chromosome so if hba is coming here as the dna segment the sixth codon will form gag that is glutamic acid then you can see the hemoglobins the beta chains are normal so that will form a normal rbc but coming to the mutation so let's see what is happening if it is hbs so instead of hba here hbsc is coming just imagine then you can see instead of t here what will come a will come instead of a here u will come instead of glutamic acid you can see valine will be coming that means the hemoglobin will become uh, abnormal in that case you can see when the hemoglobin is becoming abnormal the rbc will be turning into sickle shape so that is sickle cell anemia the topic now Coming to the point, a codon for the 6th amino acid is GAG. So 6th amino acid GAG is coming means it will be glutamic acid. The 6th codon GAG mutates to GAA. Will there be any problem? My question, will there be any problem if the GAG become GAA? So you should take molecular basis chapter, the genetic codes and you should check what is GAA coding for. GAA is also coding for what? Glutamic acid. So there won't be any problem if GAG is getting mutated to GAA. So here they have given mutation GAG become GAA uh, as a result of mutation A and GUG as a result of mutation B. So I should tell that the explain giving reason how could mutation B change the hemoglobin structure and not mutation A. So it's simple. Mutation A, it's a silent mutation. Silent mutation means it made changes in the DNA and mRNA. But if the sequence of amino acids are not changing, that mutation is called silent mutation. So there the mRNA codes had changed, but the amino acid sequence having changed. Because every amino acid have, not every amino acid, if you are taking the 20 amino acid, many amino acid have more than one code. So GAA as well as GA, uh, so GAA and GAG that is coding for glutamic acid. So because of that only mutation A haven't made any problem. But in mutation B what happened is the GAG was changed into GUG where GUG is coding for which one? GUG is coding for the valine. So there you can see it is leading to a missense mutation. So a mutation in the DNA and mRNA which doesn't change the sequence of amino acid in a protein is called as which mutation? It's actually called silent mutation. But those mutations that are coming in the DNA, which make changes in the mRNA, as well as sequence of amino acid, that is actually called missense mutation. Hope you got about missense mutation. Yes, already answer given by Ayam Sadat Sanjay. Okay, good, good, good. Now next one, write the genotype of an individual who is carrier of sickle cell anemia gene but unaffected can you please come in first and an individual affected with the disease third uh, this question i want you to answer uh, who will come in first let me check so the first one it's a carrier second one you can see it is unaffected what can be the genotype you should write with hbs and hba 
So first comment from Hisham, HBA, HBA. That is normal individual. HBA, HBA is unaffected. Carrier, it is HBA and HBS. So HBA, HBS, HBA with HBS is carrier but unaffected. Okay, Yasir, Ahridya, all of you got the answer. Very good. So hope you got this concept. So please learn it and go. It's a sure concept that can be coming for the exams and all. So you should remember the chromosome had HBA gene. They will be making an mRNA where the sixth codon is GAG that will code for glutamic acid that will form the beta chain of hemoglobin and suppose it is becoming point mutation where AT become TA like that an inversion is sorry the point mutation is happening instead of AT if it is becoming TA then the mRNA instead of GAG it will become GUG that will code for valine that can actually affect the beta chain of hemoglobin so remember sickle cell anemia is an example of point mutation and it is an autosomal recessive disorder now coming to next question name the respective pattern of inheritance where f1 phenotype does not resemble either of the two parents and is in between the two for ex uh, that is incomplete dominance incomplete dominance you can see the parents taken for mirabilis jalapa red flower with white flower but the f1 generation was which color pink color so when two genes are coming and if they are forming an intermediate character that is actually called as incomplete dominance example mirabilis jalapa or four o'clock plant anti rhinum or snapdragon all these are actually example of incomplete dominance one more example i am adding right and keep it the starch grain synthesis in the pea seed or the pea seed size if you are taking that is an example of incomplete dominance where capital B capital B will produce large seed capital B small b produce medium size small b small b produce small size so these all examples are of incomplete dominance okay even andulation fold now next one resembles only one of the two parents so second question is regarding complete dominance Complete dominance concept was actually said by Grigor Johann Mendel. He said that when two different alleles are coming in a character or in heterozygous condition, one is expressing and the other is suppressed. That is called complete dominance. And if both are actually expressing together, that is called co-dominance. And if they form intermediate character, that is called as incomplete dominance. So three things you should learn. Law of dominance have exception. That is incomplete dominance dominance and co-dominance so Mendel said complete dominance when two different alleles are coming in f1 generation one express and the other is suppressed so one which is expressed is dominant one which is suppressed is recessive so that is an example of complete dominance and two different alleles are coming they form an intermediate character that is an example of incomplete dominance examples you learn then co-dominance also you learn when two different alleles are coming both of them are expressing that is called co-dominance AB blood group is an example of co-dominance Okay, now next one. Write the types of sex determination mechanism of the following crosses. Give the example of each type. Can you give the example? You already know about it. Suppose X, 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 X female and XO male. This type of sex determination you can see two set of photosomes and XX chromosome are coming in a female. Two set of photosomes and XO are coming in a male. So here they can produce when they undergo meiosis in order to form the gamete you can see they can produce two type of gamete one set of photosomes plus X here they can produce one set of photosomes plus X or one set of photosomes plus no sex chromosome. So this is an example of heterogamity this is an example of heterogamity here only one type of gamete is formed so it is homogamity. So if undergoing fertilization you know it will be a female and if undergoing fertilization this will be a male so can you give the example of this yes grasshopper ascaris cockroach all these are actually having xx female and xo male where the males are heterogametic remember now next one female which is having zw and is a descent male here you can see the females are heterogametic so females will be having zw and the males will be having 
he said this said so when you are writing you should write this explanation if it is asked to explain and all two set of photosomes plus is said w they can produce two type of gamete half the number of photosomes plus is said half the number of photosomes plus w chromosome and here that is happening in female during gametogenesis when meiosis occurs they can produce two type of gamete so males females are heterogametic and here you can see the males will be having homogametic condition they actually produce only one type of gamete half the set of photosomes plus is set fertilization can result in two set of photosomes plus is said is said that will be male and two set of photosomes plus is said w that will be female so females are still heterogametic the examples include which all birds hen some reptiles fishes all these are examples of is said w female and is said is said male now next one how many chromosome do drones of honey bee possess name the type of cell division involved in the production of sperm by them already we discussed it in the beginning still i am writing it in females sorry in honey bees you can see the females or the queen bee which lay the egg they have 32 chromosome they can undergo meiosis it result in two eggs sorry four uh, they can undergo meiosis and they can produce haploid eggs in that some of them directly becomes the male honey bee or drones without fertilization the process is called as parthenogenesis the process is called parthenogenesis whereas if they are undergoing fertilization because of the sperm that is produced by mitosis it's not meiosis it is mitosis that is from the drone side got it so drones have 16 chromosome they won't undergo reduction division they undergo mitosis where they produce sperm with 16 chromosome if fertilization is there it will result in female that can be a queen bee or it can be a worker bee that is having 16 chromosome so hope you got it so how many chromosome do drones have 16 and name the cell division involved in the production of sperm it is mitosis don't write meiosis understand that diagram okay that's all now next one coming to the next question hope you are getting it many comments are coming how would you find genotype of tall pea plant bearing white flowers explaining with the help of a cross name the type of cross you use actually here you have to go for a test cross you know what is test cross the dominant character you cross it with the recessive for example if i take tall and cross it with dwarf if I am getting all tall, understand the plant picked by me is homozygous. Can you understand? But if I am getting 50% tall, if I am getting 50% tall, if I am getting 50% tall, when I cross a tall with dwarf plant, if I am getting 50% tall and 50% dwarf, understand the plant that I have picked is heterozygous. So this is actually the test cross. Hope you got it. So it is 1 is to 1 ratio. Then if I conduct it for dihybrid, I will be getting 1 is to 1 is to 1 is to 1 ratio. If I am crossing a tall uh, plant with white flower with its recessive parent, if I get 1 is to 1 is to 1 is to 1 ratio, understand the plant picked by me is double heterozygous. Hope you got it. So test cross only we have to do. Yeah, crossing the F1 with the recessive parent is actually called as test cross. Shall I continue? Are you getting it? So dihybrid test cross also let me show what you have to do. So if I am taking tall with white you know both of them are dominant. And we have to cross it with dwarf and which one? So tall with white and dwarf with violet. So what will be the ratio? White, uh, white already we know it will be having. So no need to do white already it is actually the recessive character white is a recessive character so we will not be getting the the ratio and also test cross is enough to get the quality so find the genotype of tall pea plant bearing white flowers so white flower is actually recessive we know that we will not be getting when you cross it with the recessive parent we will not be getting the ratio but tall we will be getting so here the test cross only we have to mention in this answer shall i proceed please make a comment so if it was violet, we could have conducted the dihybrid test cross. 
hello make a comment yes now next moving to the next question the cytological observation made in the number of insects led to the development of the concept of genetic or chromosomal basis of sex determination honeybee is an interesting example to study the mechanism of sex determination study the schematic diagram or cross between male and female honeybee given below and answer the question so already we have done this diagram the female honeybee is producing gamete and a is actually meiosis b is mitosis then here c represent parthenogenesis so identify the cell division a and b a is meiosis b is mitosis then name the process c parthenogenesis the development of male honeybee directly from the unfertilized egg is actually called parthenogenesis a male honeybee has 16 chromosome whereas its female has 32 give one reason because here they are produced by directly from the egg without fertilization that is why they are haploid so the reason you should write about parthenogenesis explanation what type of sex determination do they have they have haplodiploid type of sex determination hope you got the answer now moving to the next question name a disorder give the karyotype and write the symptoms of a human suffer from a result of monosomy of sex chromosome you know what is monosomy so in monosomy please try to remember in a female who is having 44 autosomes plus xx let it be the primary oocyte when it undergo meiosis one it is resulting in the formation of 22 autosomes plus x and 22 autosomes plus x like this they are producing the secondary oocyte <coughs> just imagine and the first polar body just imagine the secondary oocyte when it undergo the meiosis 2 it is resulting in the formation of egg which is having 22 autosomes plus both the X uh, let it form the polar body then 22 autosomes plus 0 now spermatogenesis is occurring with 44 autosomes plus XY in the primary spermatocyte you know what will happen it will result in the formation of 22 autosomes plus x and 22 autosomes plus y and further they will divide and form four sperms that is with 22 autosomes plus x 22 autosomes plus x 22 autosomes plus y 22 autosomes plus y so what can happen so spermatid turning into sperm sperm combination only i am taking which is formed from the secondary spermatocyte so suppose this egg is fertilized by this sperm it will result in 44 autosomes plus xo so this loss of one x chromosome can result in which syndrome turner syndrome hope you understood turner syndrome so in turner syndrome understand a egg without an x chromosome may be fertilized by a sperm with x chromosome so here in one of the pair of sex chromosome one is lost so loss of one chromosome is actually aneuploidy and it is monosomy so what is aneuploidy also let's make a so what is aneuploidy so please learn aneuploidy the gain or loss of chromosome is called aneuploidy in that gain of chromosome is called as hyperploidy and the loss of chromosome is called as hypoploidy and in that itself loss of one chromosome one or two chromosome actually the gain or loss is aneuploid in that the loss of one chromosome is actually called as 2n minus 1 that is called as monosomy in the ncrt the monosomy example 44 autosomes plus x so you have to learn about turner syndrome and if it is gain of a chromosome gain of a chromosome suppose this is the egg just imagine this is the egg and it is fertilized by this sperm then it will result in 44 autosomes plus x x y so reverse also can happen due to abnormal segregation of chromosome so this will lead to which syndrome it will be leading to the klein filter syndrome it will be leading to the klein filter syndrome so in klein filter syndrome you should understand it is hyperploidy one chromosome is additionally coming this is actually called trisomy so trisomy of the 23rd pair monosomy of the 23rd pair of chromosome is turner syndrome 
Trisomy of the 23rd pair is Klinefelter syndrome. Hope you got the Klinefelter syndrome where the genotype is 44 autosomes plus XXY. Then you can see there is also Down syndrome that is the trisomy of 21st where you can see 45 autosomes will come with XX or XY. So this much you have to learn from the concept. Now let's go back to the concept. Name a disorder, give the karyotype and write the symptoms uh, a human suffer from as a result of monosomy of sex chromosome. So here you should write 44 autosomes plus XO that is which syndrome? Turner syndrome. Turner syndrome is affecting the female only. So females will be lacking the menstrual cycle or irregular menstrual cycle, rudimentary ovary, short stage, mental retardation, sterility. All these are the symptoms associated with Turner syndrome. Hope you got it. Now next one. How does mutation occur? So next topic mutation. The change in DNA is actually called mutation. Just now we discussed CTC and this one. So, in the DNA, if the template strand is having, let me add some more here. So, you will get an idea. This is a segment of DNA. So, in the segment of DNA, if you are seeing a change in single base pair, that is actually called as point mutation. Suppose AT is becoming TA. That only we discussed just now. AT was becoming which one? TA. In case of which one? Sickle cell anemia. So when AT become TA, you can see GAG that is formed from here. So previously GAG was the mRNA that was formed that was becoming GUG. Yes or no? So like that, if there is a change in single base pair in the DNA, that is actually called as, that is actually called as point mutation. So hope you know what is point mutation. The change in single base pair in the DNA is actually called point mutation. Several types are there that is not given in NCRT, transition, translation, etc. Now, you also know about frame shift mutation. Whenever in the DNA, one base pair is actually getting deleted or inserted. You can see if for example, CCC, GGG, AAA, like that if it is going, then this is the segment of DNA where you can see one base pair suppose it is getting inserted then the mRNA formed from here is what? mRNA formed from here is CCC, GGG, AAAA -A -A. and in that the codons are like this. Yes or no? All the codes are like this. So suppose a base pair is getting deleted. A base pair is getting deleted. Suppose CG get deleted. Now you can see all the codes will be shifting. All the codes will be shifting backward. That will be happening. So when all the codes in the mRNA will be changing. So just look at here. Then we will come back to that. So suppose CG if it is getting deleted. You can see this C is getting deleted. What will happen next? then the code will become that means from this code it will move backward from the this code also you can see it will be moving backward so it will become instead of ccg it will from this code one c will move backward from the next code one g will move backward so deletion of base pair can remove the codons backward whereas insertion if a new code is actually getting inserted here all the codes in mrna will shift forward so that mutation only we call it as which mutation that mutation only is called as frame shift mutation so how does mutation occur mutation can be occurring due to some mutagens it can be physical or chemical uv radiations and all can actually mutate the dna and even some chemical carcinogens are also there sorry some chemical substance are also there like the acridine orange dye and all that can actually change the dna then differentiate between point mutation and frame shift mutation change in a single base pair is actually called as point mutation and here if insertion or deletion of some base pairs are occurring in the dna you can see entire codes in the mrna can shift forward or backward that is actually called frame shift mutation now we are moving to the next one sudden change in the dna which can change the character of an organism due to the influence of some substance like mutagen that is actually called mutation so when you are writing you should write sudden heritable changes itself then next one next question name the kind of disease or disorders that are likely to occur in humans if 
if mutation in gene that codes for an enzyme phenylalanine hydroxylase occurs so in chemistry also you might have learned about phenylalanine it is an aromatic amino acid so this is the structure of phenylalanine where you can see there is a aromatic ring structure that is coming so this phenylalanine will be converted into the amino acid tyrosine it is converted into the amino acid tyrosine by so here you can see one OH will be added at this portion that is done by the enzyme phenylalanine hydroxylase hydroxylase the gene is located on chromosome number 11 and all so they will be making this so capital P capital P the gene is coming they produce this enzyme so this is tyrosine which is an aromatic amino acid it is a non-essential amino acid because it can be synthesized in our body from phenylalanine if it is combining with iodine they can result in the formation of tyroxine and if it is produced only we can produce melanin and even it is involved in the formation of hormones like adrenaline so understand a single gene have multiple effect so if this capital P is absent and small p is coming you already learned from the modified allele concept that is given in NCRT if a recessive allele or a modified allele is coming the one which is not going to produce an enzyme here that enzyme is not produced tyrosine will not be produced melanin thyroxine all these production will get affected so single gene influencing multiple effect is pleiotrophy now coming to the question uh, name the kind of disease or disorder that are likely to occur in humans mutation in gene that uh, code for phenylalanine hydroxylase is occurring the disorder is which disorder already commented okay first comment from which person Sanjay Sanjay has commented first PKU phenyl ketone urea that was the first comment snowflake is commenting so many diseases it's phenyl ketone urea I think next answer there is an extra copy of chromosome number 21 already we discussed extra copy of chromosome number 21 is coming 21st chromosome 3 chromosome may be present so that is which one trisomy of 21st pair down syndrome down syndrome is the answer trisomy of 21st pair is down syndrome then the karyotype is XSY that is Klinefelter syndrome so they are actually males with so many feminine quality they have breast formation gynecomastia sparse body hair all these are the characters of males that are having Klinefelter syndrome trisomy of 23rd pair where you can see additional one X chromosome is coming in a male XXY it will be next one mention any one symptom of the disease or disease disorders named above already i said down syndrome case mental retardation and ugly space die and you can see the palms are actually having or the round faces all these are the symptoms then uh klein filters also just now we discussed that is having feminine character gynecomastia also you should write yes that's all okay protruding tongue always open mouth all these are the characters of down syndrome and it was actually discovered by langdon down now next question identify a b c d e f uh, in the table given below so trisomy of 21st that is down syndrome you can write about the uh, mental retardation as well as protruding mouth the round face widely spaced eye then sex it can be observed in both male and female down syndrome can be observed in both male and female then this one uh, syndrome c xsy here you should write Klinefelter syndrome so this one is which one Klinefelter syndrome and overall masculine development they are males but with a lot of feminine quality it is found only in male here it can be male or female both can be there then Turner syndrome it is actually showing rudimentary ovary then you can write there is irregular ovulation and the ovulation is absent like that then sex if you are taking it is found only in female already given now next question study the given pedigree of a family where you can see so this pedigree chart you have to observe and answer what kind of inheritance can be observed in the given pedigree so if you are taking first of all you should understand the parents are unaffected and 
the children are affected so what type of disorder it is it is a recessive disorder first thing we should understand is it is a recessive disease then out of the recessive we have to check two either it is x linked or autosomal so x linked whether it is coming to check that let's write and see only so i think it won't come because from the father y chromosome is only coming here then uh, x will be from mother so mother if it is a carrier the it can be expressed in son if it is a recessive disorder you should understand x chromosome should so suppose if i am writing x uh, y and here also x y so if i take this one surely she will not get this character because suppose she is getting the affected x chromosome from mother from father she will get only x so surely it won't get exposed so this is not matching so it is not an x linked disorder and it is which disorder surely it is a autosomal recessive disorder so what kind of inheritance can be observed in the pedigree the answer is it is autosomal recessive disorder second one write a disease which exhibit this type of pedigree you can write sickle cell anemia as well as you can write about the phenyl ketone urea all these are autosomal recessive disorders even albinism some questions have albinism also that is also autosomal recessive sir why did the children main were okay that was a mistake actually uh, this might not be okay now is it correct hope you got it now next one write a disease which exhibit this type of pedigree already we said then a normal visioned woman whose father is color blind so normal visioned woman whose father is color blind marries a normal visioned man so what would be the probability of her son or daughter to be color blind so explain with the help of a pedigree chart so pedigree chart if i am taking <coughs> normal visioned woman her father is <coughs> so let me read the question again a normal visioned woman whose father is color blind so she is normal visioned means her mother is also normal and she is going to get married to a person who here you can see in that person a uh, normal visioned man normal visioned man only is given so let's take it as the parents are also normal now what can be the genotype let's see what can be the genotype so first of all we have to put a uh, this one the panet square and check what is the answer and all that is coming none of the daughter okay let's see so a normal visioned woman whose father is color blind marries a normal visioned man so let's take her as so here when i am taking the genotype she is actually a carrier because her father is color blind that means he was having this genotype whereas mother is normal and this person is normal his uh, his father is normal mother is normal or carrier whatever it is he is going to be normal only so we are going to calculate the percentage of their children so when you are writing you better use a panet square in that you put the genotype and do it then it will be easy so here the male gamete that is possible normal x normal y female gamete that is possible that is normal x then the defective one so here you can see the females are normal so 50% females are normal 50% females are carrier and 50% males are normal and 50% males are color blind so let's check the question hope you are getting it so let's the check the question s yes, will be affected first of all what is the probability of her son to be affected probability means you have to take completely so probability of son to be affected is 0.25 or 1 out of 4 because probability question asks you should take fully but percentage if asked you can write 50% of son affected 
then second second part of the question daughters to be color blind so what is the probability of their daughters to be color blind that you can write zero percent percentage or the probability it is zero percent that is the probability hope you got it yes 0.25 or 25 percent will be the affected shall we proceed daughters none now next question why is hemophilia generally observed in human males explain the condition under which a human female can be hemophilic so this question uh, sandeep sir will be discussing <coughs> hello 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 students so far important important topics i hope you all are following i hope how many of you can you please tell me how many of you sitting with ncrt textbook my dear kids honestly honestly tell me how many of you are keeping ncrt with you how many of you are writing actually how many of you are properly noting down all the points honestly tell me all of you no cheating come on all of you tell me how many of you kavya is your, uh, are you with sitting with ncrt ah uh, ridya isham all of you sitting with ncrt or simply or attending the class or what come on answer me come on come on answer me yes okay nayan tambe very good beta god bless you with 99 marks what about others what about others simply sitting right so your move is going so simply you are sitting and listening right Ah, all of you take inserted textbook and one rough notes, one paper and write down, beta. We are explaining here important questions. You know, we gather this question from different different resources, and we are explaining you to to get good marks in final examination. Good, good, good. All of you, right? Good. Look at here. The question tell us why hemophilia generally observe in human males explain under certain condition what they are saying they are asking certain human which females can be a hemophilic we know it is a sex linked recessive or sex linked dominant what is this hemophilia is what tell me sex linked recessive so here i am taking this is a one x chromosome this is a second x chromosome both x chromosomes are there in where both x chromosomes are present in where female right in female right look at your female fine so for example here the, the, there is a gene is there this is the x gene is there for example particular hemophilia h gene i am taking okay one gene is there now here whatever the complementary gene is there that gene also if i am taking h that means the recessive gene so when both recessive genes are there on both x chromosomes only a female can be expressed female can be expressed for example this is a recessive gene i am taking one female my dear kids look at your one female both x chromosomes i am taking one of the x chromosome it is a recessive gene is there small h and other one there is a dominant gene is there now in this condition she will be a x h and x beta so x chromosome dominant gene is telling to this one no 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 i am here you should not express you got my point so who is this fellow this fellow is a carrier carrier no problem that's why this female is not going to express but what happened in case of males in case of males i uh, look at here this is a one x chromosome is there and the second one is called what tell me small y chromosome beta do you remember in the theory classes we discussed the y chromosome does not involve in the x chromosome y chromosome specially come from where father you got my point so for example here the recessive gene is there called x is there and the next one is called here there is no it's not going to be involved this y chromosome is not going to be involved in the what they call x chromosome so this recessive gene will tell are nobody is going to be stopping me if it is a dominant gene is on the other side it would have been what they call uh, uh, opposite or it would have been tell dominant so here this is a happy very happy i am in recessive mode i can express nobody nobody can stop me that's why hemophilia that's why that's why sex linked recessive genes are in case of male it is a complete big injustice males are going to be affected more because one x chromosome only there you know beta this condition in this condition is called hetero that is a two different type of sex chromosomes are there in case of male like in female two x chromosomes are in a small and normal same homozygous condition but this is not a homozygous condition in case of male heterozygous condition so what happen even if it is a recessive condition also it will express so tell me beta tell me all of you in the male that's the reason why in pedigree also go back go back here beta just now only sir explain here it is true here beta if you carefully look at here both are parents are unaffected right parents are unaffected beta just take as a uh, sex linked recessive she if i am thinking she is a normal or mother carrier 
carrier for sickle cell anemia or color blindness how come this girl affect simple logic right simple logic right if she is a uh, what the call affected mother is affected only there is a possible but in the in the pedigree they did not given they did not given so my dear kids remember all of you why hemophilia like sex linked recessive disorders are more common in male one x chromosome only there due to due to the presence of one x chromosome even the recessive gene is a single recessive gene can started to express are you with me you got my point you got my point understand now that's the reason why more males are affected but my dear kids if any disease is 50 50 percent affecting 50 percent males and 50 percent female affecting beta it must be autosomal it must be what tell me autosomal not sex linked recessive so answer is what more males are affecting because moles are heterozygous condition for the sex chromosome only one x chromosome is there that's the reason why you have to be very careful in the pedigree also more males are affecting beta you have to think next a pregnant woman female was advised to undergo mtp medical termination of pregnancy it was diagnosed by a doctor that fetus she is carrying has uh, developed from a zygote formed by xx egg xx egg okay fertilized with the y carrying sperm xx egg beta shall i call it is a trisomy am i correct it is called trisomy or not yes sex link sorry uh, uh, auto allosomal trisomy that mean tell me all of you ah xx actually in egg one x chromosome only should present this is abnormal uh, egg so that's why i'm telling what tell it is a two x chromosome Plus one x one y chromosomal sperm beta. Can you please answer now? Both are fused. Forty four autosomes plus x x y. It is a trisomy, allosomal trisomy, Klinefelter syndrome. You got my point. It is a trisomy, autosomal problem. Uh, sir, what they call chromosomal numeral problem, mutation, chromosomal mutation. So it is a problematic fetus, and uh, that's the reason why the doctor is telling to terminate this one. Do you remember? before the break i was telling uh, amino synthesis mechanism what was amino synthesis mechanism use actually amino synthesis the doctor will identify any chromosomal problem is there or not any any trisomy monosomy this type of gene or uh, chromosomal problem is there or not to avoid this type of problem amino synthesis is the best diagnostic method but you know about our indians this type of big techniques a good techniques are they are misusing for what tell me female feticides khatam chalo if it is female Male, give five six thousand to the compounder or diagnostic part per person and tell me the sex of the baby and terminate this. It's very 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 bad thing. That's the reason why sex ratio in our India very 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 what do you call it? Ah, uh, unbalanced. It is not a proper balancing one. So tell me here, this DC, this zygote is what actually trisomy. Which trisomy? Allosomal trisomy. X X Y. It is a Klinefelter chromosomal problem. Doctor is telling to what terminate MTP. If you read NCERT, my Dear NCERT mentioned per year in the world forty to fifty millions of MTPs are going. If you are NCERT Nayan, you told me you have NCERT right open and underline this one MTP all over the world per year forty to fifty millions of MTPs are takes place abnormal fetus. Chalo, it will be terminated by the doctor advice. Next question. Look at the next question. How can you answer this type of question? Can you can you answer this is a autosomal recessive or autosomal dominance or or sex linked recessive? What the same question? One pedigree question will come, beta. One pedigree either for MC. Q or case study or or three more question one pedigree question they will ask last year also there was one pedigree sample paper also there was pedigree ah uh, guest paper also there was one pedigree so properly prepare autosomal recessive or sex linked recessive dominant we know all the generation will be affect one one individual affect i said now look at this diagram pedigree in this pedigree parents unaffected and here one one boy affected in this generation for this generation in this this generation tell me here this lineage ah one boy affected here also one boy affected now tell me here one son affected here tell me what is this type of pedigree come on come on come on fast 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 ridhya is this autosomal recessive or sex linked recessive come on come on come on come on fast 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 how come it is autosomal come on think 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 more males are affected right here more males are affected here and parents unaffected Ah, uh, come on! Anyone of you answer me? Ah, uh, fast, fast, Dia. 
Ah, flip flop, where are you? Can you identify this one? What kind of pedigree is this? What kind of pedigree is this? Sex linked recessive. Who is this? Isham. Yes, sex linked recessive. What about others? Think, think. Nayan, think. Come on, Ridya. Answer me. Look at here. Ah. Ah, good, good, good. Magastri, look at beta. This is here males, more males are affecting here. Fine. Okay. Give all the possible genotypes of members 4, 5, 6 in pedigree chart. Give one example of the above disease. Identify the given pedigree, the given, right? So let's take here. For example, here both parents are affected, both parents are normal and the father, here is one son affected, one son affected, right? Now, in this condition, shall I take here, father is normal, mother is XCX. So, what kind of, what kind of uh, uh, chromosome she must have received? X from father, XC from mother. So, she is a carrier. That carrier, the carrier chromosome might have this person uh, receive it. So, Y chromosome from father. Yes or no? XC and Y chromosome affected person. You got my point. What about this one? Tell me. This girl, this girl also tell me XC, X chromosome. And this boy? X, C, Y, father is normal, X and Y, am I clear, are you following me or not, got my point, X linked recessive, so they are asking 4, 5, 6, we will write all, possibly, possible, now 4, fourth one we already write about a carrier, 5, X, C and Y, 6 one is called what, X, Y, there is no male carriers in sex linked beta, no male carriers. In case of autosomal, there will be a carrier. Both male, female, there is a chance of carrier. But in case of sex linked, males are no carrier. Females can be carrier. Why? I told you one chromosome also, one gene also able, able to what? Express the disease. Because there is no other gene to what? Uh, dominant or recessive, nothing. Dominant, especially dominant. You got my point. So, we will write what tell me. 5, 4, 5, 6 pedigree is this one. Fourth one. 5th one, 6th one and these are parents one. That's why I am telling you my dear, sex linked recessive, everyone keep in mind, sex linked recessives are the diseases will be midway transfer from father to daughter, mother to son. What did I say? Father to daughter, mother to son. Father to son, no. That will be the Y linked. Hol holantic chromosome, holantic genes better. No, Y chromosome from father to only to son, right? So keep in mind all of you, father to daughter, mother to son. That will be that is a characteristic feature of sex linked recessive and skipping generation. Generation is the parents are did not affected, right? So remember sex linked recessive and genotype of this what they call different different type of. Uh, persons. Next year, give an example. Sickle cell anemia. You can, uh, sorry, I'm sorry. Color blindness. You can write. You can write. What one more is hemophilia? You can write. Next. Ah, look at here. This question. This question. Try to identify the correct answer of this question. Both male and female parents. B blood group. So I can write. I can write B blood group. Two possibilities are there, right? Genotypes. I, B, I, B. I can write homozygous condition. I, B, I, I can write. Am I clear? B, genotype. B, possible genotype is what? B, uh, blood group is two genotypes are there. I, I, B, heterozygous and homozygous condition. What about A, fellow? I, A, I, A, homozygous condition. I, A, I. Am I clear? Am I clear? I can write like this, right? Now, tell me. Here they are given A blood group, AB blood group, B blood group and also A blood group is possible better. But hold a minute, all of you. I hope all of you following me. Are you following me? Are you following better? If you take as a homozygous conditions of both parents. Let's take homozygous condition of both parents. This one, this one I am taking. This one I am taking, okay. IAIA, 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 IAIA cross with IBIB. IBIB. IB. Tell me here, what is the possibilities of offsprings here? Tell me, IA, IA, IB, IB. Yes or no, beta? So, chance of what? IA, IB, IA, IB, IA, IB. All our AB persons are coming. But in the offsprings, A, AB, B, A is given, beta. That means parents are not homozygous for A and B blood group. Are you with me? You got my point. Parents are not homozygous for this one beta. This is not correct genotype of parents. 
let's take if it they are if they are heterozygous for beta any chance is there for the formation of a new uh, what they call character i a i i b i i a i i i b i make a funnet square and write here ah first one is called what i a i here i am writing what i b i tell me first one i a i b a b blood group there is a chant a b blood group one next uh, tell me what is the next one tell me i b i b blood group where is the b blood group b blood group chance is there next uh, i a i a blood group a blood group is there a blood group also chance is there last one is called i i o blood group also there is a chance beta but they given a three different type of blood groups given a b a also given okay a a b b a is given that mean parents are what parents are heterozygous for a b blood group are you following me a b blood group good good Dia, now can you answer me, beta? Here, identify, uh, study the pedigree chart given above, showing the inheritance pattern of blood groups in a family. Answer the following question. Give the possible genotype of individual one two. Individual one two possible genotype is I A I and I B I. Am I correct? Am I correct? Are you following me? Right. Next. Name the antigen present on plasma membrane of RBC in individual six, individual nine. Hold a minute. Individual six. Who is the individual six? B. B blood group. If you able to recall body fluid and circulation chapter and multiple alleles also we discuss. This is RBC. RBC on surface. Antigen. What type of antigen is there? Antigen B, antig antigen B, antibody A type of what they call beta proteins are there in B blood group? A B blood group. Yes or no? If it is the A blood group beta, if it is A blood group, tell me what type of antigen? Antigen A antibody B. If it is B blood group. Antigen B, antibody A. If it is A B blood group, A and B both antigens are there. Antibodies are none. If it is O blood group, antigens are none. A B antibodies are there. This we already learned, right? This we already learned. But where is the location of antigen beta on the surface of RBC? Where is the location of antibody in plasma? In the plasma. Look at the question. Name the antigen present on the plasma membrane of RBC in individual six. Individual six is six is B blood group. If it is a B blood group, it have what kind of antigen is there on the plasma membrane? B antigen is there. Individual nine. Where is the individual nine? Who is the individual nine? O. So O. Tell me the O blood group. Answer is now. Tell me answer is what? If it is the O blood group, what type of antigens are there? <coughs> I will be silent. Isham, Sanjay, come on, come on, come on, beta, message me. If it is the O blood group, what type of antigen on RBC? Find out, find out, find out. I will be silent. Come on, come on. Good, very good, very good. Absolutely correct. Very good, absolutely. Nayan, Ridya, correct, beta. No antigen, no antigen. But A, B, both antibodies are there in the plasma. So this question answer also we have done. Now, what is the last one? Tell me. Last one is called write the genotype and antigen present on RBC of individual five. Explain pattern of inheritance responsible for this phenotype. Where is uh, uh, individual five? They where is individual five? Is this one, beta? Individual five is A B. Chalo, answer. Answer is what? What is your answer? Ah, answer is what? Tell me. A B. A B is beta. Come on, individual five is A B. Come on, come on, fast, 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 fast. Ah, uh, I A, I B, both, right? That's ah. Uh, now look at here, beta. Here it is, A B, both antibodies are antigens are there. That mean this fellow genotype is what? Ah, uh, Kades are is helping from here. I A, I B. So that mean both genes are telling. No, who are you to to explain? I will also explain. You also ex both will be expressed. 
no we will not follow the mendelian law we will both will express ah how can you say it is a dominant you are dominant i am recessive no i will not digest one of my student is there in the class very 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 sharp beta so they said no 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 sir we will both both will come with you there are astral one student is there i have <laughs> astral and lina both will be always go out and come room around and come so they are like what they call tell me both come so no no sir how can you say an astral to outside now i am here and astral is outside no no we will also go i will also go so like a what beta Co dominant, both will be dominant, both will express. Are you with me? You got my point? Yes. So, I A I B blood group, this is actually A B, both antigens are there. Are you with me? You got my point? So, this type of questions, it is a very easy, very easy beta. Just you need to think where is the antigen, what type of antigen in A, what type of antigen in B. Enough. Simple, simple question. Next question, look at the next question. This already Krishna has sir done. Look at here, beta. Can any one of you answer this one? We will go very fast, and I have to start the molecular basis, which is very, very, very high weighted chapter. So I am skipping this one. Shall I? This already sir, this already explained, beta. C T T. I know what they call it is. Ah, uh, if a base pair T was substituted with A, how would the affected immunoglobulin chain? So this already sir uh, uh, explained. So I am not explaining this one. Is it clear? Shall I go to the next question? Come on, talk to me, my dear. are you there are you there shall i go to the next question it is a simple question it is a point mutation question i am not discussing this one beta directly i am going to the next question is already sir done ah are you there keep 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 comment beta keep comment don't sit simply we are two days only far from our final exam only two days try to understand and try to recall all the chapters ah 95 plus 98 99 only should come look at your next question i am uh, uh, discussing the observe observe the diagram of fruit fly and uh, fruit fly given below answer the following question fruit fly is given beta fruit flies are called uh, drosophila melanogaster here this is a small one this is the big one is given beta a b can you tell me what type of sex determination x x x y Yes or no? X X X Y type of sex determination. Good, very good, very good. So tell me, which one is X X? Which one is X Y? Shall I call this is X X and this is X Y, sir? Whatever the bigger one is, that's called male. And whatever the smaller one is called female. Is this correct, beta? Is this correct? Is this correct? Come on, anyone of you help me out? Is this correct? The I is telling no. So here also, what females are dominating? Female size is very. Look at here, beta. Here, X X X Y in this type of pattern. Tell me, X X females are bigger in size, and males are what? Tell me here. I am writing. I am writing males have X X in small in size. So X Y right? X Y Y chromosome is there. This is the female, and this is the male one. Yes, yes, yes. Good, very good. The give the scientific name of organism that is a melan or sir what they call a uh, Drosophila melanogaster full name is Drosophila fruit fly identify male and female flies we already identify why did Morgan selected this organism for his experiment give four reason they are asking very 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 simple. We know Mendel was selected by some sort of one P plan for his experiment. Now, Greek, uh, uh, T H Morgan, ah, uh, T H Morgan selected fruit fly. It can be easy, ah, uh, easily can answer. Tell me number one. Both are showing contrasting trait. They show contrasting traits. Lifespan is small. Number of chromosomes are very less. And easy to culture in the medium. Sexual, what they call easily sexual dimorphism is there, which is male, which is female, and uh, distinct. we can easily distinguish which one is female which one is male ah these are the simple answers these ah, ah these are the simple reasons to select a number of chromosomes especially number of chromosomes are four pairs only very less number of chromosomes easily we can identify which gene on which chromosome is expressing not expressing recessive dominant very easily we can yes 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 next question or which one of the two heterogametic heterogametic hetero two different type come on any one of you tell me now i can write this male fellow produce female fellow 
producing X type of egg, X type of egg, homogamity, homogamity. But Y fellow, the, the A fellow, that means male fellow, two different type of sperm. One is X chromosomal sperm, one is Y chromosomal sperm. That means sex determination is decided. The baby, the offspring sex determined by male partner. That's why it is under comes into what? Male heterogamity. Human beings also male heterogamity. One more male heterogamity is there. X, 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 O or X0. You got my point? X0. This is also male heterogamity. Remember beta, simple question, very easy question. Principles of inheritance and variation chapter, pleiotropy, sickle cell anemia, point mutation, chromosomal mutation, pedigree, thoroughly prepare sex determination also sex determination also properly prepare yes 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 grass grass over that means insects so remember beta these are the so what they call principles of inheritance questions ah one more question also there this already done look at here ah karyotype of child is 21st chromosome that is what beta what, what they call down syndrome identify the disorders already are done down syndrome very easy if a father and son are affected by the red green color vision and what likely to be a son in fact this is what tell me one sex linked recessive one small problem is given you just try to practice this one very easy a cross is made between the different homozygous pea plant for contrasting flower position find out the position of flowers f1 generation on base basis of genotype they are given this is a simple geno the what they call simple mono hybrid diabetic because it is given beta this is i am giving as a homework just practice at home i wanted to start the molecular base of inheritance okay very simple they are, they are asking different type of what they call f1 and f2 generation you just practice now this is also we have done 21st chromosome is what tell me again down syndrome karyotype is given characteristic feature is given very easy you can follow this one these are the major diagram you should follow you should practice principles of inheritance this is what tell me sickle cell anemia karyotype down syndrome sex determination important diagrams thoroughly practice now molecular base of inheritance this is the most important most 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 important chapter many questions are there beta five mark question we can expect two three mark question or or maybe mcq we can expect so everyone open ncrt and also what sit with me beta all of you now look at the first question first question in molecular base of inheritance how can we cover sir Today morning I was I was talking with my student. They are telling the molecular base is the one which is going to are consuming lot of time, sir. Look at here in molecular base of inheritance, beta. First structure of DNA finish. Structure of DNA first finish, beta. Watson and Crick DNA model first finish. Uh, nucleotide structure, nucleoside structure, phosphodiester bond formation, uh, uh, what they call a uh, Chargaff rule, this all, pace pair rule, first finish beta, number one. After that, uh, packaging of DNA, nucleosomes, nucleosome, histone protein, nucleosome, properly prepared, heterochromatin, euchromatin, thoroughly prepared. One question, there is a chance from there. Next, this nucleosome structure directly the, they can give for the five mark question also direct nucleosome H1 protein H2, uh, H1 protein H2 protein and also what H2, uh, H3A H4 H, uh, H4 is there beta octet complete uh, histone protein properly prepare. Search for GNA material beta everyone look at here in 2023 uh, semi conservative DNA replication was five mark question. N15, N14, N14, N14. Do remember this one? This uh, uh, semi conservative DNA replication was the five mark question in last year. This academic year, I am expecting Griffith experiment or Harshi Martha Chase experiment. High chances are there. So, search for the DNA material in this uh, topic. Please, all of you prepare Griffith experiment and Harshi Martha Chase experiment thoroughly. Okay, after this one DNA replication, most important DNA replication and uh, transcription, translation, genetic code, these are high, high weightage, high chance topics. Ra transcription, translation, genetic code thoroughly prepare. Next, after the DNA fingerprinting and also what beta? HGP topics are there. It will take time, so you have to prepare. Look at the first two question beta, what I selected. 
look at the first question can any one of you th think better think any one of you give me the correct answer of this question what the question is given uh, all of you look at here isham sanjay ridhya diya all of you look at beta what exactly it is given here aparna if you are there look at here puja all of you kavya look at here what is given a segment of dna c t t a c g a g g a c c g g g was translated into oligopolypept oligopeptide okay fine answer the following question based on the given dna sequence if a first adenine in the dna segment is substituted by cytosine first one is substituted by cytosine where is the first one beta 1 2 3 4 this is the first one right first adenine is substituted to c let me write normal dn normal mrna after that problematic mrna we will write okay now tell me this is phi prime sn beta i am writing mrna phi prime tell me g a a i am i writing correct mrna next to u c g next one is what i am writing before mutation mrna i am writing beta okay now u c c next u g g c c c is 3 prime this is the mrna this is the mrna i am correct now because of this a replaced to c beta if i write new modified mrna tell me g a a u c g you got my point is it ucg or what tell me it is c come right yes c come so i can write what tell me if it is c come here ah any one of you help me out beta if it is c come if it is c come so i can write g g c g u c c u g g c c c and 3 prime i am i correct i am i correct beta come on all of you cross check beta cross check cross check cross check correct correct or not correct or not so first look at the question what will be the mrna transcribed by it this is the mrna transcribed by it because they are asking after uh, a replaced to c right so mrna modified mrna what will be sequence what will be the sequence of amino acid in old old mean this one old mean this one okay and new new means this one better problematic after problematic so tell me g a a can any one of you tell me g a a code for g a a code for glutamic acid i am correct beta g a a code for glutamic acid or not g a a code for glutamic acid or not so this is glutamic acid glutamic acid u c g u c g if i am not wrong it is serine beta UCG, if I am not wrong, serine. Open all of your genetic code. All of you open genetic code. UCG, if I am not wrong, serine. Next, uh, UCC also serine. UCC also serine. UGG is tryptophan. Tryptophan. CCC proline beta. If I am not wrong, I am I correct or not? Cross check beta. All of you open NCERT textbook genetic code. Come on, come on, come on, come on, fast, fast. All of you, sir. Uh, uh, Adrija, sir, replication mRNA for no, 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 my dear. mRNA always from 5 prime to 3 prime beta. mRNA always from 5 prime to 3 prime. This is template given beta. This is template 3 prime to 5 prime. This is template given, my dear. Indrija, Indrija, Adrija, you got my point? This is template given beta. We are making into mRNA. You got my point? Next. Did you get this point, beta? You get this point? Yeah, uh, sir, start code on. Ah, okay, beta. That. Uh, Sophia, okay. Now, in this, whatever the DNA is given, that DNA transcribed to form this mRNA and with specific uh, amino acids. You got my point? Now, after problem, after modification, glutamic acid here, same. Glutamic acid here, same. GCG is actually what? GCG, if I am not correct, better GCG must be alanine, I think so. Can you cross check? GCG is alanine or not? Come on, come on. Aisham, Erdia, Dia, open a genetic code, better. Alanine, yes or no? Yes, alanine, yes, 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 alanine. So here it is, alanine. UCC again, serine. Next, tell me, here it is again, tryptophan. Next, here it is again, proline. Beta, if this type of question come for 3 mark or 5 mark, if you don't know which codon is code for which amino acid, no chance. 
no chance nayan you got my point are you following me or not sir but the other parental stand can be five ah other parental stand can be five prime to three prime adrija correct only beta but listen 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 adrija listen listen this is three prime to five prime strand okay next to complementary five prime to three prime beta this is called a template strand and this is called coding strand adrija coding strand does not give mrna beta coding strand will not give this coding strand does not undergo transcription template undergo transcription template undergo transcription to form mrna so don't get confused beta you got my point adrija you understand my point ah so answer me all of you old and new oligopolypeptide we wrote write anticodons for this amino acid come on come on any one of you help me out how can you write the anticodon how can you write the anticodon of this mrna tell me here it is c c u u c g c a g g next uh, a g g a g g next one is what tell me uh, a g g next a c c next one g g g i am i correct this is called anticodon i am i correct come on come on come on i am i correct or not yes magashri yes look at here beta this is the anticodon anticodon to what mrna right so mrna anticodon i am writing this is the anticodon beta this type of hot questions come this type of little higher thinking question come you should be very careful take pencil and write down the entire codons what they are asking problem where where is the problem it is the first uh, adenine he said where is the first adenine if first adenine replaced to other c or other any nucleotide it is called a point mutation so so instead of serine alanine came it's a point mutation amino acids are got change are you with me come on are you with me you got my point is this question clear or not how many of you clear this question beta come on answer me are you there or not come on answer me is still here everything clear or not should we by heart i will tell you beta i will tell you which codons you should prepare and go before the exam don't worry at the end of the class i will tell you are you there or not come on answer me my dear who is this ridya nitha good look at the next question look at the next question this is also little higher order thinking question beta this is also higher order question a segment of template strand dna template strand dna i am writing 3 dash 2 5 dash template strand dna is given beta fine 12th position nitrogen base c is undergo mutation and replaced by t undergo replaced by t mutation to form t point mutation come on tell me come on tell me now 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 12 12th one 12th c is replaced to t beta t C replace to T. Are you following me? Right. C. Now identify the given mutation. We'll write first normal mRNA. Right. Tell me normal mRNA. What tell me, beta? A U G. Next U U U G G G U G G A A A. Next one. What is this, beta? Uh, T T. Uh, sorry, sorry. U U. U U C. I said no. U U C. And this is three prime, right? Three prime. Am I correct? This is a normal mRNA before mutation. Before mutation, I'm talking about. Before mutation. Are you with me? You got my point. Ah, uh, before mutation. Before mutation. Tell me the amino acids of this one, beta. Okay, not amino acid. Don't need to write the amino acid. Problem. Problematic. Tell me. This is replaced to T, beta. Okay, now it is five prime A U G U U U G G G U G. It is A A pair with what A? A T pairs with what A? Next one is what U U U U. Sorry, what is that? A A right? Ah, tell me A A A. Next what U U C? This is three prime. I am I correct? I am I correct? But my dear kid, the big problem is there. Nobody identify. I think so. Anyone identify, beta? Anyone identify? Where is the big problem is there after this mutation? Nita, you got this point? Anyone of you? Anyone of you? Tell me one big big problem is there after C is replaced to T, beta? Anyone of you? Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I think nobody identify this one. 
थिंक 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 ए यू जी मिथियो नाइन यू जी यू 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 फिनाइल नाइन जी 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 ग्लाइसिन समथिंग आई थिंक यू जी ए हु इज दिस यू जी ए हु इज दिस यू जी ए दिया गॉड हश गॉड गुड वेरी गुड बेटा स्टॉप कोड ऑन वेट 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 माई डियर किड्स my dear students because of mutation if stop codon come in the middle where should be a stop codon tell me stop codon should be here right stop codon should be here right beta you got my point kavya stop codon should come exactly at the end but stop codon came in the middle only my dear stop codon in the middle only it comes such type of mutation called nonsense mutation what type of mutation they are asking they are asking this is called non sense mutation remember all of you non sense mutation does not complete the translation in the middle of in the middle of the uh, translation only it will terminate why because of mutation uh, stop codon form stop codon does not code for any amino acid No, no. What happened? What is the fate of this one? Look at the last question. What are the cha changes takes place in the protein? Arey, beta, this protein did not properly form. Arey, beta, this total protein did not form. The total mRNA did not converted into amino. Uh, did not convert into protein. Why, sir? Look at here. What about these two? Uh, these two codons? They did not properly come. So that means this mRNA does not give complete protein. Why? Why does not give complete protein, sir? In the middle, stop codon comes. Stop codon uh, supposed to be present here. They should be present at the end, but it come in the middle only. Such type of mutation called frame, uh, sir. What beta? Nonsense mutation. My dear kids, this type of question, sir. They only ask for the mutation. No, they why? Ah, good, good question, beta. I will explain. You know, sometimes you know in a sample paper or CBSE examination. mutations are actually ncr at cbsc given mutations are given you should remember and you should practice this type of hot question so that they, gave, they uh, if they ask any simple or moderate or uh, higher level question beta you can easily answer i understand this nonsense mutations are not there but you should remember stop codon is actually stop codon coming in the middle is actually translation uh, problems in the translation whatever the translation discuss in that one we have to discuss this problems also that time only you will be very perfect oh my god okay this is stop codon this is start codon uh, stop codon should be in the last moment otherwise it will not going to be uh, completely translate you got my point so i selected first few questions from molecular basis hot questions only this will give you a perfect idea about mrna and translation don't worry one more time this watch this video you come to know the exact meaning next question can you answer this one beta can you answer this is also hot pyq beta this is also pyq this is also pyq can any one of you get can any one of you try this one what is given with the three questions three questions is given come on isham where are you beta sanjay so, study the follow, uh, study the table and identify 1 2 3 and 4 four also there beta here fourth one also they are asking here fourth one is come here amino acid leucine valine uh, dna code in gene 1 Okay. Next uh, codon in mRNA UC UC uh, CUU anti codon tRNA given. What is one two three four? I will check. I will check. Who will give the first question answer? Ah, uh, beta. First question answer. Tell me. Ah, uh, come on, come on. Ash, tell me, beta. What is this, sir? How can I write the DNA code? They did not given anything. But leucine codon given, right? Leucine codon five dash two three dash. Now answer me if it is five dash two three dash, beta. The DNA codon must be three prime. Tell me G A A five prime. I am I correct? I am I correct? I am I correct? Come on, come on, Ridhya. Come on, beta. Come on, come on, correct, correct. Now it is C U U is given. DNA is G A A. You got my G A S correct. Very good, beta. Nita, you are writing coding stand. You should write the template stand, beta. Template will undergo mRNA. Template undergo transcription, right? You got my point. 
you understand my point shall i repeat one more time oh my god don't do this type of mistake ridya in the exam please try to understand this is mrna beta mrna come from template stand right mrna come from template stand or not mrna come from template stand or not nitha sir i answered the second one ah second one okay okay good so this is a g a a what about this two what about this two ah tell me 3 prime to 5 prime is c a c ah 5 prime to 3 prime is what g ah u g g u g the line as yes, i know here i am writing what tell me this is 3 prime clear correct or not g u g correct or not second one is g u g ridya correct but okay okay i got it i got it i got it what about third one about the trna of leucine anti godan trna of leucine come on come on come on fast 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 so i am writing g a a i am i correct i am i correct anti godan of leucine beta anti godan of leucine yes yes dia correct or not g a a come on talk to me nayan where are you usna where are you sham sanjay wake up wake up come on answer i need answer you all ah good what about this fourth one tell me here you can i can that c a c c a c that's why in the theory classes i shout like anything anti codon and template same mrna mrna plus mrna and something same tell me mrna and something same what is that mrna and come on come on come on come on mrna and coding strand same mrna and what tell me coding strand same ah code but small small change in rna u is there in dna t is there that's enough that's enough that's enough so this is a, a, a first question answer a polypeptide consist 10 different amino acid how many nitrogen bases are present in the mrna come on come on question number 2 second one beta this is b this is b come on come on come on come on i will check kavya yatri ridya aish uh, next who is this aparna try beta ridya sanjay try 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 who is this who is this 20 ah 30 good very good very good 10 3 into 10 what beta 30 you got my point you got my good very good very good very good next how many different type of trnas require for the synthesis of polypeptide polypept how many different trnas require come on come on come on come on how many different trnas require sayed fatima fatima they are asking beta how many nitrogen bases beta 3 3 coda 3 nitrogen base become one codon right one codon one codon equal to one amino acid beta so total 10 amino acids are there that mean 10 codons one codon 3 3 into 10 beta you got my point fatima you got my point right right so ah very good this is what tell me 10 different type of trnas are there absolutely correct absolutely correct now i am writing uh, i am showing one more question beta till here everything this question clear or not is this question clear beta is this question clear done shall i move to the next question i hope this molecular base of questions are boosting your mind to give answer but answer me if it is wrong also no problem i'll correct you what about this question what about this question look at here this question is 5 mark is given better sample paper 5 mark sample paper is given given below stretch of dna coding strand structural gene transcription unit 5 dash 2 3 dash a big codon is beta how many codons are there uh, this is dna is given i'm sorry dna is given write the corresponding template strand tell me a template strand 3 prime first t a c t a g now then beta next tell me t a g you got my point so it will come what tell me <clears throat> this this is actually g beta this is actually g this is actually g so here i am writing what tell me here i am writing c 
here I am writing C. Ah, again here T G G. Next C A T A A A A G A C A T uh, C A G uh, C. Next G G G C A T. Next G A A. G T C next beta C G T next T A uh, sorry A T T yes or no A T T this is five prime I am I correct I am I correct this is a template stand come on answer me just instead of ah no no beta mama this it is a complement template beta template template stand uh, template stand now tell me the mRNA. Tell me the mRNA now. mRNA I am writing with what? mRNA 5 dash. Tell me A U G A C C G U A U U U U C U G U A G U G Got my point? C C C G U A C U U C A G next G C A U A A and this is three prime. Any mistake? Any mistake? Now answer me. Come on, come on, answer me. Uh, uh, that, that's MRN. That's MRN. Isham. That's MRN. Got my point, sir? You put A. Uh, put A U. Where beta? Where beta? Cross check again. Here it is. I'm writing MRN right beta. This is template. T pairs with A. Where? Which one? Tell me. Instead of A, you put U. Where? Where? Which code on? A U C A C C G U A U U U U C U G U A. Next G U G C C C G U A. Next C U U C A G G G. Ah, uh, here it is. What tell me? G Ah uh, G C A U A. Correct only, right? Correct only. Ash, try beta. Look at cross check one more time. Ah, they are asking what tell me mRNA also. Yes, we wrote mRNA also. Fine, very good. And polarity, polarity also we mentioned. Five dash two, three dash polarity also we mentioned. Fine, polarity also we mentioned. Good. Ah, uh, yes, correct, correct beta, correct. Ah, uh, Ridya. Now look at here. If U G is so G U A of the transcribed mRNA is intron, intron. Okay, I don't know what is intron. I forgot. Can anyone of you help me out, beta? What is intron? What is intron? Come on, come on, come on. What is intron? I don't know. Come on. I don't know what is intron. Tell me. Intron is a coding or non-coding? Sanjay, yes, yes, beta. Non-coding. Sabas, very good. Harsh. Thank you. That means you all are listening carefully. Listening. Tell me, this is non-coding. So this is non-codon, no need of this one better non-coding non-coding part, non-coding part sequence involved in the formation of mRNA. The mature process HNRNA strand is what? What is the next strand beta? If I write phi prime A U G A U G A C C, this one I am removing because. G U A is the uh, intron. Here also intron. I'm removing. And here also intron. I'm removing. The rest one right on beta. U U U U C U G U G C C C. Next C U U C A G G C. Uh, uh, beta. Uh, C G C A U A A. And this is three prime done. Done, but which MR this this mRNA this mRNA in humans or in bacteria? In humans or in bacteria? I don't know. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Upper na, upper na. HNRNA have introns and exon beta. HN heterogeneous coding part is there, non coding part also there. So you have to. Do this HNRNA that process called splicing. Aparna, you got my point? Splicing. They should undergo splicing. So, U, G, U, A does not code for any amino acid. So, leave it. Does not code for any amino acid. So, it is an intron. But 
after removal of this intron whatever the rna i wrote here it is a human rna human mrna or bacterial mrna i don't know ah very good very good why human why human my my kids will tell fast fast beta i love you all fast fast why human sir why can it it must be bacteria also why not it bacteria why only in human come on come on come on come on come on sir 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 in human in eukaryotic only splicing process takes place the answer is what only splicing takes place in eukaryote only so it is a human but in bacteria in bacteria i am writing this is the mrna without what tell me without what tell me Tra uh, intro splicing without splicing sabas absolutely correct now beta upon translation how many amino acid will be resulting polypeptide have justify in humans nine amino acid polypeptide chain is it nine amino acid or not aparna cross check beta 1 स्टॉप कोड ऑन बेटा नीता लास्ट कोड ऑन इज अटॉप कोड ऑन स्टॉप कोड ऑन डज नॉट कोड फॉर एनी अमीन एसिड Stop code on does not code for any amino acid, beta. So how many? Ah, good, very good. DJ Tech, very good, beta. Sabas. So how many? Nine amino acids. Aparna, you got my point, beta. You understand my point? Yes, yes. Ah, good, very good. But how many amino acid polypeptide in bacteria? Come on, 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 beta. Come on, come on, come on, my little champs. Come on, come on. In bacteria, how many amino acid polypeptide chain? I really don't know. I am a chemistry teacher now. I don't know. I am not a bio teacher now. Aparna, think, my dear, think, beta. In bacteria, in bacteria, in bacteria, in bacteria, splicing is not the same. Amino acids will go, beta. Same thing will go. So, is it ten or twelve? Yes, ten or twelve. Yes, DJ Tech, Sabas, beta. It's twelve. It's twelve. Yes, Aparna, you got my point. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. This is the stop code on. So in bacteria, twelve. In a uh, human being, nine amino acids. Sabas, very good. If this type of question come for five mark, molecular basis of inheritance. If this type of five mark question come, take pencil. Peacefully, three hours time is there, beta. Three hours time is there. Biology exam, thirty-three question, three hours, very easy. You can make biryani in the same examination hall and eat. That much of time is there after exam, very easy. Three hours time, you can finish the entire examination in one and a half to one hour forty-five minutes only, very easy. If this type of question come, take pencil, one paper, work, work sheet. They will give it a right. Work space is there, rough space. Right, peacefully write five dash two three dash. Where I am doing mistake? Is this the correct one or not? Properly cross check. You will get five out of five. You got my point? Ah, five out of five. What about this question? What is this? Given below is a diagram of tRNA molecule. Yes, tRNA molecule. Anticode on USC AUG three prime five prime tRNA methionine is there. Fine, good, good, good. Now the question is, answer the sequence based on the above diagram. My dear, this time tRNA there is a. I am expecting tRNA based and translation based question can come. Why is charging tRNA essential in translation? charging tRNA essential to recognize the ribosome go there can read the codon come and bring the amino acid if tRNA did not charge it cannot recognize the ribosome it cannot read the mRNA it cannot bring the proper amino acid so charging tRNA tRNA essential for what tell me recognize the ribosome ribosome i tell me read हाँ संजय टेल बेटा रीड द एम आर एन ए आइंड टेल मी आइंड ब्रिंग आइंड ब्रिंग टेल मी प्रॉपर अमाइनो एसेड गुड वेरी गुड ना वेर डस peptide bond formation occur in a bacterial ribosome really i don't know beta i am a economics teacher now come on any one of you tell me this this 
क्वेश्चन आंसर सेकेंड क्वेश्चन आंसर इज वॉट वेर इज अ पेप्टाइड बॉन्ड फॉर्मेशन टेक्स प्लेस वेर इज अ पेप्टाइड बॉन्ड फॉर्मेशन टेक्स प्लेस अपर्णा हियर हियर बेटा इन द राइबोसोम दे आर आस्किंग इन बैक्टीरियल राइबोसोम ओके द ओके ओके टेल मी आ गुड 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 करेक्ट करेक्ट ओनली संजय करेक्ट ओनली बेटा एब्सोल्युटली करेक्ट लिसन लिसन हियर अपर्णा केयरफुल लिसन बेटा हियर दिस इज स्मॉलर राइबोसोम यूनिट ओके दिस इज लार्जर राइबोसोम यूनिट दिस इज राइबोसोम माय डियर किड्स राइबोसोम्स आर मेड अप ऑफ आर आर एन ए प्लस प्रोटीन कैन एनी वन ऑफ यू टेल मी हाउ मेनी डिफरेंट टाइप ऑफ प्रोटीन आर देयर हाउ मेनी डिफरेंट टाइप ऑफ प्रोटीन आर देयर यू नो एटी डिफरेंट टाइप ऑफ प्रोटीन आर देयर हाउ मेनी एमसीक्यू क्वेश्चन बेटा एटी डिफरेंट टाइप ऑफ प्रोटीन आर देयर नाउ इन द लार्ज सब्जेक्ट आर आर एन ए इज एसेंशियल टू मेक ए पेप्टाइड बॉन्ड peptide bond formation takes place in the larger subunit of ribosome aparna what is the correct answer beta large it the, um, the peptide bond formation takes place in the larger subunit of ribosome you understand my point you understand my point why 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 is a large subunit only why because any one of you tell me why sanjay tell me beta why isham ridhya why in the la uh, large subunit tell me why in the large subunit it takes place sir because because ha ah, first beta first because r rna is there r rna 23s r rna behave like a enzyme which enzyme tell me ribozyme enzyme this r rna behave like a enzyme wait 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 hold a minute hold a minute everyone question if come for 3 mark or 5 mark what is the role of r rna in protein synthesis beta you should write r rna behave like a enzyme ribozyme enzyme which is essential to make a peptide bond between the two amino acid that's why insert the given the translation process polypeptide chain is coming from the large subunit beta polypeptide chain coming from where large subunit remember ah good 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 remember sabas next name the scientist who called trna adapter molecule any one of you tell me who called this one beta i will give you the hint i will give you the hint who given this one tell me dna to dna dna to mrna mrna to protein this is replication this is transcription this is translation who given this who given this ah very good so answer is same thing beta answer is what francis crick francis crick remember good 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 next question next question next question oh my god most important this academic year i am expecting compulsory question from lac operon lac operon mcq question from lac operon before i go to this question beta one small question is it on mode or off mode now the diagram is telling us on mode or off mode the diagram is telling on mode or off mode just i need answer i need answer just on or off on or off this this uh, diagram the diagram whatever the diagram i'm showing here on or off very good up aparna very good better now you are in track it is on mode why on mode mrna mrna given different type of enzyme z will give beta galactosidase why give permease a give trans acetylase enzyme good very good i have a question how many mrna are there beta How many mRNAs are there, Fatima, Nita, Flip Flop? How many mRNAs, beta? Come on, come on. How many mRNAs? How many? How many mRNAs? I need answer. Just how many? Number I want. Oh, Flip Flop, my dear, you are doing wrong, beta. Ah, right, that's correct. Upper now, that's correct. One mRNA, one mRNA. How many enzymes? Many enzymes. One mRNA, many three enzymes. This is called polycystronic. Polycystronic. Nita, how many mRNA? But a one mRNA. Look at here. This is one mRNA. One mRNA going to give three different type of enzyme. So it is called polycystronic. Polycystronic. Yes, yes, yes. Now, how does repressor molecule get inactivated? How does repressor protein get inactivated? Simple question. Ah, ah. Upper now you given correct answer, beta. Yes, yes. It go. Ah, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. Lactose combined bind to repressor. Very good. When does 
transcription lack operon stop stop the mrna formation when lactose is not there when lactose is not there sna beta lactose is not there it stop the formation of mrna am i correct am i correct beta you got my point this one is what tell me when does transcription of lac operon mrna stop when inducer or lactose is not there ah absence of lactose or absence of inducer very good beta very good very good absolutely name the enzyme transcribed by the gene z oh simple 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 lac z gene lac z gene come on come on come on answer is what tell me beta galactosidase enzyme next question next question my god state the functions different between the codon aug and also uaa can you please any one of you tell me the answer of this one please sir aug is a start codon aug code for methionine amino acid i given uaa stop codon does not code for any amino acid sabas very good specific and degenerate what is the meaning of this specific let's take something u u u code for phenyl alanine specific u u u also code for uh, uh, serine uh, valine or arginine anything is there beta anything is there like that anything is there like that no 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 sir one codon one specific amino acid you got my specific amino acid so one codon one specific amino acid look at here this is how simple beta i am very 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 good i will only make friendship with a one i will committed to one person only in my life but phenylalanine is what it's not like that phenylalanine is what can any one of you tell me phenylalanine u u u also phenylalanine u u c also phenylalanine that mean amino acid have many codons but one codon have one amino acid you got my point one codon have one amino acid one codon code for one amino acid but one amino acid have many codons have many codons are you with me you got my point dj got my point correct beta na no, good good second one differentiate between the turner syndrome and down syndrome turner syndrome is monosomy monosomy now we can write 44 plus x0 takes place in female next happen down syndrome 45 plus xx or xy it is called trisomy trisomy this is autosomal okay next in 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 turner syndrome females will be sterile females are not going to produce the babies beta no menstruation rudimentary over is nothing but down syndrome people can marry down syndrome people can be grow down pe down syndrome people can be uh, what do you call beta fertile no problem you understand now describe the termination this is most describe the termination process of what uh, translation remember if this question come in crt line you should write my dear tell me what happened during the termination process come on come on come on what happened during the termination process during the termination process releasing factors will combine bind to stop codon and terminate the translation what is given in crt you know some releasing factors because because stop codon u a a u g a u a g does not have anti no anti codons no anti codon and also what better no trna no trna so answer me when there is no trna to no anti codon so ribosomes will wait okay now particular trna will come and bring the amino acid nobody is coming some releasing factors come and attach to stop codon they terminate the process of the translation keep in mind next question ah this time remember beta structure of pento sugar structure of nucleoside structure of nucleotide properly prepare and go is a basic beginning starting point of molecular base of inheritance chalo how many of you are going to give answer how many of you are going to give the correct answer tell me now i can write histophosphate and this is called what better your nitrogen base is attaching uh, mention the carbon position to which the nitrogen base and the phosphate molecules are respect effectively link to new how simple how simple aparna very good beta aparna correct correct phosphoric acid attached to fifth carbon of pentose sugar 
fifth carbon of pentose sugar so simply i am writing here this is pentose sugar carbon number 1 nitrogen base combine attach i am writing nitrogen base combine attach carbon number 2 h h h oh carbon number 3 h c and p phosphoric acid fifth carbon fifth carbon phosphoric acid first carbon this is the first carbon c1 nitrogen base how simple you got my point how simple good very good very good next question wait 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 this is actually what is this better nucleotide or nucleoside first carbon good very good fifth carbon good 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 sanjay correct beta and ash fifth phosphate yes but yes so is this nucleotide or nucleoside i don't know i don't know come on come on come on kids come on ah sabhas nucleotide who is this aparna how conserving beta letters letters are there my dear if you write nucleotide nothing happen how stingy you are aparna you are taking care of your laptop that uh, what the called keyboard very very carefully right simple term tide so i should understand the nucleotide sabhas beta look at the next one Ah, genetic code. Look at the genetic code, beta. This time, genetic code question. High chance, high chance, high chance is there. Look at here, look at here. Given, observe the diagram of genetic code and answer the following questions. Okay, fine. We will identify. My students are ready. How many codons code for amino acids? How many do not? Fast, fast, fast. Total 64. Total 64. Sham, done, beta. Now, 61 code for co 61 code for all 20 amino acid. Three codons are special codon. So tell me, three codons are stop codons. Answer given. Next, explain the following one example of each unambiguous and specific codon specific codons are the one which have one codon specific to one amino acid only example is ugg code for tryptophan only ugg also code for some other amino acid no but what is this unambiguous what exactly meaning of unambiguous come on come on come on ash tell me beta isham unambiguous can you help me Come on, come on, Aparna, try beta. What is Ridya? Try beta. Nita, unambiguous or non ambiguous. Genetic code is non ambiguous. Can you? Can you know my idea? Um, uh, uh. Come on, come on, come on. Okay. I'll, I'll wait. I hope you're typing. I believe you all are typing. Yes, yes. One code on, only code for one amino acid. One amino acid code for many codons. Good, good, good. Ah, uh, good. What but ah, uh, Isham? One codon code for only one amino acid. Yes, yes, my dear. Ah, uh, yes, yes, yes. Ah, uh, one amino acid code for many codons. You got my point? Yes, yes. That also. That also. What beta? Unambiguous, non-ambiguous. Correct only. Degenerates. I said. What tell me? One amino acid have many codons, but unambiguous. Tell me. One co uh, one codon code for one. Code on code for one amino acid. One amino acid. What about degeneracy? One amino acid have many codons. One amino acid what about many codons? Good, very good. Next uh, example. What about this example? Tell me. Example, tell me. Any one of your example, tell me. Sir, example is UUU code for phenylalanine. Simple example. UUC also phenylalanine. Universal codon. Initiator codon, AUG initiator codon. What is this universal? NCRIT mentioned it is entirely universal or nearly universal, my dear. It is entirely universal or nearly universal. I don't know. If you go NCRIT line by line, you would answer 100 percent. Tell me, is it nearly universal or all universal? Can you please tell me genetic code is genetic code is not similar in mitochondrial DNA plus? Mitochondrial DNA plus one more, one more, one more. Tell me protozoan DNA genetic code is not similar. Sabas, very good. Sabas, but this time I'm telling you, whoever attending this class, pakka beta 95 plus 99, 98 only sure. I believe pakka right, good, very good. Next question. 
can you answer this one can you answer how can we identify which one is intron which one is exon illustrate the given below dna segment which constitute a gene okay gene name a shaded and unshaded regions of gene explain how these genes are expressed how is this gene different from prokaryotic gene expression come on 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 very good Isham, correct. Now, this shaded fellow is called what, beta? Intron. Intron. Here also, intron. Here also, intron. This one is exon. 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 Coding part. Coding part. Sir, how can you say the shading one is intron? The light one also, co the light one also could be a uh, intron, right? Aparna is, I think she is going to type this question, I think so. Beta, euchromatin, heterochromatin, we'll learn, right? Heterochromatin is darkly stained or lightly stained? Heterochromatin is darkly stained or lightly stained? Yes, ah, yes, I understand, but I understand this question, 100% student will get, I understand. That's why before only I'm explaining. Heterochromatin, euchromatin topic you learn. Heterochromatin is darkly strained, tightly present, transcriptionally, transcriptionally inactive. You got my point? So, this is the heterochromatin. This is the heterochromatin. You got my point? So, this is it. Now, explain how these genes are expressed. These genes are expressed, undergo transcription, translation to form an exon part is going to become a protein. But what about the last one, beta? How is this gene different from the prokaryote? In case of prokaryote, no intron, no exon, nothing is there. Prokaryotes are very, very unique. Prokaryotes are hey, chal, 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 this one completely I don't mind. Ah, you don't I don't mind. I don't have this intron exon. I don't have any dis differentiation. I will I will be I will give value to everyone equally. No, I don't want it to like this eukaryote fellows are. You are showing that what they call uh, intron and exon, but I don't have this feeling. You understand my point? Ah, good, better, good, good. Next question. Next question. Ah, next. Look at this question. This time Griffith experiment. My dear kids, I am requesting you all Griffith, Harshi and Martha Chase properly prepare. Now, uh, study the chart flowing that answer the following question. Yes, strain into mice mice died <coughs> are strain into mice lived or survive heat killed a strain plus heat killed a strain plus live or strain into mice a don't know what is that a heat killed a strain plus dna plus live rna live r strain into mice b mice b so tell me what is a b what is a b can any one of you answer meta write the result of a b i think question number three question number two write a result of a b obtain it in step c and d c and d respectively this is c and this is d better this is a and this is b okay a and b uh, uh, come on come on first one is isham very good mice died okay here died katam margaya here it is died i'm writing and what about this one here it is heat killed a strain and r it is live but even though something is transferring come on into the r r become s so died heat killed a strain plus dna is they use so dna gone dna gone live r into this one b survived or live i my correct i my correct yes very good aparna correct beta done but look at the rest of questions give the name of the organism and differentiate between the two snr are how easy my dear yes is what smooth strain of hemophilus uh, streptococcus pneumoniae bacteria they have what beta yes uh, the specific word polypept uh, polypeptide or polysaccharide what they call coat is there that is the actually pathogenic that is the one which going to cause a disease that is not there in the r r is how good how beautiful how, how very nice no problem so this is r is non-pathogenic yes is pathogenic you got my point done next come to the third one and fourth one give the name of scientist to who perform a b c a b c beta uh, a b c Tell me, A, B, C steps are conducted by, I think, ah, good, very good, Sanjay, Griffith. He said, 
transformation principle do you remember that day question mark and he told that to identify this principle what is this principle something is moving from something is going from uh, s to r what is that since uh, the, what is that one that called what griffith experimental principle what is the principle finally ah good 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 no i'm not only wanted to tell the entire story write the specific conclusion drawing from d d is conducted by macleod mccarty and avery three scientists right so when they use d dna is enzyme they remove the dna the result is different beta the result is different mice is surviving so they said oh my god dna is the one which is called genetic material dna is the one which is going to transfer from s to r and r become s not proteins not rnas not lipids but you know what ncr dimension this griffith experiment did not give in the 100% or did not give in the proof nobody the biology scientist did not believe this one so who given the correct conclusion that the dna is a genetic material what beta who given the proof who proven that dna is a genetic material not griffith experiment griffith experiment give ha 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 ah very good arshian martha chase t2 bacteria phase very good very good ah sabas very good good but next question next question simple write the difference between the template and coding strand you know what a template template strand template strand and coding strand how simple i am not i am not going in, in detail this one is very simple template strand and coding strand template strand is the one which undergo what transcription to make mrna but that mrna encrypted in where coding strand the information about the protein encrypted in where coding strand to get that coding strand you have to disturb you have to transcribe template strand next state the functions of the uh, of the following in prokaryote trna transpolar rna can bring the amino acids during translation rrna i told you rrna function any one of you ah rrna function is what beta nitha harshi martha correct only now rrna formation of peptide bond rrna behave like enzyme catalyst enzyme 23s rrna this is the one which is going to provide energy during translation and peptide bond formation between the two amino acid is rrna only largest rna abundant rna okay ha ah, good 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 correct now what is this beta what is this very very important and simple question a dna segment has total 1500 1500 nucleotides nucleotides 1500 nucleotide out of which 4410 410, 410 ah beta fast fast 410 are g 410 are guanine purine contain nucleotide how many pyrimidine bases are there pyrimidine plus c plus t they are asking beta find out find out find out find out find out fast 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 aparna do this beta very easy number of g is equal to number of c plus 410 c right beta 820 1500 minus 820 I got my point. So we already got C beta. Now C is how much? Tell me four hundred and ten. Four hundred and ten. So how can you calculate the T? How can you calculate the T? Fast, fast. Isham, come on, beta. Ah, Sanjay. Ah, tell me. So tell me here, beta. This one one thousand five hundred minus eighteen to eight twenty. How much it is? How much it is? Ah. Ah, seven hundred. Ah, good. Tell me seven hundred and fifty. Now here it can tell me. So total C is four hundred and ten. How much it will come, beta? Here it is C. Uh, that means four ten minus. Ah, how? What is the answer of this one? Tell me here one hundred fifteen hundred, right? That means. 250 150 plus 750 right 7 780 right yes. 780 780 means here beta in this 780 ah t also there you got my point t also there right ah 340 tell me here it is 340 yeah 340 t are there the total tell me beta total how much 750 is the pyrimidines 750 is the pyrimidines you got my point 750 or 650 750 is the pyrimidines krishna sir correct right correct right you got my point 750 pyrimidine they are asking pyrimidines are what c plus t how simple very easy beta ha ah, good 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 next question 
नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन कंस्ट्रक्ट एंड कंप्लीट द ट्रांसक्रिप्शन यूनिट इज गिवन इन द डीएनए वन स्मॉल डीएनए इज गिवन बेटा द स्टैंड स्ट्रक्चर इज गिवन टर्मिनेशन बेसिस ऑफ हाइपोथेटिकल टेम्पलेट स्टैंड इज गिवन बेटा राइट द आरएनए स्टैंड फ्रॉम हियर आई एम देयर आस्किंग पोलैरिटी हाउ सिंपल क्वेश्चन दे गिवन अ टेम्पलेट स्टैंड मेक अ एमआरएनए आई डोंट वांट टू वेस्ट टाइम बेटा वेरी इजी क्वेश्चन दिस इज दे आर गिवन अ टेम्पलेट स्टैंड अपर्णा यू गॉट दिस क्वेश्चन दे आर गिवन अ टेम्पलेट स्टैंड यू हैव टू राइट द एमआरएनए स्टैंड एंड कंस्ट्रक्ट व्हाट टेल मी ट्रांसक्रिप्ट पोलैरिटी polarity also you should mention very easy transcription unit transcription unit means what promoter ha ah, structural gene terminator so we can write what will me 3 prime 5 prime 5 prime 3 prime this is promoter terminator structural gene coding stand template stand this is called a transcription unit so based on the hypothetical dna you can construct better very easy next question next to question how is hnrna proceed to mrna splicing how hnrna to mrna splicing capping tailing and what they call small thing capping tailing beta methylated guanosine cap and also polyadenine tail to 5 prime and also 3 prime splicing process you can completely write there draw a neat level diagram of nucleosome nucleosome diagram how easy h1 h2 h3 yes or no beta h2 a H2, B, H3, H4 proteins, they all are two to. You got my point. And DNA is come and wrap around this one and go here. This whole thing is DNA plus ah uh, uh, what they call histone protein. We call nucleosome. Nucleosome. Remember all of you. Here histone protein is positively charged, basic in nature. DNA is what. What negatively char acidic nature? Remember, cut up. How simple? Very, very, very easy. I am not going better. Here it is. What tell me? H1 protein is there. Cut up. Very, 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 very simple. Pra practice, prepare. Ah, wait. I have question. Typical nucleosome. Typical nucleosome, beta. Any one of you tell me how many base pair of DNA wrap around in typical nucleosome? How many base pairs are there? Ah, come on, come on, Ridhya. Come on, beta. Typical nucleosome, Sabas, Ansh, covered by correct number, correct. How many? Two hundred base pair. Now mention what able to histone or uh, um, acquired po uh, positive charge. Because this is actually histones are basic and also positively charged. Why they are basic, beta? Histone proteins are actually rich in two different type of amino acid. One is called lysine and also arginine amino acid. Arginine and lysine amino acids are basic amino acid. Eleventh grade bio molecule chapter. Ah, good, good. Eleventh grade bio molecule chapter basic amino acid, basic amino acid, neutral amino acid we discuss. So, histone proteins are basic and positive. DNA is negative, negative and what they call acidic. Last question, I think so. Last question. Look at beta. Identify the polarity of uh, the given mRNA. What is the polarity of here and here? Tell me. What is the polarity? So, shall I write here? It is uh, five prime and three prime. I am correct. I am correct. Correct, beta. Now, next one. Mention the DNA sequence coding first. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, done. Uh, diagram. Mention how many more amino acids will be expected to add. How many more amino acid expected to add? So U A U G. So A G U gone. U A A, beta. U A A is a stop codon. Stop codon means zero amino acids. Zero amino acids add. You got my point. Ah, ah, good, good. Ah, Ash, correct, beta. Zero amino acids are so five prime to three prime. They are asking mention the DNA sequence of serin. Serin. What is serin codon? A G U is the codon. We can write the mRNA. This is mRNA, beta. We can write what? Tell me. Uh, template. What is the template? Tell me. T C A. This is T C A. Total. Ah, A G T. This is the DNA of what? Tell me, serin. beta when the examination you will get one hint you no need to worry sir serin i don't know i forgot the whole codon hint is there how can you how 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 can you write this tca look at beta codon we know if we know the codon you can add the anti codon you can add a template you can add the coding stand also i hope you following me aparna you got my point you got my point this one here it is already given the a g u is a coding a codon codon in mrna based on this one i wrote the template and also what the called beta coding stand how easy 
Antipodon. Antipodon. Coding for the serine and anticodon of tRNA for the same amino acid. Ah, DNA sequence also they are asking, right? Now DNA sequence we wrote here. Anticodon we will write. I hope you understand this one. Ah, ah, correct, better, correct, correct. So first DNA sequence we wrote, right? First DNA sequence, and after that anticodon. Tell me the anticodon. A G U anticodon is A C A. Am I clear? A C A. Ah, sorry, U C A, right? U C A, right? Ah, A pairs with what? U C A and A. This one and this one same, beta. That's why it. Ah, that's why I'm telling you. Template tRNA same ex except what tell me U plus T. Coding and it codings uh, mRNA and coding stands are same. Just U in place of T. Khatam. Now, last one. Why are some untranslated sequence bases are seen in mRNA to increase the efficiency of to increase the efficiency of ah translation there are two utrs before start codon after stop codon remember cut next this time there is a high chance of question from translation my dear these are important diagram charged trna uncharged trna uh, this uncharged trna a charged trna five prime three prime this all properly prepared by time telling you translation high chance is there this time Ah, ah, good, 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 correct. And this one also. This is the transcription process in bacteria. RNA polymerase, row factor. Ah, uh, this, this, this all points thoroughly prepare and go. I'm really telling you. I have gone through a lot of paper. There is a high chance of transcription bacteria translation process. And uh, this one, lack of peron. This academic year, this three high chance is there. High chance is there. I hope in molecular everything I touch better. Everything I touch. Hundred percent. This examination you are going to rock. Look at the next chapter. Next chapter evolution. Hello, Krishna sir, come. Okay, sir. Thank bye, you. Bye. Okay, shall we start with the next chapter? So, the major chapters are over. Now we are going to. Have a fast track revision of the coming chapters, the important areas and the important questions. Shall we start? I need some comments. So let me start with the first question. Can we call human evolution as an adaptive radiation? Actually, human evolution is not considered as an adaptive radiation. Adaptive radiation, you should understand, is the evolution of new species from a common ancestor in different habitats, starting from a common point in a geographical location. So it happens in a short time frame. But human evolution is a long process. It's a lengthy process. And it had only one lineage also. It's not having many lineages. It's having only one lineage. So we cannot consider human evolution as an example of adaptive radiation. Now second question, study the diagrammatic representation of Stanley Miller's experiment given below and answer the question. Hope you know about the Miller's experiment, Harold C. Urey and Stanley L. Miller. They actually created an experimental apparatus to prove the Oparin and Haldane's hypothesis. According to Oparin and Haldane, life came from inorganic substance through chemical evolution and biological evolution. So they were telling inorganic substance formed organic molecule and later the organic molecule was giving rise to the first life. So this whether it is correct or not, to check that, Miller actually made an experimental apparatus and he started creating all the conditions in the planet that was there 4.5 billion years ago and he was going to check whether this chemical evolution and biological evolution is possible and they started the experiment so the question study the diagrammatic representation and given below and answer the question how did Miller create the condition which existed before the origin of any life on earth so 4.5 billion years ago Oparin and Haldane's hypothesis is that the planet earth the temperature was high it was 800 degrees celsius so they made a glass apparatus where the temperature was 800 degrees celsius at that time you should understand water vapor was condensing to form water droplet it was falling into the earth's depression forming ocean so lightning was also there so instead of lightning they kept some electrode and put some electric spark that was actually showing the lightning then the temperature kept on decreased in the planet to so to show that they were passing all these gases through a condenser then remember which all gases are coming in here 
ammonia, methane, water vapor, hydrogen. The four things were actually getting filled here. So from this boiling water tube, you can see the water vapor is coming and there is ammonia, methane and all, there is no oxygen because the atmosphere was highly reducing. So all this information is from Oparin and Haldane's hypothesis. So whether it is correct or not, to check that only, they started this research. And let's see what all things are coming. Okay, uh, Kavya, that is the answer. How did S.L. Miller create the condition which existed before the origin of any life on Earth? So, previous Earth's atmospheric conditions you should write. Previous Earth temperature was high, 800 degrees Celsius. There was lightning. So, for that, electrodes were kept and sparks were actually made. And third, you should write, it was having a reducing atmosphere. It was not having oxygen. So, no oxygen was there. And which all gases were surrounding the Earth also, you should write. Ammonia, methane methane, water vapor and the hydrogen. So all these uh, things were created here and for showing the decrease in temperature the gases were passed through the condenser and it was forming water droplets. So here the water droplets that was formed it actually resembled the ocean and they wanted to see whether the first life is formed here and there only amino acids started forming but first life was not formed there. So chemical evolution was only explained by Urey and Miller. They actually supported experimentally only the chemical evolution part by Oparin and Haldane. Now, let's see. Name the organic compound formed and collected at the end of the experiment. Organic compound that was collected at here is amino acids. Hope you got it. Yes, amino acids. Now, next question. Select homologous structures from the combinations given below. So, first of all, you should know what is homologous and analogous. One expected question in uh, the exam that is going to come on 19th is homologous and analogous. So, homologous organs are actually for detecting common ancestry. If two organisms have an organ of same origin or internal structure and anatomy, but functionally similar or different, they are called homologous organ. Homologous organs show divergent evolution. So, already the comments are coming. Okay, it shows divergent evolution. And also remember, analogous organs, their origin is different but have same function. So, they don't show common ancestry. That also you should write. And they are showing convergent evolution. They are showing convergent evolution. So, that also you should mention. HD, homologous divergent. And AC, analogous convergent. Don't make it reverse. So, coming to the example, four limbs of whales and bat, origin is same, internal structure is same, development is same, functionally they are different. So, this is an example of homologous organs with divergent evolution. Tuber of potato and sweet potato, origin is different. Tuber of potato, it is a uh, stem modification. Sweet potato, it is a root modification, but function is storage. So, it shows different ancestors. So, origin is different, functionally same, analogous organ. Analogous organ, convergent evolution. Homologous organ, divergent evolution. Isophoctopus and mammals, origin is different. One is from the skin, one is from the embryonic layers. You can see, function is same. So, this is also analogous organ with convergent evolution. Thorns of Bougainvillea, tendrils of cucurbita. You can see origin is actually uh, same. Thorns of Bougainvillea, axillary bud. Tendrils of cucurbita also axillary bud. But one's function is protection, another is support and climbing. So it is homologous and divergent. State the kind of evolution they are representing. Already I said homologous organs are representing divergent evolution. Hope you got it. So one of this example or else difference between analogous and homologous can be coming for the exam. So remember homologous divergent, analogous convergent and learn the examples. That's all. Now coming to next question. Uh, refer to the given uh, below and answer the questions that follow. So here, recognize and explain the process by which Tasmanian wolf evolved. You might have learned adaptive radiation. In adaptive radiation, you should understand in Australia from a common point or a common ancestor to different areas of the geography if you are moving, you can see different types of species are actually evolving like the marsupian marsupials different type of marsupials are actually evolving so that is actually called adaptive radiation so origin of different type of species from a common ancestor literally radiating to other areas of the geography that is what we call it as adaptive radiation which is a divergent evolution so here i can tell tasmanian wolf and all it's an example of 
the divergent evolution or the adaptive radiation. Now next one, give an example of an animal that has evolved along with Tasmanian wolf. You can see the Tasmanian tiger cat or else marsupial mole. All that are actually evolved with the Tasmanian wolf only. So that is an example of adaptive radiation. Name the process that result in evolution of wolf and Tasmanian wolf. Wolf and Tasmanian wolf if you are taking, it's a convergent evolution or adaptive convergence. Two similar looking adaptive radiations are occurring in an area that is called adaptive convergence. Compare and contrast two animals shown here. One is a marsupial and another is a placental mammal. So this is the comparison between two animals. Hope you got it. Okay, flying squirrel, convergent evolution. So you can add along with that flying squirrel. All these are coming in marsupials. Now next one. Name the scientist who disapproved spontaneous generation. So you should remember all the theories of origin of life. First theory was theory of special creation that was proposed by Father Soros. In that three, he said about three connotation. That is life was formed as such. Diversity remained the same in past, present and future. And he also said that earth is only 4000 years old and it got rejected. Second came is the theory of panspermia. Life came from outer space in the form of spores. Then third came is theory of abiogenesis or spontaneous generation in that they said life came from dead and decaying matters like mud destroy etc disapproving that only the theory of biogenesis has come they stated life come only from pre-existing life experimentally it was supported by Louis Pasteur through the swan neck flask experiment hope you remember the swan neck flask experiment he was taking sugar solution and yeast and he was keeping it boiled and what happened from the dead and decaying yeast life was not evolving so he concluded life cannot be formed from dead and decaying matter but when he broke the neck of the flask after few days some spores were falling and life was evolving so this person supported the theory of a bio sorry biogenesis and disapproved the theory of a biogenesis then also remember theory of biogenesis never stated anything regarding origin of life they just disapproved the theory of a biogenesis through swan neck flask experiment so in the experiment he was taking sugar solution yeast and boiled it yeast died after the death no life was evolving from dead and decaying yeast so they disapproved the theory of abiogenesis but when the neck of the flask was broken some spores were falling and multiplying so they said life can only be formed from pre-existing life so it is by Louis Pasteur remember first question is by Louis Pasteur state the significance of study of fossils in evolution so fossils in evolution you should try to understand the biological history of earth is directly correlated with the geological history of earth. We can understand which organism evolved first, second, etc. by looking at the fossil. So fossil, you know how to calculate the age of fossils and all. When you dig the earth, you can see different sedimentary layers of rocks are coming. One sedimentary layer is formed 80,000 years ago, just imagine. One is formed 70,000 years ago and one is formed 60,000 years ago. One is formed 50,000 years ago. Like that sedimentary layers are coming on the earth so this is actually the geological history this is the geological history now just imagine I got an organism X from this sedimentary layer I got an organism Y from this sedimentary layer and one Z from this sedimentary layer so I can calculate the age of this fossil and understand in which time period they were existing and all by looking at the age of sedimentary rocks in which they were getting deposited. So one point only, the biological history of earth, which organism were existing in this particular time period, which came for second etc. It has a connection with the geological history of earth. So we can interpret the organic evolution and all, which was evolving and all through the fossils. And what is fossils also you should write? It is the remnants of organism that existed in the past that include the bones, teeth etc. of the organism or that is actually forming the shape of the organism by mineral depositions and all now next one 
Mention one example, each from plants and animals exhibiting divergent evolution. So already we discussed plants case, you can write about thorns of Bougain Villa and tendrils of Cucurbita. Animals case, you can write about the four limbs of mammals, four limbs of cheetah, horse, whales, bats, etc. That is an example of divergent evolution. Yes, I am watching the comment, so please keep uh, listening. Now next one, comment on the similarity between wing of cockroach and wing of a bird. So wing of cockroach and wing of a bird is an example of, you can comment, wing of cockroach you can see it is originating from the thorax region and their legs are already there. But wing of birds if you are taking it is a modified four limbs, the hands only are actually modified into the wings and all with a lot of feathers. So already the answer came, it's an example of analogous organ, origin is different. Functionally, they are same. Convergent evolution. So, remember HD and AC. Homologous divergent, analogous convergent. Like that you remember. So, analogous organ doesn't show common ancestry. That is also a point you should mention. Then next one. According to Davis, what is saltation? So, saltation in simple term, let me tell. So, according to Charles Darwin, a new species arises by accumulation of variation small continuous variation will be occurring for example one organism got one variation this variation passed past to second the second generation was getting one more variation that was passed to third then this generation got one more variation that was passed to fourth can you imagine they got two more variation like that after a 2000 generation they have plenty of variation. Just imagine they have at least a 10 variation. So I can call it as a new species. So new species arise according to Charles Darwin by accumulation of variation which are actually very small, continuous and it will be occurring from generation to generation. Ultimately they look entirely different from the ancestor. At that point we can call it as a new species. But according to Hugo Davis, he said new species arise not by small, small variation. So new species arise from an ancestor directly in one step through large variation so single step large mutations are occurring which will give rise to new species according to Hugo Davis that is what we call it as saltation so new species are arising in a single step through big big variations that is mutation that is called uh, saltation so example can you make a comment let me see who is going to comment so large one step so one more thing the mutation or saltation that is said by Hugo Davis it may be large discontinuous random then we can't always accept it because mutations are majority mutations are recessive and all so can you comment he was experimenting on which plant Hugo Davis on which plant the experiments were conducted by Hugo Davis. Let me see who is going to come in first. Now next question. Branching descent and natural selection are the two key concepts of Darwinian theory. Explain each concept with the help of a suitable example. Okay, evening prime rose, Enothera Lamarckiana. Don't tell 4 o'clock plant and all. It is evening prime rose and Enothera Lamarckiana. That is what you should actually write. That was Carl Corrence in incomplete dominance not four, four o'clock plan don't come in that is not the answer the answer is the Enothera Lamarckiana mutation studies were conducted by Hugo Davis okay now let's go to the next question branching descent and natural selection you know the features of the Charles Darwin so Charles Darwin was actually doing research on Galapagos Island where he has seen overproduction overpopulation or overproduction was observed when the island was overpopulated what will happen there can be a competition because there was scarcity for food and shelter so there was actually scarcity for food and shelter scarcity for food and space so what will happen when there is a scarcity for food and space there can be of course there can be a struggle for existence in that struggle for existence you should understand what will play an important role variation will be playing an important role in that two types of variation will be there one is adaptive variation and the other is non-adaptive variation so this is branching descent 
so they will be forming two type of descendants in evolution one with adaptive and one with non-adaptive always the nature will be selecting which one adaptive this is actually called as what natural selection or survival of the fittest and one more thing keep in mind always the one which is having this adaptive variation their population will keep on increasing so their number will keep on increasing hope you are getting it so natural selection is occurring this will lead to so this type of variation keep accumulating and this will lead to the formation of new species that is called speciation this is how new species actually keep evolving in evolution so this is the brief history in that three types of struggles are coming one is intraspecific one is interspecific and the other is environmental struggle so two key concept of darwinism branching descents followed by natural selection of the best descendants that is the concept that was given by darwinism hope you got it so branching descent and natural selection you have to explain it with one example and all so you can explain it using either the uh, this one galapagos island when he was visiting he have seen adaptive radiation of darwin's fingers that is branching descendants from a common ancestor different type of descents were actually formed and from that itself you can see the one uh, according to their adaptations or according to the best character they were getting adapted to different environment also now next one post industrialization the population of melanized moths increased in england at the expense of white winged uh, moths provide explanation so you know about this uh, industrial melanism so that year you should remember 1850 and 1920 so in 1850 when the survey was conducted white winged moths number was less and dark winged moths number was very less so white winged was increasing dark was decreasing because the tree trunks were actually occupied by lichens so white was actually the best for adapting in that time period but in 1920 when the same survey was conducted the white winged moths number was decreasing whereas the dark winged moths number was increasing because industrialization came after 1850 in england so the bark of the tree was getting deposited with what the bark was actually getting deposited with carbon suit etc so the lichens were not growing they are biological indicators of pollution in that dark background the melanized moths were able to hide whereas the white winged was actually visible so they were eaten up by the predators so this was happening so this is the best example of natural selection some more examples are there the ddt resistance in some uh, organism as well as the antibiotic resistance in bacteria DDT resistance in pest all these are the example of natural selection so white winged move okay smoke goes okay all the answers are coming hope you are getting it so learn all the example now next one write the names of the following so you already know about the human evolution so human evolution when you are learning please remember it in the correct order first one dryopithecus second evolved is australopithecus then next evolved is which one so this was ape like dryopithecus was ape like one more fossil is coming in that time period dramapithecus that was more man like australopithecus was ape and man like it is the connection between humans and apes then first human like is homo habilis then next evolved is homo erectus remember next evolved is homo erectus finally evolved is homo sapiens in homo sapiens itself three were actually there in that one only is existing first one is neanderthal man neanderthalensis neanderthal man second one is actually the cromagnon man fossilis cromagnon man then third one is homo sapiens sapiens that is the modern man now check the question at 15 million years ago primata that was ape like is dryopithecus and 2 million years ago primate that lived in east african grassland that is australopithecus it's the connection between humans and apes because they shared the character of apes as well as humans first bipedals were also australopithecus then according to hugo davis what is saltation we already discussed single step large mutation that can produce a new species is called as saltation study the ladder of human evolution given above 
and answer the following question. Where did Australopithecus was evolving? We already discussed they were evolving in East African grassland. Then write the scientific name of Java man, Homo erectus pecinensis, that is Java man. And in human evolution, learn the brain capacity correctly. It is starting with 600 cc Australopithecus, Homo habilis around 700-800, Homo erectus coming around 900, Homo sapiens it's coming around 1300 to 1600. Cranial capacity will keep on increasing. In that burying the dead, use of cloth, cave painting, all these was started by Homo sapiens. So that also you should try to remember. And they were start living in huts and all. Even agriculture was started by the Homo sapiens. These are points also. Try to learn 2-3 points one each one. Okay, now let's move to the next question. Write your observation on variation seen in Darwin's fingers shown above. In Darwin's fingers you can see what Darwin observed is when he was going to Galapagos Island starting from a common point literally radiating to different areas of the geography he was seeing different type of finch birds were evolving one was fruit eating one was seed eating one was, in, one was insectivorous like that different type of finch birds were evolving in different parts of the geography starting from a common point radiating to other areas of the geography this is actually called adaptive radiation adaptive radiation is an example of divergent evolution so here what he observed is different shapes of the beak in the finches according to their feeding habit that was observed by Charles Robert Darwin. How did Darwin explain the existence of different varieties of finches on the Galapagos Island? So he was visiting, he was going to different area. He actually explained it with the help of adaptive radiation. So remember, one adaptive radiation is divergent evolution. Yes, very good. Now moving to the next one. According to Darwinian theory of natural selection, rate of appearance of new form. Very important question rate of appearance of new form is linked to life cycle or the lifespan of an organism explain with the help of an example you know that in bacteria forming a new species or a new strain can occur within a short time because within a short time they can reproduce and produce a new generation so accumulation of variation will happen within a short time frame time frame yes or no 20 minutes is the dividing time of a bacterial cell so they can produce so many generation in one day itself and new variations can accumulate and they can give rise to new strain within a short time frame but whereas if i take elephant tiger humans etc forming next generation and the next generation it's a long life cycle or the lifespan and life cycle is very very lengthy coming to higher organism so accumulation of variation will be taking a lot of time formation of new species also will take a lot of time that is the point you should be able to write hope you got it yes it's a gradual evolution so if it is a minute organism the variation that can occur is in a short time frame when the organism is very small like bacteria the reproduction time is only 20 minutes and forming a new variation passing to next generation and the next generation it can happen in a short time frame and forming a new species also can be done in a with small life uh, for a small time period because the life cycle you are taking they have a short life cycle but organism with long life cycle that means 13 14 years after only they can enter the reproductive phase then they can reproduce and the next generation also they may take 10 14 years to enter the reproductive phase so like that accumulation of variation passing it to next generation all these will take a lot of time in higher organism that is the reason now next one what is natural selection natural selection only already we discussed nature select the better adaptable organism so here when there is overpopulation when there is scarcity of food and space when there is competition among the organism from the variants the best one is selected by nature that is actually natural selection we discussed industrial melanism so in that you know that in england what was happening in 1850 what happened and in 1920 what happened always the better adaptable organism according to the change in environmental condition is getting selected that is natural selection artificial selection the selection will be done by us 
you may be knowing about plant breeding or else breeding some cattle for bringing disease resistance long lactation etc that is an example of artificial selection or making some hybrid variety of animals of dogs or else horses pigeons or else plants if you are taking where the selection is done by humans and they eliminate always the unwanted character and select the one which is having best quality and try to bring them together that type of selection is called artificial selection give one example each from plants and animals where artificial selection has been operated so plants if you are taking hybrid varieties of so many plants are available hybrid varieties of maize rice jowar etc is available even sugar cane all that is an example of artificial selection animals if you are taking there are hybrid varieties of cow or cattle which is having long lactation with disease resistance so these are the examples that are coming now next one differentiate between explanation given by darwin and davis respectively on the mechanism of evolution already we discussed it according to charles darwin a new species arise by accumulation of variation which is very small continuous but according to hugo davis new species arise not by accumulation of small small variation it will be forming a new species on a sudden by single step large mutation which is random or discontinuous that is called as saltation that is called as saltation so that was the two concept already we discussed the two how does hardy weinberg's expression explain that genetic equilibrium is maintained in a population so you may be knowing one expected area is hardy weinberg so you have to learn the hardy weinberg so according to hardy weinberg's equilibrium a population will remain constant all the allele frequency in a population allele frequency means the dominant allele the heterozygous alleles as well as the recessive allele number in a population will remain constant if there is random mating in the population so gene frequency for any character if you take whether stem height whether seed shape or anything in a population will remain constant in five conditions five things if absent in a population that will remain constant can you please comment which are the five things that will be actually affecting the hardy weinberg equilibrium so if that five things are absent only this population will remain constant so list any two factors that are disturbing the genetic equilibrium okay one answer only i got genetic drift by cz then second one hisham said about gene flow sanjay okay sanjay genetic flow mutation genetic drift two more are there natural selection okay natural selection is there one more one more genetic drift you said gene flow you have said mutations you have said natural selection you have said one more is there one more is there gene flow or gene migration one more one more recombination genetic recombination so these are the five factors in that genetic drift always remember it operates in a small population sudden change in allele frequency of a small population is called as genetic drift and if one individual is moving from one population to another all its genes are added to the next population that is actually called gene flow and if it is uh, occurring many times that is gene migration is also coming hope you got it so in a population if the nature is selecting only tall plants this allele frequency will change that you should understand and suppose if i am removing all the tall plants from a place then also the allele frequency will change so gene migration should not be there genetic drift also should not be there or natural selection should not be there then this allele frequency is going to change so learn that five factors i am going to the next topic so you can expect question from genetic drift gene migration or gene flow also you can expect question from the mutation
so what is genetic drift sudden change occurring in allele frequency of a population that is called as genetic drift and it operates only in a small population just imagine there is 50 plants only if 25 are having tall character and all the 25 are actually getting rid of heavy wind heavy wind make them fall and they are not able to form it again now the allele frequency has changed only the dwarf plants are available so like this sudden change that is occurring in the allele frequency of a small population is called genetic drift hope you got it now gene flow from one population to another when some individuals are moving all their genes are added in new population and deducted from all pop uh, old population so like that you can see in the new population new genes are entering that is called gene flow now moving to next question explain the three this is also an expected area case study question you can get so there are three types of natural selection you may be knowing stabilizing selection stabilizing selection average individuals are selected and both the extremes are not selected one simple example i can tell what is given here is a stabilizing selection yes or no for example a natural selection can affect the frequency of a heritable trait in a population shown in the graph given below suppose just imagine there is tall character dwarf character as well as medium height nature is always selecting the average height that means it is with selection stabilizing selection one case study question also let me tell an infant mortality rate a survey was conducted in that the newborn children's above 7 kg is dying as well as the newborn children's below 3 kg is also dying and only the one which is actually uh, alive is 5 kg so which type of natural selection it is so both the extremes are not selected only average individuals are selected that is actually called stabilizing selection it is called as stabilizing selection like that case study questions you can expect or else second example that is directional selection Industrial melanism in 1850, there is dark winged moth, uh, there is black, black and white, and there is white. Which one is selected? Only which one is selected? White. So this type of natural selection where only one extreme is selected, other extreme and the average individuals are not selected, that is actually called directional selection. Industrial melanism ddt resistance in pest drug resistance in bacteria or else artificial hybridization that we are doing in order to get a long lactation period in a cow and all that is actually example of directional selection when we perform hybridization we will not take average and the lower one we will only take one extreme so all these are coming under which selection directional selection now coming to the last example okay now coming to the last example you can see there is black black and white and white marine limpets one survey was conducted there is black black and white and white what was observed is black individuals population was increasing because they can hide from the predators by sitting on a rock white individuals number is also increasing because they can hide from the predators by sitting on a sand but marine shellfishes who was having black and white pattern they can't sit anywhere and hide so their number kept on decreasing this type of natural selection is called disruptive selection so you can expect a case study question from here then one last question you can actually expect you can go for this one suppose a population is having thousand individuals in that capital a capital a is 360 capital a small a is 480 and and small a small a is 160 what is the frequency of dominant allele if a question is coming like that you know the dominant allele p square equal capital a capital a 2 pq equals small capital a small a q square equals small a small a 
Here dominant allele is P, recessive allele is Q. So just you have to calculate it. So what you will be getting? You have to calculate P and Q. So P square is actually how much? So P is equal to root of 360. Hope you will be getting. So here you will be getting uh, <coughs> so here capital A will be P and small a will be is equal to Q. So P is equal to square root of 360 that you will be getting So, in such type of questions are coming, first thing is you have to convert it, that is 360 by 1000 when you are getting, you will be getting 0.36, that is actually capital A, capital A, then 2PQ when you are taking, you will be getting how much, 480 by 1000, that is point. 4, 8. Then here you can see 160 by 1000. The number of these individuals will be 0.16. Just you have to take the square root. So you will be getting. So P square is equal to 0.36. So uh, P is equal to what square root of 0.36? That is 0.6. Whereas Q, Q square. So this dominant allele frequency is 0.6. Recessive allele frequency is 0.4 because you already know P plus Q is equal to 1. So one application question. Hope you got it. So that's all about questions from evolution chapter. Now I, Sandeep sir will be taking the human health and diseases. Hello my dear kids. <coughs> so far evolution chapter molecular basis principles of inheritance we have been complete completed now human health and disease biotechnology biotechnology application three important big chapters are going to come so everyone take NCRT textbook and class notes all of you are you ready shall we start are you ready come on energetic my dear students it's been long time we are shouting here are you there come on all of you come on all of you are you there shall we start shall we go to the human health and disease chapter very very important chapter and from this chapter beta you all of you need to focus on certain topics number one all type of diseases what are all type of diseases typhoid pneumonia malaria next to ascariasis filariasis amoebiosis you got my point this all diseases especially my dear kids from human health and disease this academic year there is a high chance from typhoid pneumonia uh, ascariasis elephantiasis amoebiasis there is a high chance last year to last year there was uh, uh, malaria question in two sets malaria parasite plasmodium vivas question only was there so that's why i have been shouting all of you prepare ascaris entamoeba and also what typhoid pneumonia thoroughly prepare okay i will cover the maximum all question i'll cover after this one immunity innate immunity acquired immunity cover and this is the most 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 important antibiotic structure antibiotics are what protein molecule too heavy too light chain structure you need to prepare after that hiv and cancer most important drugs also most most important but now when you are preparing 13 chapters are there right so try to try to uh, segregate the topics into a proper systematic way that's you can cover and you can touch the all topics don't go like this ah today i'm uh, uh, cancers and uh, hiv and after 10 minutes you just go to the microsporogenesis megasporogenesis after that spermatogenesis no it randomly it will not it won't work better so if, if you're starting human health and disease human health and disease did i touch the all topics or not that means you are completing the entire cell entire chapter especially from this chapter beta these are the most Im most important topics look at the first question i'm going to start in human health and disease first question malaria typhoid pneumonia amoebiosis are 
amebiosis or some human infectious diseases which one of these transmitted through mechanical carrier any one of you tell me mechanical carrier which of this one is mechanical carrier that means vectors like a flies mosquitoes cockroaches mechanical vector tell me very good very good ash very good uh, tell me one is called what tell me malaria culex mosquito i'm sorry ma, uh, anaphylis mosquito is there anaphylis mosquito is the mechanical vector and the carrier of this one and it is a host also it is a uh, sexual reproduction host also next we can write amebiosis also amebiosis what mechanical vectors like flies are there yes 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 good very good next what about this pneumonia droplets air droplets am i clear uh, pneumonia is infectious air droplets and when a sneeze when a person cough when a person sneeze that air droplets can be spread the bacteria typhoid contaminated food material salmonella typhi i have one question typhoid infected to which organ first typhoid infected to which organ i i don't know can anyone of you help me out which organ typhoid infected to first typhoid is the salmonella typhi bacterium causative agent disease this bacteria uh, a mode of infection is brought through contaminated food this bacteria infected to first ah small intestine 39 degree celsius to 40 degree celsius of fever constipation and abdominal pain ah high fever this all a loss of appetite this all are the symptoms of what what they call typhoid next why gambusia introduced in the drains of pond gambusia fish is the one which going to feed on the wriggler larva wriggler is the mosquito larva we need to reduce the mosquito population otherwise different type of diseases like malaria filariasis chikungunya dengue type of disease are actually transmitted through mosquitoes remember all of you so gambusia fish is introducing in the lakes or ponds to eat what beta yes regular larvas that mean mosquito larva so mosquito population come down why does uh, how does hemozoin affect the human body when release in blood during malarial infection carefully look at here what i am explaining this is male uh, rbc okay inside the rbc there is a malaria parasite malaria parasite look at here this malaria parasite is eating the hemoglobin molecule that's why in the cytoplasm of this uh, uh, parasite there is a red dot appear slowly what happen in the rbc only in the rbc only this parasite size increase and also the nucleus is undergoing many time division this this is called multiple fission many time nucleus division takes place this is called schizogony what kind of schizogony erythrocytic schizogony because the multiple division takes place in the rbc cells what happen now once it's finally matured look at here once it finally matured here this worm this uh, sorry, this parasite is look at it this is rbc now this parasite rupture lot of new organisms will release this is called merozoids merozoids break this what they call rbc and they release one chemical what is this chemical called what is this poison called hemozoin when this parasite release when this parasite rupture the rbc and release this hemozoin poison two things can happen can any one of you tell two things can happen one is called what tell me ah very good ah when rupturing the rbc kavya tell me beta two thing one is called chill one is called fever absolutely one is called chill one is called fever hemozoid is the is the is a poison secreting by or producing by plasmodium parasite when they rupture the rbc i remember all of you plasmodium parasite complete it asexual reproduction asexual reproduction in two places one is called liver one is called rbc remember human in human it undergo only asexual reproduction if it is in rbc erythrocytic schizogony if it is in liver cell erythrocytic schizogony good very good very good come to the next question look at here beta name two diseases whose spread can be controlled by the eradic eradication of aedes mosquito supplement
supplement question supplement question supplement material at the end of this today's session supplement topic also i am going to cover my dear so don't leave uh, this class until i complete until i finish okay now they are asking eradication of a dis mosquito a dis mosquito is also we can it is a edis mosquito is a transferal mosquito of what better two dangerous rna viruses tell me what are they dengue and chicken very good dengue and chicken gunya dengue bone break fever chicken gunya we discuss what bending huge joint pains muscular pain high fever high fever especially in dengue rashes formation platelets count decrease huge fever for uh, huge fever platelet count decrease remember this uh, edis mosquito is that mosquito which is uh, through which uh, dengue and chicken gunya viruses can be transfer so uh, you can write dengue and also mosquito list the symptoms of ascariasis ascariasis symptoms are Ah, blockaging of internal passage, fever, abdominal pain, anemia. Am I correct? Am I correct, beta? All of you, open and clarity. What is given? Ascariasis. Ascariasis is caused by uh, uh, nematoda. What is the nematoda? Ascaris lumbricoideus. The symptom, mode of infection is what? Any one of you tell me what is the mode of infection in the ascariasis? In case of ascariasis, fast, fast, fast. Mode of infection. What mode of cause of uh, mode of infection? Tell me. Uh, <coughs> Ask Arya. Uh, tell me. Nita. Ask Arya. This mode of infection. Tell me. How can be? Ah, uh, it is internal bleeding. Okay. Feces is very good. Feces is with small X beta contaminated X vegetables. That feces is contaminated. Ha. Huh? That is going to be what? Tell me. Mode of infection. Moreover, Ask Arya. This symptoms are fever, abdominal pain, internal uh, blockaging of internal passage, anemia. You should write this all points in symptoms. Okay. Ask Arya. Then how does a healthy person acquire this infectious? This inf healthy person. Person can in, uh, acquire this one through what they call beta uh, no, feces. This contaminated feces, uh, what they call hands. This all are what beta that X will be entered in the body. So that from egg, the from that egg there is a larva came out. The larva name is called rhabditiform larva. So rhabditiform larva is actually a infectious stage of Ascaris. Infectious stage of Ascaris. Name the causative organism of disease amoebiosis. Amoebiosis is caused by Entamoeba, entamoeba. This entamoeba histolytica is actually a protozoan. Entamoeba histolytica can infect the, the intestine. That's why it's called intestinal parasite. It called internal bleeding also takes place. That's why what insert it is given in the symptoms of amoebiosis. What tell me stool? That means in the in the motion in the waste in the fecal matter blood clots. You understand constipation also in serotonin given constipation also given now symptoms list three symptoms are given beta so constipation you can write and also feces with what blood clots and fever this all are abdominal pain you can write this all are the characteristic symptoms write the scientific name of casual organisms of elephantiasis scientific name ucheraria blank of t what is the causative agent this one ucheraria blank of t ucheraria blank of t is what kind of king what kind of phylum you know helminthes helminthes worm two helminthes this is this is are there in ncrt one is called ascariasis one is called helm uh, ucheraria blank of t ucheraria blank of t can infected to dash which area infected to where lymph nodes lymph node swelling lymph node swelling that will be genital organ also sometimes it in, in uh, effect so tell me here elephantiasis and ringworm in humans ringworm caused by fungi microsporum epidermiphyton you got my point this or ringworm ringworm can grow in a moist and heat area they, they need moist and little warm area between the fingers on the neck area granular areas they can easily grow beta okay next to mention the body parts affected by them elephantiasis affected uh, in elephantiasis lymph nodes lymphatic vessels will get affected in case of here body parts like fingers scalp neck area this collar area granular area as between the fingers it can be affected remember that's why i'm telling you better this time i am sure antamoeba entamoeba uh, typhoid pneumonia ascaris there is a 100% question will be there see next one next one is 
Next one. Ah, look at here. Can you answer this question? How can we answer this question? Tell me. Sometimes they 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 give the, uh, like this question for three marks or case study. Simple, simple, beta. A, B, C, I, D, and following question. Typhoid, typhoid. Name the causative organism. Bacteria, uh, Salmonella typhi. And they are asking the organ or the part of affected small intestine. NCRT mentioned from small intestine in severe condition. It is also migrated to not in severe condition. It migrated to to other organs through blood is given in CRT. Vital test is the test to identify this salmonella. We will dis we already discussed what about the typhoid Mary, who was the carrier of this this parasite this this uh, what they call bacteria and who cooked for uh, uh, contaminated food and served for the many years. Good, very good. Here small intestine I can write common cold B. What is common cold, beta? Retro or rhino? Retro or rhino? Tell me. Ah, very good, very good. Rhino virus. Ash, very good, beta. Rhino virus. And the affected part is what respiratory pathway only, not to alveoli, not to lungs. Common cold is infected to respiratory pathway only. You got my point. And sore throat, uh, fever, headache. These are the uh, what they call sneezing. These are the characteristic symptoms of what common cold. Pneumonia, streptococcus pneumonia, and D. What is this D? What is this D? Come on, come on, come on. Fast, fast, beta. D is what? Ah, very good, Sanjay. Alvi. Alveoli, pneumonia infected to alveoli, lungs. But common cold does not infected to alveoli. Common cold only infected to respiratory pathway. Am I clear? Am I clear? So far everything clear, beta. And exactly here in alveoli, exchanging of gases will be interrupted because of thick mucus form there. Thick mucus, they will be get interrupted. Very good, very good. Next one, beta. Look at here. Name the lymphoid organs in human where all blood cells produce. All blood cells produce. Name lymphoid organ in human. All blood cells produce. Can any one of you guess? With in which lymphoid organ? In which? Ah, yeah, very good. Ash, come on, very good. Better, sir, boss. Bone marrow. Look at here. This is bone. Okay, red bone marrow. This is a red bone marrow. Yes, stem cells are there. From this red bone marrow, all type of what tell me blood cells can come. And these blood cells are especially T lymphocytes and B lymphocytes are come from here, and they go to thymus and secondary lymphoid organ for what special uh, uh, what they call modification. Good. Where do the lymphocytes produced by the lymphoid organ mentioned above migrate, and how do they affect? immunity the cells which are produced in bone marrow migrate to particular area particular area very good nita absolutely correct beta very good they migrated to spleen in which they are ah uh, antigens antigen what they call beta uh, specific in the spleen the uh, the training takes place in the spleen they started to what they call beta proliferate keep in mind ah uh, they started to proliferate spleen spleen is also called reservoir of blood cells you know many many millions of t lymphocytes and b lymphocytes cell in the spleen they are inactive when a particular antigen entered in our body they started to activate and produce the antibodies in our body keep in mind you understand you understand spleen in the spleen they are going to migrate that's why spleen is called primary or secondary lymphoid organ spleen is called primary or secondary lymphoid organ tell me ah it is called what tell me well blood filters yes yes it's also ah spleen is also called blood filter and also reservoir of blood cells sabas very good ah tell me yes tell me tell me tell me tell me ah secondary saba secondary lymphoid organ secondary lymphoid organs are spleen pia patches uh, tonsils uh, uh, lymph nodes this all are secondary lymphoid or thymus and bone marrow both are thymus and both bone marrow both are what tell me come on come on come on primary very good primary m a l t a ah, multi mucosa associate lymphoid tissue look at here beta explain the relationship between the t and b lymphocytes in uh, developing immune response this is very 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 important listen carefully 
first when any antigen entered any particular virus entered that particular virus enter information this is a particular virus beta this is a very dangerous look at here this is called virus particular virus entered there is a specific cell called macrophage this macrophage come like this okay macrophage my name is macrophage so this macrophage this macrophage angle the virus break into lot of fragments okay lot of fragment and this fragments it will expose to like this it is exposed to like this this is called now apcs antigen presenting cell this macrophage break this virus into small fragment and the all fragments are exposed to outside directly this macrophage will go to you know where spleen this is spleen look at here this is spleen now in the spleen in the spleen all t lymphocyte cells are inactive look at here all t lymphocytes and b lymphocyte cells are there okay this macrophage will go and activate the t lymphocyte t lymphocyte this t lymphocyte cells are differentiated into tc th tm cells tc th now th cells will be activated the b lymphocyte cell b lymphocyte cells are differentiated into plasma cells and also memory cell and also memory cell plasma cells produce y shape of antibodies this antibodies go and neutralize this virus keep in mind that mean t lymphocyte cells are activate b lymphocyte b lymphocyte cells produce the antibodies against the virus that's how the relationship between t2 or the called beta uh, b lymphocyte that is the reason why students in hiv i hope you got this point in hiv which lymphocyte number decrease in 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 hiv which lymphocyte number decrease come on come on fast fast answer in hiv ah t lymphocyte especially th lymphocyte number gradually come down 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 so when t lymphocyte number down beta b lymphocyte will not activate so no antibody so our acquired immunity is slowly going down that's why we call acquired immuno deficiency our immune system deficient deficiency syndrome good very good very good look at here next and one more important thing my dear keep in mind t lymphocyte cell does not produce that what antibody t lymphocyte does not produce what antibody b lymphocytes only produce one more important thing write down t lymphocyte cells are t c lymphocyte cell and t h lymphocyte cell participate in c m i cell mediate immunity b lymphocyte cells participate in where humoral immunity remember humoral immunity done beta are you with me you got nita correct now look at the question young boy when brought a pet dog home started to complain of watery eyes and running nose the, the symptoms disappeared when the boy was keep uh, kept away from it what is this condition what is this condition with allergy correct am i correct allergy this all are animal fur animal dander uh, pollen grain dust particle food stuffs are allergens allergens which activate what tell me our ig immunoglobulin ig e immunoglobulin tell me name the type of antibody chemical respond for the such so what they call uh, respond i g e mcq question also can come i g e i g e is the one which is going to make ah, this type of what they call respond mention the name any one drug uh, uh, could be given to the boy immediate relief can you tell me three ncrt given one is called what beta anti histamine ah one is called anti histamine one is called adrenaline one is called what beta steroids is given ncrt yes 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 absolutely abs absolutely so remember the treatment this is called allergy these are allergens ige antibodies are respond so immediate quick response we are ad administrating anti histamine or uh, adrenaline and also what steroid steroid why is the tobacco smoking associated with rise in blood pressure when tobacco uh, smoking associated with the rise in blood pressure and emphysema when a person is taking this nicotine when the smoking in his body carbon monoxide level increase when carbon monoxide level increase it will go and activate our adrenal gland now when adrenal gland activate it produce adrenaline hormone adrenaline hormone this adrenaline hormone 
ఇంక్రీజ్ ద బీపీ బ్లడ్ ప్రెషర్ ఆక్సిజన్ కన్జప్షన్ యూ గట్ మై పాయింట్ హార్ట్ ప్రాబ్లమ్ బ్లడ్ ప్రెషర్ ప్రాబ్లమ్ ఓకే బేట దిస్ ఆల్ ఆర్ ఎఫెక్ట్ దాట్ ద రీజన్ వై ఎన్సారిటీ మెన్షన్ వెన్ ఎ పర్సన్ ఇస్ స్మోకింగ్ వెన్ ఎ పర్సన్ ఇస్ వాట్ ద కాల్ టేకింగ్ దిస్ టొబాకో లైక్ దిస్ వన్ బ్లడ్ ప్రెషర్ ఇంక్రీజ్ బికాస్ ఆఫ్ దిస్ హార్మోన్ ఐ మై క్లియర్ యూ గట్ మై పాయింట్ యూ అండర్స్టాండ్ మై పాయింట్ ఇంక్రీజ్ ద అడ్రెన్ ఎస్ ఎస్ అబ్సల్యూట్లీ కరెక్ట్ సో వెన్ కార్బన్ మోనాక్సైడ్ లెవెల్ ఇంక్రీజ్ దాట్స్ వై బెటర్ లాస్ట్ దర్ వాజ్ అ చాప్టర్ కాల్ ఎన్విరాన్మెంటల్ ఇష్యూ యూ షుడ్ బి థ్యాంక్ టు సిబిఎస్ఈ ద డిలీటెడ్ ఇన్ ఎన్విరాన్మెంటల్ ఇష్యూ ద గివెన్ కార్బన్ మోనాక్సైడ్ ఈస్ మచ్ హయ్యర్ డేంజర్ దెన్ ది కార్బన్ డైఆక్సైడ్ యూ అండర్స్టాండ్ మై పాయింట్ కార్బన్ డైఆక్సైడ్ టు కార్బన్ మోనాక్సైడ్ ఇఫ్ యూ కీప్ కార్బన్ మోనాక్సైడ్ ఈస్ వెరీ డేంజరస్ you understand my point so oxygen deficiency in the body amphysema do you remember amphysema what happened in amphysema the alveoli surface get infection in amphysema it is actually chronic respiratory disorder 11th grade breathing and exchanging of gas also we discuss this one amphysema the entire the alveoli surface get infection so alveoli surface will reduce so when alveoli surface reduce beta no proper exchanging of water me gaseous because of that one in the body low oxygen hypoxia low oxygen concentration maintain you understand my point and this is the same thing happen in the pneumonia also but in pneumonia mucus barrier form in the alveoli so it will interrupt the exchanging of gases because of that one nails and lips are convert into ah nails and lips convert into what beta from where to where grey to bluish because low oxygen uh, maintain in the blood good now next look at here beta most to most to most this time this academic year i am expecting this question beta uh, uh, hiv virus infectious mechanism uh, one table is given one one diagram is given one gram one what photo is given beta that is a most important one especially for case study type of question there is a high chance so look at here what is given how are autoimmune diseases different from the immuno immuno uh, uh, deficiency diseases beta remember all of you autoimmune diseases are the diseases which started to attack on our own cells i said rheumatoid arthritis do you remember beta do you remember this one you got my point you got my point what i said so it is actually this autoimmune diseases are the diseases which our immune system fail to identify which is the own cell which is the foreign cell which is the own cell which is the foreign particle so they started to attacking on us vitiligo rheumatoid arthritis this all are the examples of what auto immune disorders auto immune but what happen in immuno immuno deficiency syndrome sir in this in this in this uh, immuno deficiency our acquired immunity down our acquired immunity decrease our acquired immunity slow down so we are going to we are going to become a sensitive to sensitive 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 to all microorganism yes 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 very good very good aids is the one of the example good very good very good beta so come to this one identify a b c d in the replication of hiv retrovirus retrovirus rna virus and it is uh, virus infection a b c is given but i d also given can you please tell me what is a what is a now i can i can tell beta rna infection uh, viral rna infection a viral dna forming so rna convert into dna with the help of reverse transcription ah with the help of reverse transcriptase the viral rna convert into dna so b i can tell incorporating of this dna which dna viral dna into a host cell incorporating of viral dna into the host cell and that will give a viral mrna viral mrna give new viruses so viral rnas give new viruses these all are new viruses am i correct am i correct beta so first viral rna convert into viral dna viral dna incorporated in the host cell that will make a viral rna again viral rna to what beta new viruses are forming especially my dear students uh, uh, after this chart, chart there is a information is given what information what is the host cell 
macrophages in macrophages what exactly inserted yeah, incorporate uh, what exactly inserted that is called rna vi uh, um, virus rna inserted virus rna become viral dna viral dna incorporated in the host cell and making host cell as a factory 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 lot of lot of lot of new viruses are going to form from macrophages that's why ncrt given what is given by the ncrt macrophages are factories of of hiv virus so when number increase that time no symptom a patient will not show any symptom patient will not show any symptom the patient say i am happy already rbs uh, already t lymphocytes are going to decrease when t lymphocytes cells are decrease a person started to face a sensitivity to the diseases so hiv convert into aids hiv stage light convert into lysogen that mean hiv to aids remember this is the most important thoroughly prepare and go all of you sanjay kavya next who is this isham anj all of you all of you properly prepare and go beta now look at this question ah uh, what is this drug part also chances there drug part also high chances there name the source plant of heroin drug heroin heroin drug peppaver somniferum yes or no peppaver somniferum yes peppaver and heroin heroin is called smack or not heroin is called commonly called smack or not beta come on come on come on heroin is called what what is the common name of heroin heroin is also known as fast heroin is also known as come on beta uh, nayan heroin is called where is the receptors present receptors are present in the central nervous system yes 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 smack and this will be slow down the body function yes or no yes or no these are the depress or slow down the body function yes 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 how it is obtained from the plant this obtained from the plant by what they call it latex yes or no latex latex this latex is called milky substance latex from there what we will get better this type of drugs we are obtain opioids ah good very good latex grip keep in mind power somniferum write the effect of heroin in human body heroin ah slow down the body functions heroin depression heroin slow down the body function ah acetylation of morphine absolutely correct can you tell me the uh, uh, physical feature of the this drug beta heroin what is the physical feature of this heroin drug what color what color can anyone of you tell me which color is that one uh ah uh, nadia come on beta ridya come on tell me it is white crystal sabas nayan very good beta it is white crystalline and mode of intake also try to uh, learn and go and this is a depression and slow down the body function look at here this one is given morphine this is a morphine this is morphine morphine this stuck sometime they will give this structure and they ask different type of question my dear kids so two drugs thoroughly prepare and also one cannabinoid leaf is there cannabinoid leaf also look at that look at that leaf and try to re read that uh, plant name and drug now morphine chemical structure of morphine okay diacetyl uh, morphine diacetyl morphine the acetylation of morphine to give what better heroin next is skeletal structure of cannabinoid molecule this is a cannabinoid molecule cannabinoids where is the receptors present tell me cannabinoid receptors are where tell me the cannabinoid drugs are attack on the which receptor where particular where, where is the exactly area come on any one of you dynamic come on beta come on come on come on how to learn and no need to no need to practice it no need to you no need to draw this my dear they will give in the exam they ask you to, to uh, write the different type of question based on this structure you understand you no need to ah uh, ah uh, brain now wait here this one cannabinoids are i think cardiovascular system i think so cardiovascular i think so right not brain beta i think so try to cannabinoids are cardiovascular or not tell me come on come on come on brain is this morphine yes or no beta yes or no receptors in brain but where the effect where the effect this one is cannabinoids are going to effect on cardiovascular system i think so in crt what is mentioned Ah, uh, uh, receptors in brain, but where they going to attack? The uh, act cardiovascular system. Yes or no? Yes. Ah, uh, yes, yes. 
yes yes good 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 sabas very good so you no need to re, you know need to structure you know to prepare the structure you know to draw and practice better they will give question diagram and they ask what is the drug what is the name of this drug from where you going to obtain uh, where they going to attack effect so this type of questions can come out okay good good next look at here can any one of you look at answer this one name the blank spa uh, spaces a b c a b c i and d in the given so name the drug a poppy plant and uh, organ system effect which organ system effect so a i can write come on come on come on first name the drug a ah morphine okay opioid or morphine okay next uh, pepa or somniferum and where they're going to act on system organ system affected by this one tell me organ system central nervous system saba cns very good cns marijuana tell me c and also d what is c plant name is called what cannabis sativa yes or no cannabis sativa right beta next tell me what is the last one is the d d cannabis sativa affected organ ah cardiovascular remember i that's why i'm telling you beta this type of questions can this type of questions can come they give a structure or they give their particular hint they ask different type of question uh, related to that particular diagram yes good very good very good. come here name the stage of plasmodium uh, gain entry in the human body plasmodium vivax ah which stage tell me sporozoid stage yes or no sporozoid stage entered in the blood entered in the blood by contaminated mosquito so what is the infection stage sickle shape of tell me sporozoid sickle shape of sporozoid infection stage trace the stages of plasmodium in human body of female anopheles after entry beta this type of questions can come in the female mosquito gametocytes will enter fuse fertilization zygote form after that sporogony started spore spore um, uh, sporozoans again started to form from crop they migrated to salivary glands and they store in the salivary glands explain the cause of periodic occurrence of chill and high fever during malaria ah during malaria why chill fever salman come on tell me beta nadia anathya tell me why chill fever and hemozoin poison sabas very good hemozoin poison rbc rupture this poison is going to be cause different type different side effects in our body good now come to the next one this is again ma uh, malaria beta malaria but i don't think so this academic year this question will come because last year in the paper same question was there uh, uh, plasmodium vivax so uh, uh, according to me uh, my i am expecting this question this malaria question this academic year they might not give but we'll see study uh, uh, a part of life cycle of human uh, uh, what they call malarial parasite uh, given uh, a given particular answer uh, what is given alongside answer the questions mention the role of a roles of a where is this a and what is this a look at here beta a okay contaminated mosquito bite this is mosquito when contaminated mosquito bite that tell me what this all are gametogen these are actually better these are gametes you understand my point entered in the mosquito you got my point better next tell me this gametes in the mosquito gut mosquito gut this is a fertilization process here it is spermy there fertilization process sees the fertilization beta and after that zygote formation in the crop in the zygote in the crop zygote from the zygote lot of sporogenesis spore formation uh, sporozoans formation takes place that sporozoans are slowly come to the salivary gland so mention the role of a in the life cycle of malaria a is actually female anopheles mosquito female anopheles mosquito play a crucial crucial role in the mosquito uh, plasmodium life cycle female anopheles mosquito provide the suitable environment for what sexual reproduction which reproduction tell me ah sexual reproduction where in where both gametes are fused to form a zygote and they increase in number name the event c c is what tell me fertilization and uh, organ where it takes place crop of gut mosquito gut remember mosquito crop mosquito gut this process takes place identify organ b organ b 
Uh, name the cells being released from it. Organ B is salivary glands, and this salivary gland from there, sporozoans release. What will you tell me? Sporozoans release. Tell your everything clear. Done, but I understand my point. But I am. Uh, my sixth sense is telling, but at this time, plasmodium, there is a less chance, less chance because last year same question repeated. Next question. Next question. All human beings have a cellular oncogene. All. Human beings have a cellular oncogene, but only a few suffer from cancer disease. Give reason. Proto oncogene modified. Proto oncogene undergo mutation to form what? Oncogene. Proto oncogene is that gene which is going to be regulate the cell cycle and cell division. Proto oncogene, if it is convert into or if it is mutant into oncogene, cell cycle will be get disturbed. So randomly the cell is started to divide to make a tumor, neoplasia, neoplasia tumor. Give reason, mutation. You can write mutation. Proto oncogenes are convert into certain condition. Ah, tell me what are the condition? Mutagens. What are they? Carcinogens. What are they? Maybe physical carcinogens, chemical carcinogens like UV races, few type of virus, biological carcinogens can cause this what? Cancer or mutation. How is a malignant tumor different from the benign tumor? Malignant tumor is a cancer tumor. Malignant tumor have a ability of meta, meta, uh, meta, what is that? I forgot the name. What beta? Meta? Tell me any one of you. It's going to... Uh, Metagen. What is that? Tell me. Meta. Metastasis. I'm sorry. I forgot the name. Metastasis. What is the meaning of metastasis? It's more. Keep on. It form one place and it make a tumor in other area. Metastasis capacity. And malignant tumor have a capacity of what? Continuous divide. Continuous divide. Continuous divide. Highly starving. Full starving. They're going to divide like anything and make a new copies. And this malignant uh, tumor have a capacity of creep loss of contact inhibition malignant tumor uh, don't have death immortal cell it is a immortal cell remember so benign is what beta benign tumor is the normal non cancerous tumor which is not going to be creep and which is this which is which is restricted to one particular area with surgery we can remove benign tumor is a simple surgery with with the surgery we can remove you got my point i am this neoplasia cells are what cells beta this one malignant tumor cell name and explain give reason the type of immunity provide to the newborn cholesterol vaccination cholesterol is what type of immunity fast 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 passive immunity what kind of passive immunity tell me what kind of passive immunity it is a cholesterol is a natural passive immunity it is a natural very good i ah, very good love you all very good better sabas it is mother milk cholesterol iga i G A. That's why it's called what is passive movement, passive immunity, right? Vaccination is what active immunity. It is an artificial active immunity. You understand my point? Active immunity. Sabas, very good. Next, present in cholesterol, I G A immunoglobulin produced in response to allergies is I G E. Done. Done, beta. You understand? So I'm. Ah, I'm moving to the next question. Next question. Next, cancer is one of the most deadly disease of human being. Contact inhibition, metastasis. We already covered this one, so I'm not repeating this. Name the group of genes which have been modified to normal cells that could be lead to the cancer. Tell me the words of normal genes. Normal genes are called proto oncogene. Proto oncogenes are converted into oncogene. Understand my point? Understand my proto oncogene. You and I, everyone normal have a proto oncogene, but then under certain circumstances, proto oncogenes modified or mutant to form oncogenes. Name any two techniques which useful to detect the cancer: biopsy, X-ray, CT scan, uh, and you can get MRI, ECG. The, uh, sorry, not ECG. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. MRI, CT scan. This all are what beta detection of cancer. You understand? Which is the most safest detection? Which is the most most safest diagnosis of cancer most safest diagnosis of cancer nitha sanjay very good m r i m r i good very good why are cancer patients often given ant alpha interferon alpha interferons activate our immune cells 
our immune cells alpha interferons activate our immune cells and that immune cells are going to attack on the cancer cells remember because of this reason ncrt clearly mentioned last line of cancer diagnostic after the treatment last line if i am not wrong in the paragraph alpha interferons are administrated to the cancer patient to increase the activity of uh, immune cells to kill the cancer cells remember that's why we are giving what tell me alpha interferons yeah good better good good very good next oh my god this time i am expecting this time i am expecting this question tell me what is this tell me antibody structure antibody structure of antibody so what is this a what is this a a is nita what is a sanjay antigen binding sites yes or no exactly here what tell me particular antigen will come okay particular antigen come this is called antigen bind antigen binding site a is antigen binding site b c b i can call variable chain of variable part of light chain light chain variable part of light chain c is what tell me ta uh, um, what they call constant part of tell me light chain so both together call what mean light chain light chain e is what tell me constant part of heavy chain this is called constant part of heavy chain what is this one called bond which bond what is f can any one of you tell me i don't know what is f very good very good very good ridya where did you go beta come on answer me diya sanjay ah come on come on what is disulfide bond this is what disulfide this time my dear kids human health and disease thoroughly antibody structure prepare better thoroughly prepare i am sure antibody hiv cancer or drug pakka one question will be there this academic year 19th march you come to know pakka question will be there better next question look at here ah these are the major diagram you have to practice and go beta this is a one important diagram this is a second important diagram please thoroughly properly prepare and go okay important diagrams come to the next chapter most important chapter most most important chapter five mark question is there mcq will be there five mark question will be there okay beta sometime they can ask three mark also one question from this chapter so careful look at here when you are preparing biotechnology principle and process chapter number one first you have to do first you have to do is number one is all type of restriction endonuclease enzyme molecular caesar finish molecular caesar restriction endonuclease enzyme thoroughly prepare first how many are there from where we isolated what is the nomenclature of that one okay and uh, and uh, what they call uh, ga it is where they going to attack where they are going to cleave what is the recognition site thoroughly prepare next uh, construction of rdna steps of rdna recombinant dna gel electrophoresis oh my god this is most beta pakka this time question will come you look at see mark gel electrophoresis pbr 3 to 2 last year it was not there this time there is a chance this time there is a chance pcr this also are uh, all important here biotechnology principle and process all important all the topics that will be prepared and i cannot tell sir this is a particular area but i can tell one thing pcr pbr 3 to 2 and what they call beta ah this one also this major this topic this all are major topic prepare and go look at the first question what the first question is given first question ah this is actually accidentally i uh, uh, kept in this place but actually this belongs to molecular let me check how many will give how many will give molecular question come on any one of you any one of you dna code for gene a a a phenyl l9 a a a so mrna 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 come on come on sanjay dia ridya nayan nayan come on beta now a a a usna come on pinjal yatri kavya if you are there come on very good very good ash very good beta u u u so second one is called what tell me g u g i am correct g u g next trna a a a next here trna is what tell me c uh, a c i am i correct i am i correct is this correct or not 
look at here ah next a polypeptide consists of 14 different amino acids how many base pairs must be in the processed mrna code for this polypeptide 14 into 3 14 into 3 remember okay next uh, how many different type of trnas are required 14 different trnas are required 14 yes 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 sanjay correct ash correct beta correct so i am going to the next question ah look at this question beta look at this question pbr322 artificial vector icharesia coli p for plasmid of bolivar and rodriguez this question thoroughly line by line selectable marker rop ah uh, ori and uh, what they call recognition site thoroughly prepare in pbr322 foreign dna has been introduced in tetracycline region this is a tetracycline region okay from restriction uh, enzymes given below which one should be used why come on come on come on sir p u v 1 eco r 1 bam h 1 the answer is very good bam h 1 you cannot cut beta you if you have this this eco r 1 caesar is there okay if you use eco r 1 there is no eco r 1 recognition site that that knife uh, that caesar cannot work in that area where this area this here look at here tetracycline this entire area this entire sequence in there is no ga sequence so so, so eco r1 cannot work so what is given here bam h1 bam h1 caesar only cut exactly here sal1 caesar only cut remember so two recognition sites in tetracycline sal1 and also bam h1 next name the organism which vector shown inserted to get copies of desirable gene name organism in which the vector shown inserted icharesia coli what is the vector each uh, this pbr322 introduced in where beta very good e coli very good icharesia coli mention the area label in the vector rep responsible for controlling the copy number of insertional gene control copy number of insertional gene sabas very good o r i o r i control the copy number of genes next name and explain role of selectable marker in the above vector selectable markers are two what are they what are the two selectable marker one is called yasira tell me beta one is called tetracycline resistant gene one is called ampicillin resistant gene these two are selectable markers for pbr322 yes 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 sabas very good very good next question what is this what is this mechanism any one of you tell me pcr polymerase chain reaction pcr identify steps a b in a cycle polymerase chain reaction given below okay beta we are primers we are adding right when will we when when we will add primers which step which stage which step of pcr we will add a primer annealing right yes and beta annealing oh yes it is good very good beta very good my dear good very good annealing yes so here we will add primers adding in annealing right good next next uh, dna polymerase plus deoxyribonucleic dntps deoxyribonucleotide triphosphates that mean dntps three nucleotides also we are adding here that mean this is called extension beta this must be extension so, now so we will identify beta step a step a is annealing step b is extension in extension we will add one enzyme called tac polymerase tac polymerase enzyme coming from or isolating from thermus aquaticus bacteria good very good very good now state the specific characteristic feature of enzyme carrying in step b step b there is a specific enzyme called tac polymerase tac polymerase is thermo thermo stable enzyme at higher temperature also it will be work it will be synthesize the new dna it is actually nothing but tac polymerase nothing but dna polymerase only ah ah good ah good sabhas very good nita very good beta good very good so pcr thoroughly prepare and go next question write two components of first artificial recombinant dna molecule constructed by the cohen and boyer two component what they use for the construction of rdna 
What they use for the construction of our DNA? Salmonella typhimerium. Next, Echeracea coli. Am I correct? Salmonella typhimerium and also Echeracea coli. Right. Next, biotechnologists refer Agrobacterium tumefaciens as a natural genetical engineering of plant. Give reason to support. In Agrobacterium tumefaciens, there is a specific plasmid is there. What is the plasmid called? Very good, beta. Thai plasmid. Thai tumor inducing plasmid, which have a capacity to, to deliver the DNA into a plant cell. That's why genetical engineering scientists are modified this Thai plasmid. Actually, Agarobacterium tumefaciens soil bacteria is a bad bacteria. Beta. You know why? If you able to recall, if you read the NCRT, Agarobacterium tumefaciens bacteria can cause disease, cancer in dicot plant is given. The disease name is called Crown Gall disease. But what scientists have done? Whatever the genes are responsible for that cancer, removed or inactivated. That's why NCRT mentioned PBR uh, uh, Agarobacterium tumefaciens vector no more pathogenic. They modified. They modified. You understand my point? So you can write that one. Why is the enzyme cellulose needed for isolating genetic material from plant cell? Plant cell wall made up of cellulose. Cellulase enzyme dissolve the cell wall of plant cell. That's why we are using cellul cellulase. I not to up animal cell. Animal cell is made up of protease. Cellulose is not the protease. So we will not use the cellulase enzyme. Next, why are molecule associate molecular scissors so called? Right, they are used in the biotechnology. Molecular scissors are the enzyme which are going to cleave the DNA at a specific site that's why we call what molecular scissors with what is the what is the use of this biotechnology with the help of this molecular scissor we can cut the DNA at a particular area particular area very good very good come on Usna answer me yes yes yeah, they are ah uh, Plus, yes, yes, beta. So, if you are transferring your, your desirable gene into a plant cell, plant cell, which vector we will use, beta? Which vector we will use? Usna, come on, tell me. Particular specific vector we will use to transfer this gene into the plants. Tell me. Simple. Thai. What tell me? Thai plasmid from where? Ah, AT, agrobacterium, tumefaciens. Write any four ways to use the introduce the desirable DNA segment into the bacterial cell in recombinant technology experiment. You can write four ways. Four ways used to introduce desirable DNA segment into the bacterial cell. Now, what are these four ways to use introduce the desirable cell? We can use to what they call competent host making to what they little made DNA introduce into that one electroporosis method. And what they call you can also use a chemical method like a polyethyl glycol. You understand my point? This all are you can write. Next one. Bit. Next. Eco R1 is used to cut segment of foreign DNA. And a vector DNA from recombinant DNA. Show with the help of schematic diagram. Same question for 3 mark 2023. But same. Same question. But easy. Very easy. No? G A A T T C beta. We know this one, right? G A A T T C 5 dash to 3 dash. 5 dash to so 3 dash to 5 dash. C T T A A G and this is phi dash. Yes sir, no, we are going to cut this one exactly this particular area to make a fragment. In the last class, I explained this one, right? Ah, here we can write tell me again G A A T T C. Okay, here C T T A A G. Our desirable gene is there. You just cut here, beta, and both are going to add in a with the help of DNA ligase enzyme. So our DNA going to RDNA going to form, right? So, I am not explaining the entire mechanism. We already discussed that one. The set of palindrome uh, nucleotide sequence of base pairs, ECO R1 will be recognized by both DNA segment. Mark the site which ECO R1 can cut. G, A, exactly it will cut. Phosphodiester bond, phosphate backbone, they cut. You understand my point? Next. 
next sticky ends are formed on both segment where the two dna segment will be joined later to form recombinant dna sticky ends are formed on both segment where the two dna segment will join later to form our dna with the help of what you can write ligase enzyme very simple very easy next question gel electrophoresis gel electrophoresis mark the positive and negative terminals so these are wells right so exactly in the wells only our dna going to be load that means this must be a negative one and here it is a positive one i am i clear because dna is a negatively charged negatively charged yes or no my dear yes or no so tell me here ah positively and negatively charged what uh, what is the charge carried by dna molecule and how does it helps in the separation dna charge is negative charge when you give electric when you lo after loading if you give electricity that means you have connected to electrode largest particle will be slowly move small particle will be move further separation of dna fragment based on where S size based on where size keep in mind yes yes not next how does the separation dna fragments are finally isolated ethidium bromide you have to add illusion very good usna very good beta illusion ethidium bromide and uv rays is exposed the white what bright orange bands are formed so take out that one called what ah very good it is called illusion spooling means what in a spooling what we will add beta in spooling we will add salma tell me in spooling what we will add ah that's bright orange color correct only beta in spooling chill ethanol we add chill ethanol in practical exam also we have done you know this 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 practical um, practical very well we have isolated yes chill ethanol next question why must a cell made competent in biotechnology experiment how does calcium ion help remember beta this academic year my dear kids vector less gene transfer four methods thoroughly prepare usna isham all of you i'm telling sanjay yasira salman nita four methods thoroughly prepare gene gun method one is second one is called micro injection method electrophoresis method and also chemical method polyethyl glycol method thoroughly prepare why we are adding this calcium ion calcium bivalent ion increase the affinity of plasma membrane to intake the dna that's it that's it yes that's it remember next how does uh, the we discuss about state the role of biolistic gene gun we will a particular uh, dna as a uh, gene gun beta in that particular tungsten and gold coated with our particular our desirable dna and with particular velocity we bombard the particular gene will be introduced in the plant cell especially gene gun is used in where introducing of dna in where in the plant cell micro injection micro injection method delivery of a ah, desirable dna in animal cell animal cell remember what is triplasmid i explain already better this one name the organism agrobacterium tumefaciam how does it help in the genetic engineering it has a triplasmid the triplasmid have a capacity to do what deliver the dna into the plant cell agrobacterium tumefaciam i already explain this one better pcr explain the following uh, and mention one application of each pcr polymerase chain reaction is essential for the amplification of dna and pcr also helps to identify the early diagnostic of what disease identify the disease in early diagnosis elisa elisa also tell me the principle of elisa any one of you tell me elisa will work on the principle call anyone anyone elisa one principle is there antigen antibody complex ah antigen antibody complex i am not asking full form my dear <laughs> i am not asking there is a principle ah antigen antibody complex so this is one application beta both are early diagnosis along with this two our dna technology also helps in the application identification of early diagnostic of disease read ncert what is given three methods are there to di uh, diagnose that uh, 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 disease in early stage right next question next co explain how recombinants and non recombinants are differentiate on the basis of color 
this time high chance is there insertional inactivation high chance is there insertional inactivation beta remember this is plasmid okay this is lac z gene which gene is this lac z gene this is my desirable dna okay with the help of restriction endonuclease enzyme and ligase enzyme i introduce here lac z gene will become inactive okay i introduce this plasmid into a bacteria plasmid introduce into where bacteria so when i keep this bacteria in a chromogenic substrate x gal chromogenic substrate which is white in color it will be remain white in color if it is remain white in color this is our transformant i am i clear or not i am i clear or not what happen if our gene did not receive so this plasmid lac z gene still working active lac z gene active that mean beta galactosidase enzyme is coming so when i introduce into the bacteria when i'm keeping in a x gal which is white in color now this lac z gene will produce a beta galactosidase beta galactosidase enzyme convert white into blue colony blue color when blue color colony form what does it mean it is our non transformant non transformant so i can eliminate this i will select this this is called a, uh, uh, what they call selectable marker G that this this time but I am telling you beta galactosidase insertion inactivation thoroughly line by line prepare and go. Next, biotechnology applications very small very few questions only important topics only I selected beta but when you when you take this biotechnology in applications biotechnology application in agriculture, BT cotton. RNAi, this one especially RNAi interference mechanism thoroughly prepare biotechnology applications in medicine. Medicine means here we will discuss genetically engineering insulin and also ADA enzyme therapy, gene therapy, genetically engineering insulin, gene therapy, and also molecular diagnosis, ELISA, PCR, and I know uh, ELISA, PCR, and RDNA. Transgenic animal. Can you please focus on this area better? Transgenic animal this time. Transgenic animal in uh, biological product and uh, vaccine safety, chemical safety, uh, understanding the physiology and disease. This this. Try to focus on here, and after that, bio piracy, bio patent. Small topics are there, beta. For two marks, might come. So go through this one. Look at the first question. First question. Very less questions are there. First important question. First important question. I think all my students know this one. All my students, all our students. So come on, fast, fast, fast. Refer the diagram. Maturation of pro insulin into insulin. Pro insulin into insulin. Matured one. immature one immature one have a polypeptide chain c polypeptide chain b polypeptide chain this is called pro insulin pro insulin after convert into mature insulin and something c peptide beta free c peptide is given how are two short peptide chain insulin linked together how are they linked together come on come on come on come on any one of you disulfide bond it's a very good disulfide bond between ab polypeptide chain this one this one ab polypeptide chain state the role of c in a human insulin the role of insulin c polypeptide in pro insulin is connecting beta in mature insulin nothing in mature insulin what it is nothing no role of c polypeptide mention the chemical chain that pro insulin undergo to be able to act as mature insulin removal of c polypeptide and formation of bond between the ab polypeptide that are, these are the only changes these are the only changes usna you got my point ah yes beta in mature insulin no role we are removing that's why lilili company did not did not uh, produce this c polypeptide chain because c polypeptide chain is not there in the mature insulin yes yes next list the disadvantage of insulin obtained from the pancreas of slaughter cows and animals oh my god you know beta before our dna technology insulin formation produ produ production people used to take a cattle pig pancreas but what ncr dimension are we are suffering with the uh, um, what they call diabetes to red from diabetes we are taking this insulin but we are starting allergy 
एलर्जीज आर गेटिंग अरे वो दो डायबिटीज कीप एसाइड नाउ यू आर गेटिंग न्यू प्रॉब्लम लाइक एलर्जीज सो नो बडीज टेकिंग so our dna our dna is possible our dna technology have done our dna technology through we produce that human insulin in bacteria with the help of bacteria it is possible because genetic code is universal nearly name the specific type of gene that is incorporated in a cotton plant protect uh, uh, protect from plant against the cotton ball worm which one cry 1 a b cry 1 a c cry 2 cry 2 a b can any one of you tell me out of this one which one is going to be a cotton ball worm cotton ball worm isham correct beta yes good 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 sabas cry 1 a b name state method of cellular defense which work is all you can r n a i interference mechanism work as a cellular defense mechanism in all you can yours i am not enter the uh, i am not explain the entire procedure beta all you can yours what is the significance of process of r n a i interference in eukaryotic organism this is one cellular defense to rid double stranded rna virus infection to rid cancers type of what they call abnormalities rna i interference is a gene silencing mechanism beta unwanted genes we don't wanted to express so this mechanism is shutting down the genes no no you don't wanted to express keep aside rna i or silencing mechanism you got my point rna silencing mechanism this is the one method using to uh, silence the nematodal gene expression in the tobacco plant what they introduce in the tobacco plant so when it is engulfed when the nematoda melodogen incognitia engulf inside that one no protein is synthesized because that mrna both mrnas are complementary double strand rna is forming no protein formation in the worm melodogen incognitia so incognitia worm is dying we are not adding any pesticides we are not adding any pesticides just gene we are silencing katam remember now mention the cause the uh, in the body system affected by ada very 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 important beta this time from ada chances high chances there this time from ada very high chances there beta gene therapy properly prepare mention the cause in body system affected by ada deficiency ada enzyme is important for the maturation of bt lymphocyte cells bt lymphocyte cells are acquired immunity when ada enzyme is not there bt lymphocytes will not activate matured so if they are not matured that person immunity acquired immunity poor we call bubble babies they will be keep in a bubble one white color we have seen right beta when bubble babies which has completely sterilizing one cavity one 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 box they will not come out four year old baby do you remember in 1990 ha ah, adenosine deaminase ha ah, name the vector used to transferring the de- oh very simple retrovirus retrovirus is the vector into the pe- recipient cell in human name the recipient cell lymphocytes lymphocytes Lem- what are the recipient beta ha ah, lim- immature lymphocytes that's why i told you the mechanism we have to isolate that lymphocyte immature lymphocyte from patient body in vitro culture and allow them to retrovirus attack so they started to but 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 this is not a permanent lymphocyte cells will die after some time that's why nct mentioned this is not a permanent solution because lymphocyte cells are not a immortal cell is given how many of you follow usna do you remember beta what is given in in the class in the textbook Immo- lymphocyte cells are not a immortal they have a mortal they have a death so after some time they die so again the patient back to the original uh, what they call uh, position so it is not a permanent remember in ada enzyme therapy three solution in crt mention enzyme replacement therapy gene therapy and uh, one more also there what is called tell me bone marrow replacement three are given but uh, uh, gene therapy in early embryonic stage it is what permanent is given in said permanent is given good beta write the functions of adenosine deaminase enzyme adenosine deaminase enzyme is important for the maturation of maturation of 
T and B lymphocytes. T B lymphocyte state the use of cause of adenosine deficiency in human acquired immunity very less. Mention the possible treatment. Just now only I told you the possible treatments are bone marrow replacement, enzyme replacement, and gene therapy. Right. Gene therapy. Ah, this is a gene therapy given beta. Look at here. I want to read what NCIT mentioned. Look at here. They are not complete curative. As a first step towards gene therapy, lymphocytes from the patient blood are grown in a culture medium. They take this one, they grow in a what they call but a culture medium. Look at the retrovirus is going to be attacked. You got my point. Next, uh, a functional ADA cDNA using retrovirus. This then introduced into the lymphocyte, which are subsequently written back to patient. However, these cells are not a M mode. Look at here. That means this artificial artificially prepared this uh, in vitro prepared lymphocyte cells will die within two months the entire mechanism i'm not explaining now die it will die so after two months or after two and a half months the lymphocyte lifespan is already one month to two months they die so when they die patient come back to the normal position so that's why what inside dimension the patient required Periodic infusion of such genetically engineered lymphocytes. Are better. How many lakhs it required? Well, it is a very huge money dependent process. We cannot bear. What is this genetically engineered lymphocyte? We made this one better in the laboratory. Immature initially. After we are adding desirable DNA with the help of retrovirus, we made this one. So they are functional. ADA enzyme is synthesizing. But how long? How long, my dear? Hardly one and a half to two months. Again, come back. So that's why inside demand. However, if the gene isolate from the bone marrow, producing ADA, introducing into the cell, early embryonic stage could be a permanent cure. Beta, this time ADA gene therapy thoroughly prepare. I am telling you, question high chance is there, high possibility. Okay, next, a person born with the heredity disease with the weakened immune system due to a deficiency of enzyme suggests the technology. Look at better gene therapy technology. Gene therapy, hold a minute. My dear kids, primary immunodeficiency diseases, disorders, secondary immunodeficiency disorders, two are there better. One is called primary, primary immuno, immuno deficiency disorders second one is called secondary immunodeficiency disorders in the exam if this questions come all of you look at here primary means inborn the baby born without immune system enzyme is not there gene problem it is called uh, congenital but secondary baby born with immune system everything is fine because of HIV, because of some type of viruses which is going to decrease the immunity we call secondary immunodeficiency disorder. So under secondary immunodeficiency disorder, I can write AIDS, remember. Least the three molecular diagnosis techniques to pathogen uh, identify beta, RDNA, next, uh, next what will mean, next uh, ELISA, enzyme linked immunosorbent, uh, SA, Next, uh, next, next, next one. Third one is called what? PCR. Three methods are going to detect the disease before it form or early diagnosis. This is there. And exactly same paper beta probe is given. Mutant gene probe. Mutant gene is not going to be identified in the um, uh, radio photography. Some the one particular part is there. Thoroughly that also prepare. Next. Ah, microbes in human welfare. Krishna sir will explain this one now. Come sir. Let me go for a fast. Fast, fast. We can finish very fast, my dear. So we know it's late. So we'll be going fast with the topic. Only few more questions left from the remaining chapters. So I'll be discussing the questions very fast. Just try to recollect the concept and all. So let me start with the first question. What are biofertilizer? Describe the role in agriculture. Why are they preferred 
uh, in place of chemical fertilizer so if you are taking bio fertilizer it include the microorganism that can actually increase the nutrient content in the soil especially the nitrate phosphate etc so it will be including cyanobacteria the blue green algae as well as some bacteria even fungi mycorrhiza all these are actually called as bio fertilizer the microbes that are actually able to increase the soil fertility or enhance the nutritional quality of the soil so why we prefer them instead of chemical fertilizer you know that when chemical fertilizers are used they can damage the normal microflora and fauna and they can accumulate in the tissues of organism also even they will be affecting or they can actually uh, go into the nearby water body causing algal blooms and all all these are the problems associated with the chemical fertilizer so it is better to use the bio fertilizer now coming to next question why should biological control of pest and pathogens be preferred to the conventional use of chemical pesticide same thing i can tell if you are using chemical pesticide it will be actually causing a lot of toxicity in the tissues of organism and all especially if you are i think you heard about biological magnification this can accumulate in the tissues of organism and it can accumulate in the food chain also and it can also move or it can get rid of normal microflora and fauna also that is the problem with chemical pesticide so it is better to use the natural predator of the organism to get rid of this pest and all that is coming in the field so that example you may be knowing which all are there bacillus thuringiensis the sackets are available just you have to dip it in the water and spray on the plants so what happens is it will get rid of those organism attacking the plant and it will be specific also it won't kill every organism only that caterpillars and all will get affected so sandeep sir already said about bacillus thuringiensis they are producing the cryogen crystal protein etc that can actually go and infect the intestine then nucleo polyhedro virus you know about bacillus virus that is also going to infect different type of insects and all so we can use all these organism against its natural prey so these predators are used against its natural prey and all to get rid of them rather than using the chemical pesticide hope you got it yes now next one microbes play dual role when used for sewage treatment as they not only help to retrieve usable water but also generate fuel so you know there is two type of treatment that is coming in sewage treatment primary treatment is just removing the floating debris as well as the grit soil and all they will allowed to be sedimented and the supernatant is removed and moved to the secondary treatment tank that is biological treatment so during the biological treatment first it will be sent into a tank for aerobic treatment aerobic bacteria that is naturally occurring in the sewage water it will be multiplying and it will decrease the bod of the water so you can see this naturally occurring heterotrophic bacteria that is present in the sewage water they will form flocks so one expected question you can write about flocks flocks you should learn so primary treatment tank will be there from there the supernatant the floating one will be sent into the secondary treatment secondary treatment the first tank you should understand there is aerobic bacteria they will multiply around the organic material and they will form mesh like structure along with the fungal filament that is called flock so this will decrease the bod of the water or the pollution level of the water then you can see they are removed into the next tank that is the settling tank so in the settling tank the flocks and all will settle down they will be sent into a sludge digester in the sludge digester you can see anaerobic bacteria will break them in order to release some methane hydrogen peroxide sorry hyd uh, methane hydrogen carbon dioxide etc like that so many things will be released so understand this bacteria that is present in the sewage water they are not only helping to decrease the bod of water in the secondary treatment plant it's also helping in breaking of this to release methane so both dual purpose is coming that only you have to explain here hope you got it okay biogas formation is there 
Now next one, describe the process of wastewater treatment under the following head. First one is primary treatment. Primary treatment, this sewage water will be allowed to stand still for a long time. So, so many things will be settling down. This will form the primary sludge. It will form the primary sludge. Even the floating debris and all is getting separated using some filters. And the supernatant or effluence is taken for secondary treatment. Secondary treatment is biological treatment. In that aerobics uh, treatment is actually done. Here you can see the bacteria will be multiplying around the organic matter to form floke they settle down and it will settle in down in the next tank they will be sent into the sludge digester which will release methane and this water will be put into the water body so this much you have to explain and you also learn about BOD BOD is an expected question decreased BOD means understand the pollution level is very less high BOD means understand the pollution is very high or the amount of oxygen used by the bacteria to digest organic molecule is very very high that means dissolved oxygen of the water is very less dissolved oxygen is less BOD is high pollution is high dissolved oxygen is more BOD is less the pollution is less that points you should remember now let's move to the next one complete the given table as per Gillis Niger this is an expected area the one mark one mark etc questions will be coming that will be helping in the production of which one they will be helping in the production of citric acid then ethanol you can use e saccharomyces cerevisiae cyclosporin a the, then cyclosporin A is actually by the trichoderma immunosuppressive drug. So from this area you can expect acetic acid azotobacter azotobacter acetate that is producing acetic acid. Then monascus purpureus blood cholesterol lowering agent statins streptococcus clotbuster that is streptokinase. This is also an expected area so learn this example perfectly and go. Then next one, then that Swiss cheese etc. Also you learn Propioni bacterium shermani, Roquefort cheese, Penicillium roqueforti that is a fungus. So whether it is fungus, bacteria etc. Also please learn correctly and go. Now again the same question, then lactobacillus also please learn it. It is uh, producing lactic acid and it helps in the coagulation of milk protein casein. And it also checks the microbes or pathogens in the stomach. And it improves the nutritional quality, vitamin B12. This much points you should try to remember. So, streptococcus, streptokinase uses to remove the blood clots in the blood vessel. And here, cyclosporin A, trichoderma, fungus. The main function is what? Used in humans, you can see. Immunosuppressive drug that is used in organ transplantation. Monascus purpureus, statins, blood cholesterol lowering. That also you should learn. It inhibit the enzyme. Yesterday also are said when you are doing the neat classes what is the function competitive inhibition they actually prevent the enzyme that is producing cholesterol then lactobacillus the product produced is lactic acid they will coagulate the milk protein casein now next question choose any three microbes from the following which are suited for organic farming which is great demand these days for various reasons so out of the given you can choose which all Mycorrhiza, you can choose, learn the example from here, Glomus, which is given in NCRT. So, what is Mycorrhiza? Mutualism's example also. Symbiotic association of fungi in the root of higher plant is called as Mycorrhiza. Anabina also you should learn. Anabina is found in the leaf of Azola fern. This Anabina is a cyanobacteria, it increased nitrate content. That is why we put this Azola fern in paddy field. That also you should remember. And even it is found in the coralloid root of cycus. Then Rhizobium, symbiotic nitrogen fixing bacteria is Rhizobium. So that is bacteria, this is cyanobacteria, this is fungus. So this Mycorrhiza also remember they will protect the root from pathogens also. So that's all. Methanobacterium, it is methane production. Now next one. Cow dung and water is mixed and this slurry is fed into the biogas plant for digestion by microbe. The person performing the process shares that there is no need to provide inoculum for it. Why? So in the biogas plant we are adding a slurry that is having cow dung and water. The main purpose is contain methanobacter that will digest the acid that is produced at the end into the biogas that include methane 50 to 70 percent is methane and it also include carbon dioxide and hydrogen that also you should remember. Then, what is the role of microbes at the source? 
uh, under which condition will they be most active and effective the role of microbe is breaking down the acid that is formed from decomposition so many decomposing bacteria are there in the biogas plant they will degrade the organic molecules into acid from the acid the biogas the methane etc is finally released by methanobacter then which condition will be most active here they should need moisture as well as good temperature anaerobic condition that only will actually help in the production of biogas now coming to the next question describe how do flocks and activated sludge help in sewage treatment already i discussed what is flocks mesh like structures form formed in the secondary treatment plant in the aerobic process where you can see a lot of organic material is coming in the sewage water in that organic material around that the bacteria and fungi filaments will be growing to form a mesh like structure that will be later settling down in the settling tank that is actually called flocks so it will decrease the bod of the water or it will increase the sorry it will actually decrease the pollution level of the water then activated sludge activated sludge means some of the flocks are actually sent back into the first tank so here that we were discussing understand already you may be knowing it but still i am just showing so keep this picture in mind here the flock <coughs> flocks that are there they are sent back into here that is for a primary inoculum so that when the next effluent is coming this bacteria will multiply nicely so not all of them a little bit only send back like a primary inoculum that also you should remember so we are moving to the next question okay Identify A B C. Already we have done this. Monascus purpureus is an eat is yeast that will be producing starting blood cholesterol lowering. Penicillium notatum you should remember that will produce the antibiotic penicillin that was discovered by Alexander Fleming. Later it was isolated by Flory and Chain and all of them were getting Nobel Prize and this was used to treat what the wounded soldiers in World War II. All that points you should try to recollect. And what is antibiotic? Also remember it's a chemical secret. Treated by one organism that kill or retard the growth of another organism that is called antibiotic life against life then cyclosporin a trichoderma that will be producing cyclosporin that is actually a immunosuppressive agent that is used in uh, the organ transplantation again repeated questions are there now coming to given below is a figure of biogas plant name the group of organism and the substrate they act on producing so what is okay so here the organism that we are using is methanobacter that will be acting on the organic molecules to release methane 50 to 70 percent is the methane that is produced identify the product a and b a is the floating structure that will rise up in the tank when the biogas is produced and b is the set of gases that is evolving which include carbon dioxide methane hydrogen etc then what are methanogens how do they generate biogas methanogens actually help to degrade organic molecules that we are putting in the biogas plant to release methane it is coming under monera now next one so that's all about the questions from microbes in human welfare so you can expect question from biogas plant then primary and secondary treatment of sewage bod then some organism like lactobacillus trichoderma monascus purpureus and remember the pectinase enzymes and all that is used for clarification of bottled juices lipase enzyme that is used in the detergents and all so this much area you have to actually learn now let me move to the next chapter ecosystem how are productivity gross productivity net primary productivity and secondary productivity interrelated so let me tell one by one you already know this productivity what is productivity the production of biomass is called as productivity and the production of biomass by the plants are actually called as primary productivity so what is primary productivity the production of biomass by the plants after photosynthesis is called as primary productivity then in an year how much biomass is produced by the plant in a unit area that can be measured in kilocalories per meter square per year 
that is actually called as gross primary productivity how much it is produced in an year is actually called as gross primary productivity and after respiration what is left in them is called as net primary productivity hope you remember gross primary productivity minus respiratory loss that is equal to net primary productivity then what is secondary productivity after eating this plants and all biomass production by the consumers or animals is called as secondary productivity now next one it is possible that a species may occupy more than one trophic level in the same ecosystem at the same time explain with the help of example we can tell about sparrow so what is trophic level position of an organism in the ecosystem or in the food chain that is what we call it as trophic level first trophic level is autotrophs that include the plants second trophic level you know that includes the primary consumer especially herbivore third trophic level it includes the secondary consumer that is the primary carnivore but if you take organism like a small sparrow they are omnivorous they will be eating the plants they will be eating other animals or insects also so if i am taking this organism it is falling under different trophic level so that example you can actually explain hope you got it yes sparrow next one justify the importance of decomposers in an ecosystem decomposers in an ecosystem is very important for nutrient cycling if the decomposer are, are absent after death of the organism many minerals and all will get immobilized in the dead dead and decaying particles so in the dead and decaying particle you can see many minerals will be accumulating without coming back into the soil or which is not available to the plants or other organism so decomposers are very useful in nutrient cycling that is their important role then why is earthworm considered as the farmer's friend explain humification and mineralization earthworm is considered as farmer's friend because they loosen the soil and they are also involved in the first step of decomposition where a lot of minerals will be available in the soil after the death of plants and animals the first step in decomposition is what fragmentation where the detritus the dead and decaying matters is called detritus the dead and decaying plants and animals they will be broken down into small small pieces the process is called fragmentation that is actually done by the detritus like a worms so they are actually involved in the first step of decomposition they loosen the soil and through decomposition only many minerals will be available in the top soil so they are considered as the farmer's friend because they increase the fertility of the soil also then what is humification and mineralization let me tell the five steps in decomposition you can expect a question from decomposition in decomposition understand in the top soil only the detritus will be present yes or no so this detritus will be first broken into small small pieces the process is called as fragmentation this is done by the fragmentation is done by which organism detritus so detritus like earthworms and all will perform this after that you can see some minerals that is coming out of this will be leaching deep into the soil it will be percolating deep into the soil that process is called as leaching that process is called as leaching then after that you can see they will be again broken down by bacteria some bacteria through enzyme action they can be broken and it will form a dark colored amorphous substance this process of breaking by enzymes by the bacteria is called catabolism this is called as catabolism and this dark colored amorphous substance is actually called humus formation of humus is called as humification hope you got what is humification now slowly slowly from the humus some minerals will be available in the top soil some minerals will be available in the top soil that process only we call it as mineralization which will be available to the plants that are growing above so these five steps you should learn fragmentation leaching then catabolism humification and mineralization these are the five steps in that two steps hope you got it now coming to the next question so here compare the two ecological pyramid of biomass given below and explain the situation in which this is possible also construct an ideal pyramid of energy if two lakh joules of sunlight is available so this is an upright pyramid and this is an inverted pyramid if i take pyramid of energy for any ecosystem it is an upright pyramid and if i take pyramid of number for a terrestrial ecosystem also it's an upright pyramid inverted pyramid is actually observed in the pyramid of biomass in a pond ecosystem 
Now coming to 2 lakhs joules are available from sunlight, you have to apply the 10% law. So if 2 lakh kilo joules of sunlight is available means the first trophic level will be forming how much? It will form 20,000. Yes or no? 10% then this will form 2,000. This will form how much? 200 <coughs> and 20. So like this, 10% of energy will be flowing from one trophic level to another trophic level in an ecosystem. That also you should learn. This was proposed by Lindman in 10% low. Now next one, construct a pyramid of biomass starting with phytoplankton. That is pyramid of biomass. Phytoplankton's biomass will be less. In pond ecosystem, first one is phytoplankton, which is eaten by zooplankton which is eaten by small fishes which is eaten by large fishes so it is having which type of pyramid inverted pyramids are actually coming then one more question expected is the factors affecting decomposition the nature of the decomposing material if it is having chitin lignin etc the decomposition rate will be slow if it is having sugar soluble substance etc like the normal sugars and all it will be digested faster then temperature is a factor aerobic condition is a factor all these are the factors affecting the decomposition that also you just go through then next one identify the type of ecological pyramid and give one example of the pyramid of timber and pyramid of biomass in such cases this is an irregular pyramid i can tell this is the pyramid of number for tree ecosystem one tree many insect and the number of bird feeding on that is also less so pyramid of number only is actually given here pyramid of number for tree ecosystem then pyramid of biomass in such cases this is irregular pyramid inverted pyramid already we have drawn for the pond ecosystem that is also possible yes husna is answering sanjay also so i am going to revise only you just keep on listening you will try to you try to recollect the topics and all you will get it describe the process of decomposition five steps already we discussed so that five steps from that diagram please try to memorize it first step is fragmentation where detrivores will break them into small small pieces at that time minerals coming out sometimes water soluble they will be percolating deep into the soil horizon that is leaching then the left out things will be digested by bacteria that is catabolism then you can see again it will be uh, forming dark colored amorphous substance that is humification then from the humus you can see some minerals will be coming out that is available in the topsoil that is actually called as mineralization so that five steps you should remember now next one draw a pyramid of number of a situation where a large population of insect already we have done it it's here so large population of insect uh, <coughs> feed on a big tree insect in turn <coughs> are eaten by small birds which in turn are fed upon by big birds so already the pyramid is given it's an a, irregular pyramid that we are getting then uh, second one so first one is to draw what draw a pyramid of number it is inverted pyramid then second one differentiate giving reason between the pyramid of biomass so biomass if you are taking it will be an upright pyramid in both the cases sorry in this cases so that's all about the difference between pyramid of number and pyramid of biomass in a tree ecosystem so this question is also expected so i'm moving to the next one then next chapter let's start with organism and population only two more chapter is done so, uh, left out so let's wind it up fast name the two growth models that represent uh, population growth and draw the respective growth curves they represent so when this question is coming you have to draw this two type of growth model one is the exponential growth and one is the geometry growth so two types of growth model or the logistic growth that is given here so in the first one you should understand this growth of the population is not depending upon the availability of food resources or the space etc that is exponential growth second one you can see it will be depending on the availability of food and space that is the logistic growth so state the basis for difference in shape of this curve 
exponential growth you can see the population keep on multiplying irrespective of the food and space but whereas in the logistic growth you can see there is a carrying capacity up to there only they can multiply above that they cannot multiply then which one of the curve represent human population growth at present at present if you take the human population it is exponential because number is very very high compared to the availability of food and resources so it is increasing exponentially only we can tell and even though it actually covered up the carrying capacity still it's growing so it is exponential very good actually exponential growth curves are not realistic but if i take the human population i should tell it is matching that then list the different attributes that a population has and not an individual organism has if i take a population they are having attributes like the birth rate death rate an individual is having birth and death only not the birth rate death rate etc sex ratio that is all coming in a population even the population density immigration emigration all these things are actually associated with a population not the individual then what is population density explain any three different way the population density can be measured with the help of an example each so population density means it is the number of individuals that are occurring in a population it is actually measured in terms of birth rate death rate etc so number of birth that is occurring in a population and number of death that is occurring in a population birth minus death that only we will be checking for understanding the population density hope you got it then next one which of the above represent increase or decrease in population increase in population density is due to natality and immigration so birth that is occurring in a population as well as the people entering into a population by immigration this is actually going to increase the population whereas death that is occurring and emigrations are actually decreasing the rate of a population then give the formula for that so if i take the formula you can see n t plus 1 that is the population density at time t1 is equal to the previous population density plus birth <coughs> plus immigration minus death plus emigration this is the equation that is actually used to check the population density now a calculation question is also given in order to check the population density can you tell from here so in a uh, barn there were 30 rats nt equal 30 five more rats enter the barn that means immigration is five and six uh, and six out of the total rats were eaten by the cats that means death is six then if eight rats were born during the time period so five more rats enter the barn population and if eight rats were born so eight rats were born so birth rate is eight immigrancy is five death rate is six and you can see seven rats left the barn emigration is seven so can you tell what is the population density after the time t how much it will be coming let me check who is going to answer a yes, zero so you can see total if you are taking the it is actually 30 itself here it will become zero so after t plus one after a time period you can see it's equal to 30 itself because here it will be zero so the number of uh, individuals in the population after a particular time t is equal to 30 itself previously it was 30 after birth death immigrants immigrants etc you can see still it is 30 so don't write zero write that 30 itself now if a new habitat is just being colonized out of the four factors affecting the population growth which factor contributes the most so look at the word colonized colonized means the major factor that is going to affect the population is what immigration immigration is the one very good sanjay sanjay and hisham already answered very good
good observation now next one so you can expect a lot of questions from population interaction so population interaction all the examples you go through and whether it is benefited affected neutral etc also please learn that chart in ncrt parasitism in this interaction you can see one species depends on other species for food and shelter you already know parasitism where one is actually benefited other is affected and they grow slowly inside the body of the host organism deriving all the nutrients and about their uh, adaptations also please learn they will be having structures like hook and suckers for attaching to the host and they will be having no digestive system well developed this digestive system sense organs also are not that much good all that conditions you learn and learn the example of ectoparasite and endoparasite so cascuta that is growing on the plants that is a parasitic plant lice ticks tape worm liver fluke all these are parasites only so learn it amun salism the interaction in which one species is harmed and you can see the other species one is actually harmed and the other is neither benefited nor harmed that is amun salism penicillium notatum that is growing on some bacteria like the staphylococcus they secrete penicillin it kills the bacteria but there is no use for this fungus so understand that relation is amun salism mutualism the relationship in which both are actually benefited that is called mutualism lichens is an example of mutualism so so many examples are there even the symbiotic nitrogen fixing bacteria is an example of mutualism so so many example of mutualism is given in ncrt even the floral rewards that you are learning moth and yucca plant all the these are example of mutualism the symbiotic relationship in which both are benefited and the relationship is obligatory that is called as mutualism now next question explain any two defense mechanism plants have evolved against their predators so predators so many uses are also there sometimes question will be that also that you should think because if there is no predator population the prey population will increase and there can be ecological imbalance and all but there are some uh, characters that are formed by the plants in order to escape from the predators like they will be producing thorns or else they produce some chemicals like cardiac glycosides and all so they are not eaten by the animals even they produce drugs so many medicines and all that we are extracting sometimes they are producing it to get rid from the predator population so that all you have to learn they are having thorns they are having some chemicals or drugs like the cardiac glycoside example is calotropis that all points you should mention here how does the predation differ from parasitism predation you can see instant death of the prey is occurring but in parasitism slow death only they will be growing on the host if the host is dying they won't get the food so slowly they keep on deriving the nutrients and leave on that and in parasite they are specific also and they complete the life cycle there but predators it is not like that so you can write all these difference between predation and parasitism in both cases one is benefited other is harm but this is the main difference between predators and parasites now next one name the type of interaction seen in the following ascaris worms living inside the intestine of human that is an example of parasitism vas pollinating fig inflorescence that is an example of mutualism clownfish living among the tentacles of sea animal clownfish actually get protected from where the predators and all but sea animal it is unaffected so this is actually common salism mycorrhiza living in the root of higher plants like pinus that is an example of symbiotic relation mutualism orchid growing on the branch of mango tree that is also an example of which one where you can see one is benefited other is unaffected common salism so these all examples you learn properly from ncrt now next one study the population growth curve in the graph given below and answer the questions identify the growth curve you know already we discussed it a is actually showing the exponential growth and b is showing the uh, logistic growth which one of them is considered as more realistic one and why actually b is considered as more realistic logistic growth is more realistic and all because always a population will be growing up to a uh, extent only where they will reach a carrying capacity where you can see first it will be a lag phase then log phase then a stationary phase when the availability of food and space is little bit less so which is more common you can see the logistic growth then if dn by dt equal rn 
k minus n by k is the equation of logistic growth curve. So remember one is j shaped and other is sigmoid that also you should mention. Then k stands for what? Can you come in k stands for what? k actually stands for carrying capacity. k stands for carrying capacity. And what is the symbolization of n? That is the intrinsic rate of growth. n actually represent intrinsic rate of natural increase. That is birth minus death. Hope you got it. Okay. Very good Sanjay and Husna. Now coming to the next question. Label the three tires 1, 2, 3 given in the above age pyramid. What type of population growth is represented by the above age pyramid? Age pyramids, if you are taking, we actually consider three population. One, one is the pre-reproductive, second is the reproductive, third is the post-reproductive. If the pre-reproductive age group is more, we consider it as a growing population. And if the pre-reproductive and the reproductive age group, so please remember it is the pre-reproductive age group and this is the reproductive age group and this is the post reproductive age group like that you should remember based on that only we can actually divide the population so if this is more than the reproductive age group it is considered as which population the growing population expanding population but the pre reproductive and the reproductive age is same that is actually a stable population but if it is coming the reproductive age group is very less than the sorry pre-reproductive is less than reproductive that is declining population these three also please learn correctly and go now next one state goes competitive exclusion principle so according to the goes competitive exclusion principle you should understand two organism that is competing for the same food resource they cannot actually coexist one will be actually becoming extinct so that is ghost competitive exclusion principle. Can you please make a comment of ghost competitive exclusion principle? Let me see who is going to comment first. <coughs> so three areas you have to learn correctly when you are going for exam. One is ghost competitive exclusion principle. Second, resource partitioning. Third, you have to learn about this one also. The Connell's experiment and all that have been said. So this all thing. So resource partitioning was said by Mac Arthur. You may be know. Okay, now came the comment by Yash. Ash Galabago Silent, Abingdon Tortoise and the Goat. When it was introduced there, what was happening? The abundant got, uh, tortoise was actually getting decreased in number or they become extinct. Because the feeding efficiency of the other goat was very high. Even though they are not, not competing with each other, if one organism's feeding efficiency is higher than the other, automatically the other will get, the other will, what will happen, will become extinct. Then competitive release also you should learn. Competitive release means when two population or two different species are growing and they are competing with each other. If you remove one of them, the one which is actually left will become dominating. Example is the Balanus and Chathamalus. That example given in NCRT also please learn. And MacArthur's resource partitioning. Resource partitioning case, MacArthur was telling when different wabblers are growing on a tree, they actually they coexist because they have different foraging behavior and all so they can coexist so this three concept you have to learn resource partitioning as well as ghost competitive exclusion principle as well as competitive release any of this the question can be coming along with the example so here already the example has been given why has life history of variation evolved actually variations are coming only it will lead to the formation of new species so this was actually given by charles darwin so i am not telling much rela related to that list any three important characteristic of population and explain them you can write about birth rate death rate immigration emigration sex ratio these are the points birth and death rate of four countries are given below which one will have the least population so you just have to minus birth from death rate then you will be getting the population density so easily you can do it please do it yourself take a screenshot i am not going to do it so birth rate and death rate is given birth minus death that is the population density n you will be getting just you have to calculate it yes or no sir, yes, sir. yeah
now starting with the last chapter so sandeep sir will be finishing with the last chapter so all were waiting for that so this is our last chapter 13th chapter so it was a long session we understood all are waiting for that so let me hand over the mic to sandeep sir thank you and thank you thank you students all of you, you all are patiently listening very good very good god bless you with top marks in 19th exam 19th march exam you all are going to get a super paper and also top marks look at the biodiversity conservation very limited small questions are there beta especially in this chapter you have to focus on loss of biodiversity number two is called exituency to conservations and number three is called i i uh, i see you and um, you see and red data book that important important you have to cross check and uh, this pie charts tell me what is the correct answer of this pie chart name the unlabeled areas a b so a b is what tell me i can call insect right is it insect or not is it insect or not insect and b is called what tell me molluscan crustacean and other organisms are there this is invertebrate this is invertebrate there is a chance this type of small questions are going to come for two mark examination two marks look at here uh, name the type of biodiversity uh, represented by the following thousand variety Species of mangoes is the uh, is the is the genetical variant variety right genetical diversity am I clear thousand varieties here this is genetical uh, uh, diversity if you able to recall in genetic diversity russer pine also will learn russer pine is the one which is alkaloid extracting from the roots of Raulfia vomitoria in Himalayan region the concentration of chemical is increasing and rice fifty thousand rice varieties we discuss remember so. I can write genetical variation uh, uh, biodiversity variation in terms of potency and concentration of Ravalpia vomitoria going in different this is also genetic wear, genetic diversity remember identify a b figure given in the representation of vertebrate taxon this is the invertebrate beta this is invertebrate and this is a vertebrate one tell me what is a and what is uh, b what is a and what is b so already fishes there birds are the reptiles are there one will be the mammal and one will be the uh, one will be the mammal and one will be the what better reptiles reptiles is there but amphibians tell me come on come on come on one will be the amphibian one will be the mammal tell me yasira what is the correct one b will be the b will be what b will be what fast fast amphibian and one is mammal amphibian and also mammal keep in mind the highest organisms are what tell me fishes in case of vertebrate highest one is fishes in case of invertebrate highest one is insect in case of plants fungi and angiosperms remember you got my point pie charts are very important about 200 species of child fishes become extinct when a particular fish was introduced in the lake victoria africa my dear kids Organic biodiversity conservation chapter all four evil quarter loss of cost of biodiversity thoroughly prepare alien species invasion coextinction uh, uh, habit loss and fragmentation and also over exploitation thoroughly prepare this is the example of what tell me alien species invasion in Lake Victoria Lanthara Nile perch fish Parthenium, these all are ex exotic species beta. They invaded in a, a particular area. So, predation increasing more and more. No, what they call uh, um, what uh, predators are there for this one? These are increasing like anything and also going to stop uh, dominating. You got my point? Right. So, very good. Name the invasive fishes. Fishes are what tell me? The fishes are Sichile fishes, Lake Victoria. This is the one of the example of alien species invasion. Remember, diagrammatic questions can come. One alien species entered in the particular area and dominating and that local organisms are going to extend local organism extend that's the reason why this is very close to close related to predation beta do you remember uh, pisaster starfish pisaster starfish if you remain the particular area of that ocean thousand invertebrate organisms are disappear in one year of period of time in serenity given that means predator is playing an important role in the game controlling of prey population over exploitation stability of a community stability of a community depend on the species richness right uh, how did David Tillman, David Tillman outdoor exploit, ah, outdoor exploit, ah, outdoor plot, what the hell better experiment tell us, the ecosystem or the area where huge biodiversity more constant or stable, what is the meaning of stable, that area will be resistant, resilient and also 
year to year productivity very less variation is there productivity high productivity but variation is very less variation is there david tillman experiment remember david tillman experiment will undercome importance of biodiversity you got my point importance of biodiversity david tillman experiment plus you have to also read uh, what they call revert power hypothesis also done beta got my point next why are certain regions of the earth called hotspots name any two hotspots in india biodiversity hotspots are considered why particular areas because that areas are rich in forest biodiversity and also they are rich in endemic species remember endemic species and also diversity rich that areas are considered as biodiversity hotspots can any one of you tell me in the entire world how many hotspots are there biodiversity hotspots how many biodiversity hotspots in entire world entire world come on come on come on fast 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 come on how many very good 34 how many in india how many in india three are there what are they indo sri lankan burman region himalayan region western ghats western ghats are western ghats are rich in what what kind of organisms are rich in the western ghat beta amphibian species remember yasira 25 plus also beta 9 are included total 34 remember don't get confused what is cryo preservation give an example storage of particular organ particular tissue gametes pollen grains storing at a particular temperature particular liquid for the long of period of time we call cryo preservation Cryo preservation is a type of ex situ conservation. My dear kids, biodiversity chapter, different type of in situ conservation, different type of ex situ conservation. Prepare beta. And at the end of the in situ conservation, number of biodiversities, number of uh, what they call bio biosphere hotspot, uh, biospheres, and the number of national park is clearly given in CRT. Go through that one. Go through that one. Question can come from that particular area. Next, look at here next one alien species are highly invasive and are three to uh, what they call endangered species three to endangered species uh, substance uh, the uh, statement with uh, any three examples here beta alien species are if it is invade if you particular introduce a particular area the local organism whatever the existing organisms are there, they cannot compete with this one this alien species will dominate like anything because no natural predator what happened to this uh, prickly spare cactus do you remember in australia the increase 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 even in our west bengal what is that what is the plant okay sir the plant is called what uh, west um, uh, ha water hyacinth and it's called terror of bengal it is also what terror of bengal it is also what come from the different beta yes that also clarius also one of the existing uh, what exotic species and uh, uh, catfish also and this all are what beta introducing no natural predator there so population increasing keep in mind next uh, given graph along with showing the species area relation this properly prepare and go this process this uh, area species relationship was given by given by ah alexander van humboldt remember ah very good who is this pranavika sabbas beta next who is this aparna alexander van humboldt area increase species status also increase but after particular time it is going to stop because there are many limitations are there and z value this slope remember 0 0.0.2 0 0.6 0 0.8 particular values are given beta that also properly prepare and go species area relationship one of the hot spot topic in biodiversity and uh, uh, loss of biodiversity hot spot part topic next uh, IUCN different different species increasing decreasing which one is threatening which one is uh, endangered how many extinct uh, properly prepare and go remember you got my point next uh, next uh, what they given uh, there are many animals that are uh, become extinct in the wild but they are continuous to be in the zoological path. This is an XC2 or NC2. Many are already extinct but are gone. They are already gone. But in that zoological park, zoological park is the XC2. Zoological park is what tell me? XC2 conservation, right? So remember, in XC2 conservation, what will come? Zoological park, botanical garden, seed bank, tissue culture, cryo preservation, all are XC2 conservation only. We are taking the animal from their natural habitat and protecting under the human activity, human control. What type of biodiversity conservation observe? XC2 conservation. Explain any two other ways which 
this type of conservation tissue culture you can write cryo preservation you can write seed bank you can write you got my point this all are ex situ conservation only explain giving three reason why tropic are great this is the important question we know beta if you take this entire <coughs> earth tell me from equator to polar temperature decrease biodiversity also decrease but if come from polar to the equator tell me biodiversity increase the number of bird species in india colombia greenland new york i already given beta i'm not going to repeat so all of you go through this one one more time next what are the three reason reason number 1 solar energy is very high reason number 2 uh, constant environment glaciations and this what they call beta calamities are very rare predictor seasonal environment some particular reason speciation more speciation and constant environment for million years high solar energy some reasons are given in ncert this three four reason properly prepare at particular tropic tro tropic area okay look at here why is there need to be a conserve biodiversity Ha, broadly utilitarian narrowly utilitarian two things are there beta so go through that one next name and exam ex, uh, explain any two ways that they are responsible for the loss of biodiversity there are any two we will tell four fragmentation loss of biodiversity especially in fragmentation what is given 14 percentage to 14 percentage you know beta rain forest amazon rain forest is there in charity dimension not now more than six percent is now that much of fast we are damaging that what they call forest that properly crossing beta it is a most important cause of biodiversity five edition editions of extinction already done sixth edition is going sixth edition of extinction is thousand time danger and faster than the previous five is given in charity 65 million years back in evolution chapter we discussed dinosaurs extinct beta but who are the reason actually are we reason the extinction of uh, dinosaurs that time human evolution was not there 15 million years ago only started the rama and diapathicus so tell me that was and as normally the, the, the reasons are given many of them are uh, convert into what they call birds and also what they call climate the climate change is given in NCRT we are not responsible that one well, whatever the extension is going now we are responsible it's called anthropogenic effect anthropogenic effect out of four or two one is called over exploitation one is called fragment and also fragment habit loss okay revert power hypothesis simple beta you know aeroplane aeroplane you know do you remember this one the entire the ecosystem he was ah okay, what they call resemble with the aeroplane moving aeroplane yes remember that one it is very easy only next next this supplement material last i'm going to tell you beta biology 19th march lot of students have a question from this uh, what they call supplement material from supplementary material first point you should remember ramson convention thoroughly prepare thoroughly prepare thoroughly prepare convention protection of wetlands ramson is the area in iraq particular area in the city they signed first countries as Australia is the first country beta in said dimension Australia was the first country 1971 it is actually a particular area Ramson is a particular area in Iraq is given beta so this wetland protection loss of this wetland and this wetland protection is given in Ramson high chance is there for this uh, supplement material from the supplement material for two mark so everyone I'm telling you this properly prepare and go especially especially different type of what they call wetland is given here in Kerala and also what better in Orissa this table thoroughly prepare this table thoroughly prepare and go from biodiversity uh, sorry, biology supplement material Ramson convention antibiotics look at here Ramson convention stem cell technology and uh, antibiotics rice genome project chikungunya dengue thalassemia this topics thoroughly prepare beta because last year do you remember do you remember beta in the class i said last year stem cell question supplement question three marks they given in a sample papers also the question is there so my dear kids all of you uh, all of you i'm telling you beta from uh, supplement material this following topics are thoroughly prepared ramson convention today only you done beta and sleep and after that antibiotics chicken good night you tomorrow deaf tomorrow two days time is there tomorrow tomorrow 18 tomorrow 18 right over oh, one day time is there tomorrow 18 19th is exam only one day left beta all the very best all the very best now come here all of you oh, sir, uh, sir, krishna sir come
So please go through thalassemia, polygenic inheritance in uh, the inheritance of skin color. That is an example of which inheritance? The quantitative inheritance as thalassemia. well as Autosomal thalassemia right. also quantitative inheritance. That also you have to go through nicely. So a long session all were there from the beginning Thank attending the so session so and commenting a lot yeah. and yeah. sir has taken a good number of chapter even so many questions sir has actually set in the correct way with all the experience and all sir no problem. <laughs> so exactly. all the best to all of you may god bless you to achieve a good mark in the final examination now let me give to sandeep sir so all the best students all of you because we have done lot of hard work you also have done lot of hard work god bless you with top marks all the very best peacefully go start with the section which you perfectly know maintain the paper very neatly and 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 come with joy you got my point so that part you have to be very careful what sir said you have to maintain the paper the writing the drawing everything very neat don't put any scratches and all so be very careful when you are writing and presenting it it should look very good so you can do best always attend with the question that you know nicely in the exam first then only go with the other question and make a good presentation obviously you will get a good mark come with your best and make a call to us also after the exam hoping for a good result ahead Okay then bye All best wishes the